Many high-profile cases will definitely come to you, and they may likely come in company of some juicy, irresistible temptations, especially when they involve mouth-watery financial and business transactions. I'm making it clear to you now that you must flee from such disguised danger. Your reputation and integrity matter much, and it counts enormously in your rise to honor and fame in life. Let me point out unambiguously that in life, gifts and wealth that are not worked for, which are by extension undeserving, are always wrapped in calamity and destruction. Flee from them and keep your heads high above the murky waters of corruption and favoritism so that you can be conveniently counted among the very best in the Nigerian judiciary. You must, against all odds, conduct your affairs within the ambit of the law and the oath that you have just been administered on you. If you are eater to 50% under public scrutiny, I can then confidently tell you now that it has automatically risen to 100% by virtue of this appointment. This tempo of public assessment of your conduct and disposition will now assume astronomical proportion. You must equally redouble your effort and dialogue properly with your conscience in order not to fall out of the grace of Almighty God and the Nigerian people. It absolutely takes nothing to join the crowd, but it takes quite a lot to stand alone with good conscience. Several novel business and industrial disputes are occurring in the country virtually on a daily basis that have now inevitably made litigations to go on a steady rise. No court in the land is spared of this. We are constantly on our toes, and the dockers are ever rising in response to the challenges of the time. This underscores the fact that Nigeria ranks among the most litigious countries in the old world. The onus is on your lordships to fasten your belt and roll up your sleeves to face the challenges head on. You must redouble your pace to catch up with the expectations of the litigants. As judicial officers, you have a defined mandate on half that you must discharge with unveiled honesty and sincerity. You must give good account of yourselves to justify your appointment. However, if you decide to do the contrary, of course, the sledgehammer will, without hesitation, descend heavily on you. No judicial officer at any level of our courts will be allowed to drag the reputation of the Nigerian judiciary into the mud. We can't come this far to fail. Take heed of this admonition by walking rightly towards occupying an, an enviable space in the annals of the Nigerian judiciary. Hello, hello, hello Nigerians within Nigeria, the rest of Africa, and other parts of the world. This is your friend and brother, Dr. Haruna Goro. This is an urgent and urgent broadcast. Please let me know where you are watching me from. Go ahead and share the broadcast with as many people as you can. Please go ahead and do that. Every Nigerian needs to know what is going on. Please, please, even if people are sleeping in other parts of the world, let them wake up. They should wake up. There's an urgent call. We need to take a stand right now. We can't wait any longer. Nigeria has been captured by Tinubu and his evil team, the people around him, that he has surrounded himself. It's going to be worse than what he did in Lagos. So this is the time to capture Tinubu and his cohorts before they capture Nigeria. They are determined, Tinubu is determined to hold, to maintain his grip on power and destroy Nigeria. 
It, this is a wake-up call, a wake-up call. Those of you that always think this thing is a joke, we've told you Nigerians missed an opportunity uh, when Mahmoud Yakubu went on to announce Tinubu as the winner of the 2023 election. We said that was the time Nigerians should have you know, stood up to refuse it and reclaim their nation back. But people were still saying, let's wait and wait and see. And Peter Obi said, okay, he trusts the judiciary. But now we have seen, obviously, that the judiciary cannot be trusted. They have been captured. The three arms of government have teamed up against innocent Nigerians. This is an urgent call. Please share this with as many people as you can. Share this with as many people as you can. The judges that are sitting on the case that Atiku and Obi have taken to the Supreme Court, thinking that there will be justice, at least in the Supreme Court, not like what happened in the uh, court where uh, Justice Samani and his co-rogues uh, uh, sat over, and they delivered that sham judgment that was not justice. They actually came there to just live up or to to uh, sacri uh, to satisfy whatever money they have gotten from from their uh, the people that bribed them to come and uh, give that kind of judgment. And I'm telling you, uh, we, we had rumors that the, just, uh, the judgment for this uh, 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 court in the Apex call, uh, Court was supposed to be the 2nd of November. But because of the fact that the judges felt that it would be difficult for them because financial inducement, they have been promised a lot of money, a lot of negotiations have been going behind closed doors. People like Wiki and others have been the ones that have been negotiating the deal, negotiating the pay, what, how much they should be paid, what else, you know, in foreign accounts, using other proxy names. So this has already been finalized. Some of us spoke and people thought we were just cooking up things. We kept saying we have inside information on what is going on. But many Nigerians are so naive, so gullible that they believe these people. How can anybody believe that Tinubu means well? A wicked person that at heart, he knows nothing but paying and bribing his way. Tinubu believes that anybody, no matter how transparent they are, no matter how just they are, they can all they will always sell their conscience, share their conscience when you pay them a lot of money. He believes that you can pay your way to get whatever you want anytime, any day. So he, is, he actually says, give somebody money who is saying he's not going to uh, dance to your tune and you give him money and he or she says no, add more money, add more money until the money is so much and they cannot say no, until the money has choked them so much that they cannot say no. That's what happened with Yak uh, Mahmoud Yakubu. That's what happened with Justice Samani and the rest of the judges. And that is what is about to happen with Justice Okoro, uh, Iyam Okoro and the others. It doesn't matter what part of the nation they come from. The love of money is the root of all evil. And that's what we're about to see. So instead of waiting for the judgment to be on the 2nd of November, they have now fast forwarded it. And it's going to be tomorrow, Thursday. Maybe you are watching me today. I mean, maybe you are watching me uh, when, when it's already Thursday. But I'm doing this on Wednesday, the, the 25th uh, of October. And so they want to do the judgment on the 26th, which is Thursday of October. They fast forwarding because they are telling Tinubu, if your files come out at the end of the month, it will be too difficult for us. Because there is what they call, they call in law or in justice, they talk about the court of, 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 of public opinion. When the whole nation hear about the, the, all the evil of Tinubu and the files are released, then the judges' hands, no matter what money they have received, their hands will be tied. Because how will they be able to come out and deliver judgment against Tinubu when they, all the files are out, the FBI files are out. So what, what did they do? They decided the judgment will be tomorrow. They are fast forwarding it to beat the, 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 the date of the release of the files of FBI uh, regarding Tinubu on Tinubu. So that's what they are doing. The only option left now, I have been saying it for months now. People think people like us don't know what we are doing. We have inside information. 
is a capture, is a national capture by these wicked people, by Tinubu, his cohorts, Bajamila, and all the others, Wike and the others. They have captured Nigeria. So Nigerians have got no more, they must, there's no more nation left. See what is happening. See what has happened. Just a few months of Tinubu, he came in when the Naira under Buhari, the exchange rate was about 700 or 700 and something Naira to a dollar. But now it's over 1,200 Naira to a dollar. And then, you, so that's just five months. How will it be at the end of the year? After one year, and some people are saying, give him a chance for uh, uh, maybe another four years, then we will bring change. These people will only, you know, strengthen their grip and their seat and hold on to it, and it will not be four years, it will be eight years of this tyrannic, evil rule of Tinubu. He, he, the Jagaban of Lagos is going to become the Jagaban of, uh, of Nigeria. So Nigerians, I am making this call. It's an urgent call. Rise up now. Don't wait for the judgment. It's been written already. They, and they are going to use technicalities. They first of all will not accept whatever came from Chicago State University because Justice Okoro already uh, is showing us the sign. We already said this some days ago that why should uh, the, the, this uh, the, the Chicago State University give two conflicting uh, 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 letters showing that one in one they said that Tinubu uh, actually, that, that it, it, the certificate is not fake. Another one they said is false. So they, which one are they going to accept? So they're going to throw that uh, submission from Atiku and said not admitted because she lacks the merit. And then on all the other prayers, all the other issues regarding 25%, re regarding double, nominate, double, double nomination, and all the other things that they have, that they are holding on to the one of lack of uh, adequate, uh, uh, there are no witnesses, you know, uh, authentic witnesses, and the one of saying that they have the burden of proof of, of uh, the rigging of election lies with, with uh, the petitioners, does not lie with the defendants. And so they're going to bring just a, repli a, a replication and the, a duplication of what Justice Samani's team did. That's what they are coming to do. So it's a quick judgment. It's already been written. They are judging against Nigerians. Forget Peter Obi. Forget Atiku. It's a judgment against Nigerians. I pray Nigerians will wake up. Why should people be so dumb, so dumb? They are about to capture Nigeria and destroy her. What are you going to do? Will you just sit in your house? And say, well, what, what they do, you know, let them do. I will just jack out. You are jack nowhere. The nation you want to jack to. Imagine if they have destroyed, if they have destroyed their own nation. Where they have crooks. Where they have drug barons. Where they have people that are, that falsify their certificate. Where they have people that are involved with forgery. Sitting as president. Sitting in the House of Re Representatives. Sitting in their Senate. Imagine if the nations you want to jump to, if they are run like that, then will you have a nation to run to? And all these thieves with the judges that they have bribed and paid a lot of money into foreign accounts, and they will make other nations rich and impoverish Nigeria. See the kind of borrowing that is taking place within five months. Tinubu is evil. Nigerians, wake up, please. Please wake up. You, you are afraid of dying. They are already killing you broad daylight. And you don't want to come out. Let me tell you, tomorrow, everybody, everybody living in Abuja, in the surrounding, uh, surrounding places, and they are going to send police and army. But if everybody comes out, how many are the police? How many are the army? Will they overpower us? And you, police and army, if you allow yourself to be used, God will judge all of you. Together with Tinubu, Wike, Bajamila, and uh, Akabio, and all the rest of you, wicked people. And I'm so sad and ashamed that even some of the people that are in opposition are sitting down there quiet, eating money. Wicked people, evil people. May God judge you and your generation. You hate humanity. You hate Nigerians. What have Nigerians done against you? So Nigerians, 
You are the only one that can salvage your nation from the evil, demonic, satanic grip of Tinubu and all the people he has surrounded himself with. Wicked people. Evil. People are saying, let's wait for the Supreme Court. Let's wait for the Supreme Court. Which Supreme Court? Supreme Court of evil. Supreme Court of corruption. Wicked people. You judges, God will judge you. Tomorrow, let's see what you do. This Thursday, quickly you went and fast forwarded the thing because you want to, you know, live up or you want to show to you to your, your pay master that we, we delivered the judgment in your favor, sir. We delivered the judgment. Wicked, heartless people. You are not supposed to be judges. You are supposed to rot in hell. God will punish you. Wicked people. Nigerians, please, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up and take your nation back. Don't wait for later. Please, those of you that are watching me, share this. Share this. Let it go viral. Let every Nigerian hear that they have captured our nation. They have captured our nation. They are fast forwarding. They are going to deliver judgment in favor of Tinubu. And Nigeria will start her suffering. Because then if anybody tries to protest later, they will say it is high treason. But now is the time we must turn and take our nation back. I know they are watching what some of you have been sent here to come and listen to what we are saying, what the plans are. It's not about secret plan. It's open now. You are killing people openly. You are destroying people openly. You are pulling the nation down openly. And so we are coming out against you. Who are you? Wicked people, evil people. Nigerians, please, please, please. I am begging you in the name of God. Please, please, Nigerians. Don't let this thing go on. If there will be no Nigeria again. Many more people will die. Please, Nigerians. Please, Nigerians, I'm begging you. Enough of the killing. Enough of the insecurity. Enough of the struggle. People can't even eat. But see what these people are doing with our money. Using this money, stolen money, to be bribing heartless judges. I beg, if you are there in the, among the judges and you hear or you watch this broadcast and you still have conscience and a heart, please, even if you are not going to vote in favor of injustice, at least speak out, let the nation know that you were not in support so that we know we still have judges that have a heart, that fear God. Nigerians, I beg you, whether you're in Nigeria, you are abroad, those of you that are in different nations abroad, go to the embassy, Nigeria embassy, and shut it down. Go to different embassies. Go to the UN. Go everywhere and let them know there is a capture. There is a national capture by a few politicians. They want to destroy Nigeria. And this is the time we are to get up and save our nation from these wicked people. So anytime, let me tell you, don't wait for anybody to call you to come out for a protest. You begin to mobilize people around you. It must be a national, spontaneous protest, not a planned protest, because they will come out against you. But make it a thing that there is no place. All the roads must be shut down. Nothing must work until we reclaim our nation back from these wicked people. This is my call. You will remember I said this. Take this as a joke and think it's just rattling. This northerner, what did they give him? Maybe Peter will be bribing. Maybe Atik will bribing. Nobody gave me a, a cent. Remember Peter will be, they say we know they receive shishi. We know they give shishi. So we know what they are doing. Let's recapture our nation back from these wicked people. We are not prepared to go, continue to suffer like this. Enough is enough. Nigerians, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Rise up, rise up. Now, now, Nigerians. Please, 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 I beg you. Take your nation back from north to south, east to west. Forget religion. Forget tribalism. Forget whether you're from the north or south. This time around, they are against Nigerians. We must unite to fight them and take our nation back. This is an urgent call. Do it now. Don't wait for later. Don't even wait for the judgment because it's been written already. And we know them and we're not going to allow them. Thank you very much for being part of this broadcast. Please help me share it with as many people as you can. Let every Nigerian within Nigeria and abroad hear this broadcast. Let them take action, not later, but now. And if you have not subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do that quickly. Do that quickly. Like this broadcast so that it will be recommended to many more people to get to watch. Those of you that have always joined me, I want to say thank you. But this time around, we are not sitting and watching these wicked people destroy our nation. May God bless you and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I'll be coming back to you as the, when I get some more information. I'm going 
to let you know what's going on. Thank you. God bless you. This is. All right. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to every one of you. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dr. Aruna for your wonderful um, expression right there. Uh, right from the one you've been there for a better Nigeria. I want to say thank you very much, sir, for uh, you are an elderly man. Um, we don't have more of you like that in Nigeria. So you've been consistent. Yes, I understand we have been there as well, but we are young. We want a better Nigeria in our time. You are old and um, many of your age, they are not interested of what is currently going on right now in Nigeria. So Dr. Aruna, thank you very much for standing beside us, beside the innocent, concerned Nigerians. Um, your expression was very, very emotional. I felt, I felt it in my heart. In fact, since since this morning, I've not been myself. My, I've not been myself. Um, yes, thank you very much, my people. I appreciate you all. I'm going to post out a link. You know, these people, I don't know. I don't want anybody to attack me here. Let me post out a link in case you want to join this conversation before we move on. I'm just going to do that right now. I wanted to click on the link and join us on the panel. We only have 10 spots. Um, let's hear from you. Uh, the link I've been posted. Thank you very much, everybody. Mother of all, Mommy Diaspora. Thank you very much, Mommy, for all you have been doing since they want it now. You've been, been, been by my side. You know, I want to say thank you. I appreciate you so very much, and I love you so much. Thank you. And I want to use the opportunity to thank every one of you that have been beside me uh, genuinely. Uh, since April last year to now, I've been here every blessed day. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Madam Bella Naomi, Madam Rita, uh, Mr. Alex. Uh, many of you, many of you, I can't mention names. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, may God bless every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Tomorrow, we will be, um, we will know our fate about our country you know i've done my part i'm still doing my part i think this is the best i can do you know so how many of you are listening to me right now you've done your part and you are still doing your part as well so i believe i don't know maybe this is the best you can do as well like me Tomorrow, Thursday, 26th of October, 2023, Supreme Court will pass their judgment. We came out earlier on this afternoon. A lot of people are already talking about it right now. Um, despite the emotions right now, we are not even sure what the judgment is going to be. Two things involved here. Majority of Nigerians, both home and abroad, don't trust the judiciary, including myself. But the judgment is not yet passed. So what that means, anything can still happen. Thank you very much. I've seen every one of you right there on the backstage. I'll accept you guys soon. Thank you. Uh, you can offer camera. So I want to let everybody know that it's not up to us. For those of you that think that it's all about Mr. Peter Obi, it's all about Tinubu or Atiku, that's fine. For me, um, it's all about Nigeria. Yeah, it's all about Nigeria. Tinubu is made and is made forever. No matter the hardship that will come to Nigeria today, will never affect someone like Tinubu and his family never again. No matter the hardship that will come to Nigeria, we never affect someone like Peter Obi and his family, never again. No matter the hardship that will come to Nigeria, it will never affect Atiku and his family, never again. Even some of us, some of us talk less of this uh, powerful man. So it is too late to fail. It's about us. It's about us. But if you think that what we have been doing here you don't like us, you just think that we have been doing it for our selfish interest or because we love Igbo people or whatever. 
that's fine. We'll see. We already seen what is happening in Nigeria. If you're happy with it, that's fine. Most especially those of you that lives abroad, you see the good life that is, you know, that every one of us are living here in abroad. We wanted to replicate it back home. That's why we were putting in all the effort. But some of you said, no, you will never allow it to happen. So um, I want to say, no problem. Tomorrow is the judgment day. This night, I just want to allow people to speak. I want to hear from everybody. I don't really have much to say, to be honest. I don't have much to say. Um, I just wanted to keep my consistency 100%. You know, coming out this evening was one of the most hardest uh, evening since I've been doing this broadcast. I don't know why. I was very, 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 very reluctant. But, like I said, I wanted to keep the consistency, you know, and come out. So, let me accept people in. You know, thank you very much, my people. Uh, Angina Francis, thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Good evening to you. Uh, how are you doing today, sir? It's good to have you on the panel. Well, I'm doing pretty good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll come back to you. Give us a mandate, my brother. Thank you. You've been there. Um, the, the final day is already here. What's your take? How are you doing, my brother? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, your line is not very clear, though. Okay, we'll come back to you. Your line is 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 not clear. Let us come back to you. Thank you very much, Mother Patricia. Thanks for joining us. Good evening to you, ma. Thanks for all you've been doing. I appreciate you. How are you doing today, ma? Good evening, Mr. Elvis. Thank you for the opportunity again, you know, to be in this team. And also let me use the opportunity to thank everybody that have been on this race up to now. And of course, we cannot forget and then we cannot be, you know, uh, more grateful to Mama than you know uh, 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 than any other because she is being there all the time. So, Mommy Diaspora, we thank you. We appreciate you, your consistency, and your backing, your support for this channel. It's overwhelming. Thank you. May the Lord bless you for all that you have done. And uh, of course, uh, thank you. And we are looking forward to what the uh, people will say tomorrow. And we can already yeah. deduce. Um, what's going on but god is still on the throne and we believe in god that removed kings and set up new kings thank you thank you very much all right um thank you very much uh, mr f emmanuel it's good to have you here sir how are you doing today sir my brother ervis thank you again for an opportunity today thank you thank you good morning good afternoon good evening wherever you are and thank you sir. thank you for keeping the platform going on yesterday i was down completely down i wanted to come in but when i saw the you know all the suggestions or the you know i was uh -huh. just in fact i i i was happy when i heard that the 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 supreme court have fixed it for november 6th or thereabout or so at least giving the fbi opportunity to release what they need to release you know, but unfortunately today we are hearing that they are fixing it for tomorrow. Well, mm. it's, it's left for Nigerians, not even the judge, the judges. Everything is in the hands of the Nigerians. So let's see how it goes. Thank you, sir. But all hope is not lost yet. Thank yes, you. Thank you very much, Mr. F. Man. May God bless you, sir. Thank you. Uh, before I will come to the order, I have a name here, Tune. Tun, um, I think this is the first time I've seen this name here. Uh, please, on your camera for me to see who is behind the name Tun. Please, uh, while I wait for you to do that. Okay, I can see you right now. Thank you very much, uh, Tun. Thank you for my camera. Thank you, thank you, uh, Tun. Where are you joining us from? I'm in the UK. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Do you do you do you do you watch uh, Doctor Damages? Uh, yes, 
sometimes okay. yeah I'm, I, okay i'm one of the major panelists so if you go there you see me quite often oh my brother okay thank you thank you we all are doing the same thing you know it's good to have you here it's your first time here isn't it watch but it's my first time i'm getting into the panel to say something oh wonderful do do you want to speak to us right now i don't know if you can wait yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, sure, I'll, sure, I'll sure. Try you. okay go ahead talk to us sir. okay mm -hmm. I just want to say that we should just uh, be realistic. We need to manage our expectation. Our, our expectation, because we are, we've all known, I mean, people were thinking that the uh, Supreme Court would, uh, would come up with, with something different. But we forgot that um, the, Chief, the Chief Justice is, in, is, is one of the um, uh, instruments of, um, of, 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 uh, of the corruption in the judiciary. He's not going to do anything. They've mm. all planned everything. It's all planned. It's all it's all perfected. The only solution right now. See, please, I want to just say something. And um, because the other lady that said God, I know, yeah, but it, this is not just about God will do it anymore. We just have to come out. Mm -hmm. See, Bible says uh the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence must take it by force. It is now time. If we do not stop these people, they are already planning for an, uh, for eight years. Tinubu is already grooming his son. The other uh, corrupt politicians are already grooming their children to take over the baton. And we are here talking about God, 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 God all the time. God has done it already. He's given us all the all the all the tools that we need to to keep um, all these criminals away. Mm -hmm. And I believe personally that something, something very, very, very dramatic that have never happened in Africa will happen soon. That's just the way I want to put it. But nobody, but we just need, because they think that with this Supreme Court thing, by the time they pick out the thing, which um, is what I'm expecting anyway, that they are, they, they are, everybody's just going to go sleeping. They think the obedient movement is about uh, evil people or some people that they will all go sit down, but they are going to. See, sleep has already been taken away from them. They will not find any peace. So that's that's just well, what I want well, to well, let well, you. Before I let you go, what's your expectation yes. tomorrow? My expectation is gonna be is gonna be the same as the um the tri the, tri the tribunal, if not worse. Maybe they will start telling off um they will start telling off um article tomorrow just like they told told of hobby's lawyer in the yeah. in the first uh petition so they're, yeah. they're gonna tell, we're gonna see we're gonna see that i mean if if you if you notice i don't know whether you you listen in the first sitting some few days ago that new judge was asking some question that he was he was giving us um indication of where they're going to the technically the the technicalities they're going to use in throwing away the case you know imagine asking I, I'm asking the uh, the the lawyers that it was the the position was it made in a in a court of law? I mean, I don't know the kind of education these people has. And you okay. call yourself a judge? What kind of education? This thing was done under oath. Do they not understand when somebody does something under oath, whether you 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 did it from a courthouse or anywhere? But it was done under oath. That is, it's 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 um the law backs it. You know, so they are going to come up with some stupid things, I know, as usual. And um, oh, uh, unfortunately, that is where uh, we found ourselves in Nigeria. You know, and um, it's it's just terrible. It, it's just terrible. You know, um, to be a thief, to be a thief and a cheat. The Tinubu and his gangs have normalized it. You know, it's it's okay to cheat. It's okay to be a thief. It's okay to um to be a criminal and then a criminal can still be a president um, of the federal republic of nigeria so all i'm just going to say to my to my biafran brothers i'm not a member of the ipob let me just put this out there i because i don't believe the, of the approach the way they're approaching stuff i know that i don't believe it's right but however this is a time that we need to um, um, set aside our differences, whether it's IPOB, whether it's obedience, whether it's people that want Nigeria. We have a common enemy, and the common enemy are these few idiots. We need to be united in one purpose and chase people out.
that's just a thing. In chasing them out, then we can start having the conversation about Biafra, we can start having a conversation about Dua Republic or other other factions that want to leave Nigeria. That's all I can say. But if you say you want to fight these people as Biafra right now, you don't have the reality is that you people don't have the arms. What um the chap in uh, Finland is um, the way he's approaching the whole thing is just uh, it's just laughable. You know, but I don't want to attack anybody. But like I said, before you start talking about Yoruba Republic, um, a Biafra Republic, you need to kick these people out. If you don't kick these people out, Nabekano will still be lavishing in that jail. He needs to he, he needs his freedom. And for Nabekano to get his freedom, there has to be either a violent removal of these governments or um um uh or, or we kick them out through or through any way means or manner so it's not about they don't care they don't care about what you're saying they don't they don't give they don't have a regard for anybody if you like protest from now it has to be people has to come out come out take the streets every corner of the street do you think the soldiers are happy they don't buy they don't buy uh food in in uh, a different market the soldiers are not happy the police are not happy. So, All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very okay. much. You. Right. I really appreciate your time with us today. God bless you. Uh, please, yes, please before you go, let me let me correct him because he cannot uh, just misquote me. When I said, uh, when I mentioned God, I didn't tell you to fold your hands and wait and see the salvation of God. I didn't say that. So if I use the word God, I didn't say, oh, just wait and don't do anything. That was not what my intention. So please don't misquote me. I'm not of those type that will tell you God will, you know. I believe God has given me the power and I have the power to do what I have to do now. But it doesn't negate the fact that I, I have to also give him the credit because I don't believe that I can do anything without him. Okay, so that's Madam, exactly what okay madam let me just uh let you know i'm not a pagan either i'm a christian and um, yeah. i'm a saved christian but what i'm trying to say if you understand what i'm trying to say i'm not even i wasn't addressing you the the, the general um uh the narrative that we have from most of us is that uh, god will do it or god will do it that's what i'm just i just felt i need to address that yeah. and we need mm -hmm. to just well, that said, not about, not yeah. the sister or the woman that uh, spoke no no it's all, it's, all, it's, it's it's okay madam we are together it's not the time to start bashing each other okay, we are to, that's what i'm just trying to don't, say don't come here to bash right. people either yeah. all right that, that's fine that's fine i understand uh where you're coming from tune because a lot of the majority of nigerians uh, every one of us know this majority of nigerians believe that they will sit and lay down in their bed you know that and god will do everything for them like the common uh popular saying that oh uh now only god now go help this country yeah i believe that's the area mm -hmm. you were going which my, me myself i'm mm -hmm. totally against it you know uh, now only god go help this country now only god go help the, we all have grown you know our children are growing every day we are still saying only god go help this country so i understand what you were saying um madam patricia i also understand you as well because you said measuring god doesn't stop you from doing something I, that is wonderful you know i'm a christian as well i pray every day you know i pray to god every blessed day but i'm still very very active i'm here every day since april till now i've been here every single day i still remember to pray every single day so uh, what my brother Tun was talking about is those people, those reluctant people that believe, you know, that God will provide them everything without not doing anything. So thank you very much. I appreciate uh, both of you. So I'd like to uh, thank you, my brother. Thank you. Madam Amen Bright, good evening to you, man. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, how are you doing today? Thank you, Mr. Evans. Thank you, and you. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I greet everybody as well. Uh, Mr. Evis, I, if I tell you that I'm strong now, I'm just lying. I'm just lying. Because uh, today I, I saw you the way you were explaining it, but people were not around. Uh, there was nobody there, no comment. I said, okay, maybe I still have to wait. I saw you and I saw Mr. Haruna Guna that he wept and I started crying as well. You know, I'm too emotional, but I try to be strong, but really very emotional. I wanted to go out today. When I saw this thing, I, I said, no, I just cancel it. 
because people walking in my place, they finish around 1.45 today. I was having the chance to go out to go and settle some few things. But I couldn't, I'm done as I'm talking to you now. I don't really know what to say because I've been getting this body movement from this Supreme Court right from that Monday. And that on Monday, I was having my grandchildren here. One was having fever. The other one want to be also have All the right. same thing. So I couldn't really just concentrate. Uh, hello? I said just briefly, briefly. We have not started some yeah. submission yet. Yeah. my my. I don't know unless if God did wonder tomorrow. I have been saying it. I never trust these people. They are still going to they are still going to judge just like the supreme uh, supreme uh, 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 tribunal uh, court. I believe that they don't. They have exchanged brown envelope. They have decided. It's what I have. Unless God, <laughs> I like if there's wonder from God, we shouldn't start making God. God said, uh, "I give you your hand. I will bless your hand. I will bless right, your hand. You God will do something." Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Appreciate it. Let me take some calls as people are trying to call in. Guys, if you want to call in, I want to prioritize callers for now. At least take about 10 uh, calls uh, before coming back to the panel. All right. Thank you very much. Good evening to you. Your name, where are you calling us from? Yeah. Good evening, uh, Mr. Um, Evans. God bless you so much. My name is uh, Charles, calling from London. Thank you, sir. You have two minutes. Good evening to you. Talk to us, sir. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I really want to thank you so much for your efforts. You have done well. In fact, you have done marvelous well. You know, God will continue to bless you. It's not easy. From April, according to what you said now, from April to this very day. Yeah. Is that uh, Nigeria? I can say that when I say Nigeria, I mean all of, us, all of us. We are not ready. We are not ready to free that nation because that country called Nigeria has been hijacked. That country has been captured by the evil men. And the people, our people over there in Nigeria are not serious at all. The problem of that country is tribalism and religion. It's issue. Nobody wants to do anything. Now my brother did that. May we leave him. Now my, that is the reason why. Okay, the, the, the judgment has been fixed, has been fixed the next week. Okay, today now they are changing, they are changing the, the date now about tomorrow. So this is a, a serious call for all Nigerians to come out. Nobody will do this thing for us. Nobody will do it. Even me that is in UK, I'm not happy about it. I'm not happy because I almost have my time. What I'm, whatever I'm doing in UK here, 30% is, is, you know, I'm spending it over there in Nigeria. So I wish my brothers and sisters can come out tomorrow. I was in Nigeria during the election. I traveled to Nigeria to vote. But I was so disappointed. My ticket I bought, every time I spent traveling to Nigeria, it was waste. You know, I wasted it for no, for nothing. Thank you, because sir. Because the election was so mad, uh, okay. was so rained. All right, sir. Thank you. That's why that, yeah, yeah, that's why that uh, those states where I come from, we, we a labor won that election. But it was also rained. The, the vote of labor okay. party was cut down. Okay, sir, your two so, minutes is up. I don't up. want to take your time. I don't want to take too much of your time. Thank you so much, Mr. Evans. God bless you, sir. Where is it? Thank you, so I'll talk better. All right. Thank you very much, Madam Deborah, for calling in. Good evening to you. Please Hello? talk to us. Thank you, Madam. Good evening to you. Talk to us. Two minutes. Yeah, good evening, uh, Niger Watch. Good evening to everyone. It's been a while. I just want to make a quick contribution to the broadcast. Uh, Go ahead, Madam. You have two that, minutes. Uh, the, the, the Supreme Court uh, are, are hesitant. They quickly set a date and they're doing everything in a rush. Whereas during the tribunal, they, they took all their time and they didn't even care. It's obvious that they are doing this because of the FBI uh, files, just to, to quickly make a judgment before the files will be released so that whatever comes out might not make any difference that's why they are in a rush to make to to give a, a judgment everybody knows that this is just to quickly solidify uh Tinubu's win so that regardless of what the fbi is going to bring later will not make any difference that's obviously what they're trying to do and again the us i i must say that uh, the way they have handled this whole thing i have uh, I, I might i might be wrong but uh, it's just a sign that they too have been delaying everything tactically. 
they are not they are they are just playing uh, in a way that people would think they are they are trying to do the right thing and on the other hand they are delaying it so that the, the supreme court judgment will will take place if i remember precisely initially they said they are going to release this thing early october and for no reason they they keep delaying it and delaying it till now obviously they are just delaying it so that before they release it the Supreme Court might have made their judgment so that it's not going to affect uh, Tinubu at the long run. Otherwise, why haven't they released it uh, 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 before now? If, if they are not trying, if they are not just trying to be complicit, they're just trying to play safe because of their own election so that people will not say, oh, they are, they are being compromised. But it's obvious that what they are doing too, they are, they are, they are just trying to protect Tinubu in everything that they are doing indirectly. Because I thought by now they should have released the file as they promised initially. What is their reason for delaying it? If not that they're just waiting for the Supreme Court to, to give their judgment before they before they release it. Okay. People may not agree with me, but in my own opinion, I strongly believe that the current administration in the US is, is, is backing Tinubu they want to do everything possible to keep uh, Tinubu, Tinubu in power, but they are just being—they are just doing it indirectly. But directly, they are backing him up. Thank you, thank That's you, madam. God bless you. This evening. Thank, thank you, you, ma you so much, Mr. Nanja Watch. Thank you, thank, thank you, ma'am. All right, um, I have love of God is my strength here. Good evening to you, madam. Thanks for calling in. Please talk to us. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Uh, your line is not clear. We can't hear you. It's, it's not clear at all. Can you hear me now? Okay, you are better now. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Now, let me say, I want to say thank you to everyone. I want to thank you especially. Thank you for what you have really done well. You have done well, so much that I don't know how to thank you from my heart. Number two, I want to thank uh, Mommy Diaspora. God, Mama, God will bless. God will not leave you. You are a strong mother. And because you are a strong mother, you will see people who will look after you and take care of you. That's mm -hmm. my prayer for you. Pat and every other person that I've come to know, Sister Rita, Omoye, Sister Pat, everyone, eh, busy brain, my sister, and everybody, I want to say thank you. For me, knowing you people, you are like my family. You know what I want to say, Niger Wash? I'm sad, I have to tell you the truth. I feel pain in my heart. I feel so much pain so much pain in my heart you know we need to do something you know what i'm saying we need to do something these people they have seen us finish they have seen us finish because they feel that we cannot do anything they feel that we are we who are you people you can't do anything don't worry do this when you do this everybody will go to their house give some few people money and they will go and sleep but i want to tell tulumbo tulumbo this time is going to be different tulumbo this time is going to be different you people have been doing this thing since 1960 we have no enjoy our country all of you are putting yourself, putting your children, putting your family. Your wife will be in Senate. Everybody, you put them one place. How about the other people? Where the oil is coming from? From Delta State to the East, to everybody. Where the way, what have we gained? We have not gained anything. What is it? We are tired. We can't live our life like this. We can't continue for these people to be treating us as if we are nothing. It's our country. It belongs to us. All of us as that place. They cannot treat us like this. Nigeria, wake up! Wake up! It is too Thank much. You. Why are you people sleeping? Wake up! Thank you. I'll fight. Thank you. Thank you, madam. <sighs> 
Thank you, Mr. Justin, for calling in. Please talk to us. Good evening to you. Hello, Nigel Watch. Uh, good evening and uh, good evening to the panel. Thank you. Uh, Nigel Watch, listen, I just, um, I want to say um, a big, big, big thank you, you know, uh, for all that you've done, you know, your, your platform, uh, the love, you know, I didn't really see Nigel Watch as a means of uh, trying to get a good go go governance for Nigeria, but I see your platform as a place where people come to learn, you know, and you. Uh, brings the family together. Um, any, any, anybody knows, or I would say maybe a couple of huge percentages of Nigerians know that there's nothing uh, new that will come from the uh, the upper court, which is the, um, you know, the RP court. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll thank the obedience for a well good fight. Uh, uh, this is not the time to give up. Uh, we just have to look towards a brighter and uh, a good strategy in the future. Well, I think the only way we can get things right, uh, we have to be ready to play it dirty. You know, uh, dirty can mean anything, but we have to be ready to play it that way. But uh, apart from that, you know, uh, I feel like the judiciary, um, they might take Nigeria by surprise because they know that if they fix uh, one week from now for, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the hearing or for the judgment, and they suddenly take it to tomorrow, maybe they're trying to disrupt that means of protest so that just take people by surprise. Uh, if Nigeria is going to come out to protest, I don't really know because I'm not really seeing the sign, to be honest. Um, there are a lot of people who really want to, but majority of Nigerians are not ready to do it. Uh, reasons may be left for them. Some of them feel like they don't, Nigeria is not a country worth dying for. Like you, you, you um, hear people say that in your program sometimes when you do your show and people write on the comments and, you know, we listen to stuff. And so you, then you can see where people's mindsets are, you know, maybe because of the corruption, because of the tribalism, you know. Uh, the, the, the religious kind of stuff. Yeah, but I think we are all in it together, Nanja Wash. At the end of the day, like you said, a, a lot of people, unfortunately, a good poor obedience will suffer for it. But there's still a lot we can do, you know? I don't know. Obedience might start registering. There might be some kind of register where obedience have to identify themselves. Join a kind of obedient party. They might have something like a card or something. Have a, I don't know who can do it. Peter, we can champion that, you know? Labour Party can do it. So that the obedient that need help, that find yourself in certain kind of stuff, but obedience can rally around Thank you. and help one another, you know? And um, yeah, just if that's the way we want to split Nigeria, you know, the ones Thank who want good governance going to be on one side. If you need help, you know, just like I talk about the pastors and, you know, they come together, they can raise money, build hospitals, churches, you know, build all kinds of stuff that people can benefit from without collecting money from them. Or even if you're going to collect money, but subsidize it to a minimum standard. Apart from that, Nigeria Wash, I really, really, really want to say thank you. I know I've overstayed my two minutes, but I really want to thank you so thank much. You. I just want to say thank, thank, thank you, Nigel Wash. You've done, you've done a lot. You've changed a lot of people. You dragged people to change the mindset of us who haven't called the first time. You know, uh, we're not really used to this kind of stuff. But trust me, you you kind of bring a lot of people to home, and you open the eyes of a lot of people. Just like what you say, Peter Obi did to you. That is what you've done to a lot of people to know how Nigeria is so corrupt. And Unfortunately, the elders, the people who will look up to, to say, okay, they will make it changes. If you look at the judges' faces, you just see corruptions. I'm not expecting anything different, to be honest. I'm not. Mm. You know, I, I feel for those people who think something might happen tomorrow. You know, but obviously you can't really tell people not to believe what they want to believe. But yeah, I guess that's what life is all about. But I think Thank we you. need to put up a good fight, you know, and uh, do something better in the future. Thank you very much, Sanjay Wash. And, uh, God Thank bless you. the platform and God bless everybody in the platform as well. Thank, Thank you. you, my brother, Mr. Justin. I appreciate Thank you. you always. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, let me take another call quickly, guys. Press on the like button. Thank you very much, Madam Benis Peterson, for calling in. Good evening to you. Talk to us. Two minutes. Hello, um, Mr. Alves. And Josh. Good evening. Thank you, Good ma evening, everyone, and all protocols observed. I just want to thank you for a, a, a work well done for all this while. It's been a long journey. And I just want to encourage you that we are all behind you. We love you so much and you've put so much in this work. I don't want you to feel discouraged and I don't want you to think this is the end of the road. To all obedience and even everyone in the house, in the comment session, this is not the end of the road. This might just be the beginning of another chapter of a journey that will end well. Regardless of what the 
judgment will come tomorrow, I strongly believe we should not give up this fight. They say winners don't give up, it's losers. We are not losers, we are winners. We will not give up this fight in any capacity. We will still forge ahead. I want to thank you so much for all the effort you've put into enlightening us in this program. I have learned so much in your program, mentally, you. emotionally, intellectually, from all your panelists, the evening, the midnight talk is so educative and entertaining. And I've known so much about my country, about people, and about these leaders. One thing they don't know, we from the South South and South East, we own this wealth. At least 80% of this wealth come from there. That is what they are taking. But they don't know that one day we will rise and say enough is enough. In fact, it's coming close to that time. Thank you. We are going to do something very soon. So I just want to thank you and let all of us keep the faith that very soon, let's watch what they will do. Okay. And we will also continue to work. Thank you so much. Thank you very Bye. much, Madam. May God bless you. Thank you so much. All right, Mr. Justin, call him back again, right? Gosh, I'm so sorry. I don't want to be disrespectful, please. Um, uh, I know there are a lot of people trying to hold. But please, I just want to make an appeal for those people who, who, who are hijacking the China. Please, we beg you guys, at least the judiciary is going to give you a final whatever tomorrow. You guys should go home and support you all now. You know, support my president, support Abadou. You know, go and invest. You already tell you guys to come back and invest. Just leave the platform for us, please. Stop, stop, stop. Uh, uh, what do you don't call it now, hijacking the platform or, or trying to disrupt what we're trying to do. Please, mm. that's exactly what I want to say. Please, thank, thank you. you. Uh, don't try to be disrespectful. Thank you, my brother. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Uh, let me pick another call. Guys, press on the like button. I appreciate every one of you. Um, I'll be coming back to the panel shortly. So, it's the best time for anybody that want to call in now because I still have just five mm. calls to go. So after this call, then I'm done. Thank you very much, Madam Ola, for calling in. Please talk to us. Good evening to you. Hello? Madam Ola, can, can I you hear talk me? now? Yes, uh, go, go ahead. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good afternoon again, uh, Mr. Nigel Watch. Like everybody has said, I uh, thank God for this platform. Thank God for your life. Um, everybody, I just that I don't want us to be demoralized. This is why they are rushing it. Uh, if the FBI uh out before they pass judgment, they probably or is and they wouldn't want to under cap it. Now to we'll continue to have hope and plan changes on how to move forward because to afford our nation to be in a cool state. Um when we spoke earlier this morning, uh, Nigeria was so uh, about two people mentioned the fact that it's not going to be about P or OB or Atiku P or every other parties again. It's going to be Nigerians who are suffering. So even if they want to, those that don't want to carry out a peaceful protest from all over the nation, Abuja, every state who are suffering, the placards will just read they are experiencing, not necessarily mentioning the principles of each party or the party. Still, like my 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 child is hungry. Please, Tinubu, do something. Discover Tinubu now, or not even mentioning Tinubu. This regime is making me suffer. I'm not eating for one week. You know, placards like that. That will tell a story. That will tell the stories of what you are that Nigerians do not want you because you are a forger, not necessarily from any party. If you are really suffering it, come out and cry out. It's going to be full protest, nothing about... If uh, Sari Dokumbo can go out that they should oppose Tinumbu, everything that is suffering can come out Thank and you. say, no, I'm tired. Thank you, ma'am. So it doesn't have to be anymore. We need to cry out. I don't Analyze that. That is hope. When something uh, is going to be good, first of all, it might collapse all the way to the rock bottom. From the ruins of collapse, the good thing 
of it. So let's keep hope alive. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you Madam very Ola. Thank you. God bless you. Okay, uh, callers, I think I'm done with you right now. Let me go back to the panel. I'll come back to callers again later on. Um, I want to thank those of you that stayed in this morning. Um, Mr. Pansat, thank you very much, Dr. CM. Um, thank you so much. Then, um, uh, um, Black Panther, thank you, and many others that stayed uh, very late this morning because they actually finished this morning talking about the country, our country, the things that's affecting you and I. Um, I want to thank every one of you that have genuinely supported the, a, a better Nigeria. I want to say thank you. I cannot start mentioning all names. Um, I have to hold a, a, a big note with me here, but I don't have to, I don't have to do that. If you know in your heart you've been to this platform, and in your heart, and uh, you've supported a better Nigeria genuinely. Not everybody that have been here that really wanted a better Nigeria. I want to say thank you to every one of you. Uh, those of you that have been on this journey with us, my workers, my panelists, my viewers, my callers, commenters, uh, any one of you, I want to say thank you. It, it, you know, a, it was a collective effort. Ha, ah, it's gradually becoming the past now. I'm already using it was, which I don't suppose to use yet. It's supposed to be is a collective effort, but but to, from tomorrow now, we've moved out of that. And, um, you know, so yeah, I want to say thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate you all. Without you guys, I don't believe I would have been able to do it by myself. You guys thanking me, thanking me. Yes, but you forgot that. You guys were my backbone. That's why I was able to be coming here. If not, it wouldn't have been possible. Thank you. My belief is that something might still happen tomorrow, even though I'm very, 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 very down right now. I don't even know. But I still, I don't know. I don't, I still have that slim, slim, slim belief that something might still happen. But in case it didn't happen, I won't blame myself. And I believe many of you listening to me right now that have really put in that effort will not blame yourself either. But what about our people back home? I don't know if they will say the same thing I'm saying right now, that they won't blame themselves. Um, what I've got to realize in this whole journey is that Nigerians back home are not ready yet. So the best thing that I will advise them to continue to do, let them continue to jackpot like they are doing right now. But changing the country, they are not ready yet. But I won't have blamed them if maybe they were not ready or they have never been ready for anything. That would have been fine. But I've noticed that they always have the effort. They always, they always put in the effort, the energy to do irrelevant things. You know? In Nigeria, for example, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, every state in Nigeria, all the lounges are busy, bars are busy, clubs are busy. Nigerians are enjoying their lives. Like the video I played a couple of days ago from Felakuti, the Nigerians suffer, and at the same time, they pretentiously smile. You see, for me, I've lived almost all my life in the United Kingdom. Um, I get to understand that, in fact, I've never suffered in my life. Let me just put that on. It's not about bragging. I've never, I, I don't know what it means. I've never, ever suffered. By God's grace, daddy and mommy was already doing well before they brought me to this life. So I don't get to understand that, oh, everything was provided. You know, but I grow to some certain age and I get to decide that I want to live my own life. I want to be hardworking. I want to focus on my education. I did my college and university levels in the United Kingdom. 
as I speak to you, so my dad is a PDP man. Many of you know that, right? But I decided to live my life because I know that PDP and APC are the people that brought us where we are today. Don't forget there used to be SDP and NROC. They destroyed Nigeria with their names, that satanic name, NROC and SDP. They now changed it to PDP and APC. Even the APC you are talking about right now used to be AC as well. So to call everything short, thank you very much, Mr. Kennedy Egariwa. May God bless you, sir. Thank you so much uh, for always being there, for your prayers, for your support. These are one of the people that is right there praying for me, uh, encouraging me behind the closed door. God bless you, sir. I appreciate you always. So like I'm saying, so I have no, I've never ever suffered, but I've seen a lot of people suffering in Nigeria because I spent more time in Nigeria. So I decided to say no. When I started this journey, my dad actually told me that no, you, you can't do this. I said yes, I can. He said okay, because my dad is a kind of a father that allow you to do what you want to do. My dad is a barrister. I remember when I was going to the uni, he forced me to go read law. Then I went to do property law. On my first year, I don't like it. I decided to say, no, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. The almost cost problem in the house. I don't want to talk about myself today, but a time will come, I'll bring it here. I'll bring, I'll talk about me. Before I now went on to do film and media studies. I have my degree in film and media studies. So today, because I have grown to that age to get to realize that life is just one. I will not live forever. You will not live forever. We will not live forever. So I decided to say, okay, how do I choose to live my own life? Even though I know I cannot please everybody. In fact, there are some people listening to me right now. They don't like me. You yourself, there are many people that don't like you. That's a normal thing. That's a way of life. It's, it's okay. You must live with it. As long as the people that doesn't like you, once you recognize it, you don't need to be amongst them. But that is not enough to stop you from doing the right thing. I've always lived my life on the right thing. Always. I've hit my chest so many times on this platform that nobody absolutely on earth have anything against me, even though I know I'm not a perfect person. When I saw Mr. Peter Obi, I, don't, I didn't really know anything about Mr. Peter Obi, but I, we were already saying on this platform that a smaller party would take over Nigeria. That was about three years ago. Then, in this 2023 presidential election last year, Sore came to this platform. He spent about three hours with us, two hours, 48 minutes, something like that. I assured him that I would use my platform to work for him free of charge. He took so many questions from people. People called in, asked him a series of questions and all that. Then Peter Obi was still in PDP, my dad's party. So I, for me, Peter Obi never crossed my mind at all. I was not interested. Although I already knew a little about him, that the man is a good man, but I didn't bother doing any research. Then Peter Obi now decamped out of PDP to Labour Party. I went on to do my research about three days or four days later, I came back to my people here that already, everybody already prepared their mind to support Sowere. Many people were supporting, some people were supporting Wiki, some were for Sowere, some were for uh, Kingsley Mongalo and all that. I came back, the way you all are listening to me right now, then we normally have what we call debate, which normally happen every Friday. 
I told everyone, uh, I have something to say. I want everybody to join me. Let's support Mr. Peter Obi. There was a lot of argument that they, no, no, see that's why they support, no. If I Madarita, I've been with me for long. Madarita that you all know. I've been with me for long. She was one of the people that said, no, I cannot support Peter Obi. I, I, I don't, in fact, <laughs> it's, I'll go and think about it. I have a video here with me. But to cut everything short, I managed to change everybody's mindset to follow me on this journey. Today, Madarita, Mr. Alex, Mr. Alex was from Wiki, and many others, they stood by me till today. I want to let everybody know that in case, whatever that happens tomorrow, in case it didn't happen in our favor, I want you to still be proud of yourself. Everybody be proud of yourself. If you know you were supporting Mr. Peter Obi for a better Nigeria, still be proud of yourself because what obedient did in Nigeria have never happened before. So you don't have any reason. Someone like me, I don't have any reason to regret my decision. Never! I don't have any reason. I will always be proud when people mentioned my name that, oh, that guy, Elvis, he really worked so hard for Mr. Peter will be doing that. I will be very, very happy to hear that. It's part of the footprints that I talk about all the time. Let me ask you now, what is your footprint today? How do you want people to reference to you? What is that thing you are doing today that many of us don't know? But only you know, you and God. But you know, if it's known to the public, it's disgraceful. It's not too late, you can change it. How do you want people to mention your name? Or rather, how do you want people to react when your name is mentioned? I can see that many Nigerians have chosen to live for today and forget tomorrow. After tomorrow, maybe I will come more with more revelation. How I was approached, how I was offered significant money and I refused. In fact, how I was offered a G-Wagon, a G, first time I'm saying this, right? I was offered a G-Wagon 2022 model. I refused it. My mother is here. She's listening. She knows everything. I will reveal all of them to you all. I've never deceived nobody in my life. How I was approached. See, they're already stopping me now not to speak. I just can't wait for all this to be out. I want to speak to you guys. I want to let you guys know that I was happy doing what I was doing. I was not doing it because of money. Even though I know, yes, we make money from YouTube, but I was not doing it because of money. Someone like Dr. Aruna, is, is, his channel is not monetized. Many of you super chat me here every day and all that. I valued it more than anything because it's a gift that I enjoyed so much rather than taking money from satanic people. My managers have told me to stop. I will stop for now. Tomorrow. We are still in a fight. We have not lost the fight. We have not lost the battle. We have, a, we have the referee. We are playing against some opponent and we have a referee. The referee will decide tomorrow how they want to go. So let's wait for the referee and they will now decide what we have to do. So I don't want anybody to have a, a low moment or a down day. You you definitely work on your on your audio, my brother. This is not how you talk. Um, sort that out before you give your final your proper submission later. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Try to sort that out. I'd like to hear from you. All right, my people. I will stop from there.
But I wanted to let everybody know that regardless of whatever you have today, you will die one day and leave it all. Please use whatever you have to bless people and let people speak good of you because nobody knows what will happen tomorrow. And for those of you listening to me, before I start picking calls again, and you are one of the people that have chosen to support this satanic APC, that's fine. Whatever that happens tomorrow, that is fine. But I want you to understand you won't live forever. Yes. You know that everything involving this satanic APC, all is fraud. You know. And you still decided to keep them because you hate an evil man. Because you love Tenobu or because Tenobu is from your village. That's fine. I'm not against anybody. All I wanted was a better Nigeria, which I'm still very, very, very hopeful, even though it's very slim. But in the next 12 hours now, or maximum 24 hours, everybody will know their fate. But you still have time to change, though. Even though you cannot change on this, God forbid you achieve this goal, it's, it's up to you. But you still have that time to change and beg for forgiveness. That is inevitable. Thank you very much, my people. May God bless you all. Let me pick this call. Um, I'll come back to the panel again. Uh, Mr. Felix, thanks for calling in, sir. Good evening to you. Uh, you have two minutes. Please talk to us. Hello, good evening, my beloved brother. Thank you. I agree to my beloved brother. I agree to all the panelists. My beloved brother, Mr. Evi, is only. Edigi. No matter the outcome of tomorrow, you don't have to be weak in spirit. You need to ginger your spirit. One thing I must assure all this judicial system, no matter the way we they want to do one, may they all get time for my say, Nigeria's in diaspora are the people that move the economy. As far as they, they do the right thing, we go make the economy grow. If they decide to be compromised and do the wrong thing, sorry not their name, sorry not the economy name, because we don't ask to, so much thing from there, just to do the right thing for a better Nigeria. That is some, a son of nobody we become somebody. They don't have to do the right thing. Mr. Ariwala, Chief Justice, when the when, when the petition, when, when all when, when they came, when, when all the political parties went to the appeal uh, court, you make mention of one word, said all the judges should not be compromised because there is a sledgehammer. Now the final judgment is on your table. If you know you don't want the sledgehammer to be for or each and every one of you, as you advise your colleague before, just do the right thing. Thank you. It's a certificate forger, a certificate forger, a drug barrel can never be a president of a cost of a of a country according to the constitution. Thank you. But if you want to if you want to enter Guinness World Record, we're gonna do the wrong thing tomorrow. We go see that Guinness World Record. See do the way to do our mind. Thank you, sir. Sorry, my beloved brother, for Thank for, for, for so time now. I've not been able to join the panel. I really appreciate you guys. But I know you guys you're, are I know really you're always doing there. You're always there with us. Thank you. I know yeah, you're always yeah. there with Thank us. Thank you, my brother. I agree to everybody. Thank you so much, my brother. I appreciate you always. All right. Uh, let me pick uh, Madam Joy is on the phone. Uh, Madam Joy, thank you very much for calling in. Good evening to you, ma. Please talk to us. Hello, hello, everyone. Um, all well-meaning Nigerians, obedient family, Niger Watch family, all the citizens, journalists, my intellectuals, this this means a lot to me when I do these mentions. 
because this is the heart. You all are the heart of uh, the part of the heart of Nigeria that is still beating. Every other aspect of Nigeria as a people or, or a nation is is dead. You know, thank you everyone, Mr. Niger Watch. We can't thank you enough. Um, between Nigeria, I remember why I just wanted to talk and say something is about when you mentioned uh, you wanted to support Shaware and someone else was for Wike uh, and a few others. And then you see that we have a, 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 a country where what was offered to the people is the devil and the deep blue sea. There was no option for good. Nothing was given to these people to work with, except the, the two parties and everything, including the elders. I will keep hammering on these elders until they just scream and jump in somewhere. They have they desecrated everything. They, are, they compartmentalized the mentality of the people, compartmentalize it into tribe, compartmentalize it into religion, and now this evil cancer called political party. And people are running like, like in a circle, chasing after their tails, and not looking forward to what make, made us who we are, humans, humanity, integrity, character, dignity, everything lost while we are chasing this crops and there emerged mr peter obi there emerged uh mr niger watch there emerged a david hondane jimmy and i tell you these four people as i mentioned all of you this is the the light that came out of the evil that has encircled nigeria and I have hope, I have hope. When you mention this for people, one thing that is in common is they are selfless. Everything they are doing is not about them. And everyone, including these, our honorable panelists that have been here every day as a voice to the voiceless. We are doing due diligence, educating ourselves renewing minds that have been compartmentalized. I know there has been so much, and one of the beneficiaries of this, I, I moved this Niger Watch, a, a, a family TV to Niger Watch University. There's so much learn, and yet more to learn. It is not over. The evil we are seeing today is the ladder to which we climb out of, of and go, get into light. It will happen if we don't if we don't give up. I don't believe in giving up. I don't even know. I don't have any dictionary of giving up. There is there is international law court. If they have continued, you know, they cannot they cannot use two hundred million Nigerians as as a bait. This is the criminality cannot define us. I say it again, criminality will not define me. I don't believe in it. I don't meddle with it. And so do many Nigerians. It shouldn't define us. We are moving forward. I encourage everyone we are in and God is going to help us as we fight. Executive, legislative, judiciary, now we know they have failed. Religious leaders have failed. When they want, when they want to want to bamboozle you, they they bring, they flag it in your face. Everybody is running, running after tribe, running after religion. We left what made us who we are, and we refuse. There is Mr. Peter Obi. There is David Hundane. God will continue to protect all of you, Mr. Niger Watch. You are a hero of our platform, and God will always look. We are praying for you. Don't worry. Your blessings are here. 
are here to stay. I rest it Amen. here. I greet Thank everybody. You, you all have done great and will continue to do what we are doing. Thank you God so bless much. everyone. Thank you very much, Madam Joy. I always appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank um, you. Callers, I hope you guys will allow me to give opportunity for the people to speak from the panel. Okay, Madam. Um, look, I think. Hello, Madam. Can you hear me? I think I've picked a call. I don't know what's happening here. Madam Ellen, are you there? Oh, I lost her. Oh, I lost Madam Ellen. So sorry about that. Uh, Madam Maomi, thanks for calling Ima. Good evening to you. Please talk to us. Uh, good, good evening, my brother. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. I can hear you. Good okay. evening. Thank you, All protocols observed. I greet all the panelists. Uh, Mr. Elvis, one thing I want to tell you is that I don't want your spirit to be down. I don't give up easily. On this platform, I gave a solution that what we can do as citizens, but nobody responded to it. I even said so that even if not on your panel, we can do it on another ground. Now it is not over until it is over. Nobody should be down that it is over. No, it is not over. There is international court of justice that can overrule any country's will. Yes, it is not over. Don't me, I'm not giving up. We are going to fight it to the last and it will, it will finish. Go and get, read the book of uh, Second Kings 7. Elisha, the prophet, said, by this time tomorrow, wheat is going to sell for one shekel in this land. Some people say it can never happen. Those that said it will never happen did not live to see it. I'm telling you, when this night, new Nigeria will come, very soon, as we are going, we are not giving up. Those judges, all compromised people, all evil people, they will not live to see it. Write it down today. Nigeria, new Nigeria is coming very soon. And it is this Peter of this session. Write okay. it down today. It Thank will you. happen. That's Thank my you. own people. Thank you. Amen. Thank we you are, so the, the problem we are facing is from the full Thank and Thank you. They don't want to leave the power. They put Tinumbu there so that they will say, oh, it's not the full and Then he will return the power to them. No, it Thank won't happen. It won't happen. Thank God you, will take this out of their hands. Thank you. Thank we you. are not full and they are not Nigerians. They should... Oh, sorry, mm. I've caught it. Um, let's hear mm. from someone else. Madam Ellen, thanks for calling in. Good evening to you, man. Please, two minutes. Talk to us. Uh, good evening, Mr. Elvis. Good evening. Thank you, ma. Everyone in the panel, people at the comment section. Good evening. Mr. Elvis, God bless you. You are an exception, and I know you know that. You are, you know, you can't be stained. So whether they bring, whatever they bring is not for you. God has designed something for you and you know, you know that. So you're like Joseph who had everything, but yet would rather, you know, not want to go for what man could offer for what, you know, his destiny had kept for him. God will continue to bless you. And very soon you begin to see all of them play out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want us to think that we have been defeated guys we won this victory is big for us it's huge think of it for a very long time only two party system existed in nigeria and they did all sort of shenanigans and then just within less than two years a party sprung up they said they don't do not have structure they have nothing no they should be ignored nobody should bother with them and then see where see how far we came. See how far this had brought us to the point where people who felt they had it all figured out have been on their toes. Like, I mean, being on their toes to cook up lies, to cook up patterns, to cook up strategies to dislodge a people that were just poor in a room tweeting, Mr. Elvis, this is victory. This is huge. And see, I don't think me particularly, I want to stop talking. I will keep talking. You know why? Because this talk has kept them on toes. And I believe very soon 
is going to produce something. I'm not, I mean, before I was really bothered about what, what the Supreme Court was going to do, but th I think now I know where they stand. So I am no more bothered about what they are coming up with. The only thing is that if they're just going to expose themselves, now the whole world knows what we have. And now we also know who we have as elders, as leaders. So we are also going to re strategize. You see, this nation, you see, this new Nigeria, whether they like it or not, is going to happen. And most of them will still be alive and see new and true Nigeria. And, you know, shame will cover their faces. Mr. Elvin, you are a winner. We are all winners. We won, we won and will continue winning. That's just what I want you to see. God Amen. bless you and bless every single member of your family that have supported you and brought you this far. Thank you so very much. Amen. May God bless you too, Madam Helen. I appreciate you for always being there. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. May God bless every one of you to have genuinely uh, stand with us for a better Nigeria. Thank you, guys. Uh, please allow me to give opportunity for the people on the panel to also speak to us, you know, before um, I come back to call us again, because a lot of people are just calling, calling, calling. I don't know if, you know, oh, God. Okay, let me take this then. Thank you very much, sir, for calling in. Um, your name, are you calling us from? Hello? Hello, sir. I can hear you. Your name, are you calling from? Good evening to you. Um, um, Chase, I'm calling from Amanda. Um, Nigeria was, I want to, I want to salute you and for everything that you've done during this, this period. Thank you, sir. Um, I want to encourage you not to not give up. Um, you, uh, they, you won't, you won't understand this. These people were fighting. They never expected us to put up such a strong resistance against them. And they are thinking that if they, if they can hold us, it's just a little bit more, they will be able to just take it off the finish line. The more they are the more they are pushing, they are saying that we're pushing from our side. And then the stuff are confused. Don't think that we that fought this battle will just roll up our sleep and go and sleep. Tomorrow is just even the beginning of the new the new chapter. We we must remain resolute, we must take our feet in. We must continue. We must continue speaking. Okay. And Nigeria, I can tell you, well, I think we have, we still have two more solutions that we've not used personally. Um, we that are in the diaspora. One of them is the Western countries that are supporting these people. I'm talking about especially the Americans and the UK. If they are head bent of ensuring that Nigeria does not move forward, we here in the diaspora, we should come together and and form a group and I say that we're going to vote in a certain way. Okay, so if you're not going to, if you're going to keep Nigeria stranded, we're going to come as a block and we'll vote. We start lobbying our MPs here, either Labour or Conservative, and we say people in America do the same thing. I tell them that, listen, if you continue with this, this thing that you're doing, we're going, to, we're going to start swinging the election here in this country for them. And if, if they know that we'll have a formidable force, that can actually impact the them losing their seat here. I, I tell you what Nigeria was, you will see how these people will sit up straight and start taking us seriously. Then you we, we are the Nigerians that are here in the UK and America uh, will okay. have that number to 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 um to influence the Thank election. You, and I think that's one of the most powerful things that we've not used so far. And the other solution, um, Nigeria, which I wouldn't want to say here, I'll probably send you a text. Okay. We need to consolidate our our some of our platform and form a formidable media house that can actually go after these people. Okay, thank um, you. And I think, uh, yeah, I was saying you written written stuff regarding that, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, God. Hello. Yeah, good evening to you. Your name and where you calling us from? Uh, <clears throat> good evening, Mr. Evans. This is Fad Jekka. Oh, Fad Jekka, thanks for calling in. I saw your comment earlier on. Good evening to you, sir. Talk to us. Mr. I am baffled at uh, uh, the What is going on? Why is everybody feeling like we've lost? This is shocking. Mm. This is shocking. Do you know why? This is shocking. Do you know why? Because the whole Nigeria why? is quiet. The whole Nigeria is quiet. You and I live abroad, right? 
the whole Nigeria, yes. you and I speak right now, is only uh, um uh, what's it called? Uh, what's this man called? From um with his native doctor and the uh, talks on the streets. Yeah. Asari the yeah, yeah. Yes. So you know what you're talking about. This guy is about to. I don't know. They, this the, the chances is still they're very slim. But the young Nigerians, I don't know. Everybody's quiet. Yes, get it, Mr. Davis. And I wish everybody would uh, hear me out. I, I'm not trying to uh, go against you guys being emotional. But you don't let your enemies smell fear. You don't let your enemies smell fear. You don't let the sharks see the blood in water. You don't. We are winning. I'm shocked. Mr. Avis, prior to this time, I keep telling you all the time, we didn't have a platform like Nigeria Watch. I'm promising you, I've been telling you, they will come after you. Because you are giving us a platform to go against these bohemians. We are fighting and we are fighting. People are not saying it. I've been in this since 2015. I've seen it all. I've seen it all. And I, I thank God for this day. Because a lot of Nigerians are awake now, prior to 2015. This is just a shock joke to the system. Nigerians are waking up and finding out every system they believed in is a fraud. So you are bound to, you are bound to be emotional. I get it. Okay. But Mr. Elvis, I promise you, okay. God is my witness. We are winning. Okay. I, I, I like that. Here. Don't let them smell fear in you. Okay. I like that, sir. I like that. I, I, to be honest, I want to hear things like this at this moment. Thank you so much. I promise you, God is my witness. God is my witness. Okay. God is my witness, Mr. Evan. You see, you point to this day and say, this guy told you. Thank you, Fat, Fat Jacker. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. okay. Thank you, my brother. Thank okay. you so much. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that because... Uh, you know, at the moment, we are human beings. Uh, we need somebody to lift us up at this particular moment, even though we know we have less than 24 hours to go. Like I said before, I'm not totally giving up, but my hope is very, very slim. But in the next uh, maximum 24 hours from now, we will know where we belong. We know where we belong. Thank you very much, all callers. Um, I have to cap it right there. Let me come back to the panel. Thank you very much, my people right here. I would like to quickly verbally appreciate those of you that have supported the channel once again. Thank you, Bella Naomi. Thank you very much, madam, for all you do. I appreciate you always. Uh, Kenneth Egariwa, thank you very much, sir. May God bless you. Michael Aganemaro, may God bless you, sir. I appreciate you. Bon Adventure, thank you very much. Clement uh, Audio, thank you very much. Nusa Hari, thank you very much. May God bless every one of you. I appreciate you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So let me call on the first person now. Before I call on the first person, I'd like us to quickly listen to, um, you know, uh, our um, brother right here. One moment. Let me just put, is a three minutes video, you know, Ned Media. Let's take this. Thank you. Oh, one minute, my people. Uh, let me bring it back again. It's how Tinubu Manan ran from the FBI in the late 80s and the early 90s. Credit to Bing AI for generating this powerful image. And Tinubu hasn't stopped running. He's still running, going by all the lawsuits he's been filing, trying to stop the release of the files that FBI have on him. Not just the FBI, other agencies of the United States, the DEA, the IRS, many of them. He has asked a court in Washington, D.C. to stop the release of these files. In fact, the condition he is asking the court to uphold is to force the FBI to give him the files to vet before they release it to the public. Imagine the audacity. For the record, these files don't belong to him. They are the property of the FBI and the Justice Department. The same way Tinubu is running is the same way the justices of the Supreme Court are also running. They are in a hurry to beat the release of these files. That's why they have fixed tomorrow to deliver judgment. Yes, what might be the reason for the sudden change of date? 
the judgment was supposed to be delivered on the 2nd of November 2023. But out of nowhere, for no reason, they just brought it forward. Why the sudden change? The same thing happened at the appeal court. They initially set a date and all of a sudden they brought it forward. Why are all of them in a hurry? How the Supreme Court justices will decide tomorrow is very predictable, going by how the two justices questioned Atiku's counsel on the first day of hearing. It's very clear that they will go for technicalities. For the record, Chicago State University made it very clear that the certificate Tinubu submitted to INEC did not come from them. There is no ambiguity whatsoever. This is how it is proved in Nigerian courts. When an institution that is legally authorized to produce a document denies that document, it simply means it didn't come from them. Therefore, it was forged by the person that submitted it. And the consequence of forgery is disqualification once election is concerned in Nigeria. So any other thing is a perversion of justice, is a miscarriage of justice. Whatever they like, let them conjure tomorrow. Nigerians are not deceived. Nigerians know a certificate forger when they see one. And whatever the outcome of the judgment, it will never change the fact that the certificate was forged. It's as simple as that. The job of the Supreme Court justices is to disqualify someone based on the facts before them. Even if they don't disqualify him, it will not change the testimony of Chicago State University Registrar. Yes. He has said it under oath that the certificate didn't come from them, that they never issued him any certificate even in 1979 when he purportedly graduated. The question the Supreme Court justices should be asking if they want to uphold justice is why did someone who graduated from a university fail to apply to the same university to get a replacement certificate? Yes, he never did it. They said it during their oral deposition that they never received any request to reproduce his certificate. This is the evidence they need. He didn't request for it. They didn't produce the one he submitted to INEC. He forged it. It's as simple as that. So let's all watch the abracadabra they will conjure tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, my people. Uh, let me call on the the first person that we have on the panel, which is Ajina Francis. Ajina Francis, thank you very much sir, for your patience with us. I'd like you to talk to us uh, in eight minutes. Uh, everybody, please, you okay. have to speak with your minutes. Thank you very much, sir. Go ahead. Thank you very much. And thank you to everyone listening. Now, uh, Mr. Elvis. Yes, sir. The war is about to begin. It hasn't even happened. So don't take off your seat belt. Just make sure you your seat belt is there very tight. This is just the beginning. You know, it's always better to be a slave in heaven than to be a king in hell. That's been my position. So uh, this thing has not even started. The U.S., as some people mentioned about the U.S. back in Tinubu, U.S. is not back in Tinubu. As a matter of fact, FBI is fighting for us. What they did, okay, what would have happened if they gave us this information now? And then tomorrow, the Supreme Court comes and makes their ruling. That whole revelation they give us will go to the back burner. But... Let's wait. Let them go ahead and mess up uh, uh, the court system in Nigeria. And then this will now show up and put a big shame on them. So FBI is not uh, fighting against us or back in Tinubu. Now, let me get to the courts. I mean, to the Nigerian uh, system as it is. You know, if you're an enemy of a place, why are you fighting to get a decision-making position in that place? Other than to send that place to Gahina. Tribalism is not our problem in Nigeria. Uh, let me give you a good example. Like in my town, if you're driving into my town, you will see a big statue 
standing right by at that place where it says welcome to wherever that statue is a pious uh, dr pious okibo he when he handled the uh revenue panel the okibo panel he showed exactly that same thing that came from zeke and awolo which is federalism he didn't say oh okay now that i have this panel let me go and allocate everything to my town people no he did what would be fair to all nigerians so tribalism is not our problem the enemies of state that is our problem and that enemies of state exactly from tinubu all the way down to the court there were there were two questions that uh, still boggle my mind that came out from that uh, supreme court first one of the justices asked about conflicting a uh, message from a uh, CSU that in the information they gave uh, Nahoro, they said they up, uh, issued the certificate and oral deposition, they said they didn't issue the certificate. The point is, Jama Or, that is his last name is O-R-R, who was the person that signed that document that came to Tinubu was terminated. He's no longer with CSU. Why? Of course, they didn't give us basically what it is, but we all know that it's like he is the person, the inside mole for Tinubu at the CSU. But when CSU came to the oral deposition, they stated it plainly. You cannot, they did not issue this man any certificate, no diploma. He didn't pick up. So anything you get uh, contrary to that is not what we did. But let's assume that the justice that asked that question yes let's assume that the government i mean the justice that asked that question was in error no problem how about the justice i think his name is Agim, that asked one question that really got me so offended he asked whether they should follow the constitution or the Electoral Act. A judge asking that kind of question? That not a juvenile question? Follow the Constitution or follow the Electoral Act. There is something called judicial review. Whenever any act, either from the legislative or from the uh, executive, is in and not in agreement with the constitution that is where the judiciary steps in to be that third arm of the balancing of the country that's when a judicial review is in order marbury versus madison in us 1803 under Chief Justice uh, John Marshall, he was the one that read out the decision that time, that if you, the Congress, the Senate, the National Assembly, if you guys come up with an act, like the Electoral Act, that is uh, in uh, going the other direction from the Constitution, Definitely, the court will step in. That's the whole essence of the checks and balances. How in the world can a justice not see a constitutional review situation in this? If they are in conflict, then the uh, constitution takes 
precedence over whatever act it is. Now, I'm, based on those two questions, I can tell where they are going. They are trying to find a reason, but they are going to be very, very ashamed when they finish their rigmarole tomorrow and then the bombshell drops from the FBI. That will be the real backbone that Nigeria needs. And that is when I call those our guys in khaki. If they swore as they were being uh, uh, taken into the Nigerian military forces, if they swore to defend Nigeria, like here, it's against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Well, Nigeria now has domestic enemies. Since the people that should make that decision, the courts are now turning to be Nigeria's enemies. They, our military, are supposed to fight foreign and domestic. And as a matter of fact, if they don't know what to, uh, the charges will be, treason. Treason. Because the courts, the, from the appellate level, the uh, uh, panel, the tribunal, all of those are guilty, or those judges are, are, are guilty of that same treason. So they, they should step in, gather all of them, even the, uh, all the members of the current House and Senate, all the INEC uh, uh, electoral uh, so. resident officials gather all of them and let them go through a military tribunal. Please, guys, this is not time to play anymore. And the military will also order all those police copies of the election results and do their collection from it and tell us who won this election, but gather from Tinubu, all these judges, all of them, and Thank put you. them up for military tribunal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Regina Francis. Thank you, sir. Uh, Madam Patricia, please, if you're available, uh, I'd like you to talk to us. Eight minutes. Good evening to you, ma. Good evening again, Mr. Elvis, and thank you thank for the opportunity. Thank you very uh, much for everything. Yeah. Appreciate you. Mm, thank you. So like uh, other, speak other people have also said, I will not rule everything out yet. Let's keep up our life. I'm sure that definitely uh, something sinister will happen. And no matter how much they are rushing to try to take a, uh, make the decision, the damage will still be there no matter what. And um, we still, have to continue speaking because we cannot just leave them. Even no matter what happens tomorrow, we, we just have to keep on um, uh, talking. You know, keep hope alive. Even even if tomorrow they still declare uh, our appeal uh, president, definitely we will not be quiet now. We will continue. So in that regard, I will encourage you and every one of us to keep the hope alive, to know that uh, surely we will definitely see the end of this thing. And uh, this, these wicked people will, will definitely be dealt with collectively because we cannot leave them to continue to ruin uh, our lives and those of our children's children. So that's, that's what it is. I don't think I don't think uh, um, I don't think it's all uh, all hope lost. I don't think so. I have a, a belief that things will change and things must change. So in that regard, uh, we just need to keep that hope alive and uh, hope for the best tomorrow. And if the judiciary refuse to do the needful, Nigerians will take their destinies on their hand. That's what I can say. Because I, I don't think our quietness or whatever it means that people have forgotten and they have moved on. 
I will, I would want to differ from that. I would not want to believe that that is the case uh, totally. Yeah, and therefore uh, we just need to keep uh, doing what we are doing because even as we are here now, if we want to really know what is going on on ground, how what are the percentage of the people that can actually hear what we are saying? What are the percentage? A place where they don't have lights, they don't have internet, even the internet that they have, everybody is scrambling to save it because the salary is so poor. The the ones that are working, you know, they don't have enough money to even use for themselves, talkless of buying data. So we can't just say, oh, um, they are not doing anything. You know, because information is key. As they say, uh, somebody will say his knowledge is, is uh, you know, a, a power. But I want to differ if uh, application of knowledge is power. But for you to apply knowledge, you, for, you, are, you need to have the knowledge first. You need to know about it. If you don't know about it, you cannot apply it. So that's where they've left Nigeria. They've weaponized poverty. They've weaponized every evil that can be found in this earth just to kill the people sub subjected to them and that's what uh, what uh, what it is but uh god did not make did not create slaves he created kings and definitely you know something will happen where are the pharaohs where are the nebuchadnezzars you know where are the hitlers so that's the question we need to ask ourselves. There's always a day, that end day. It doesn't matter how a liar has been in the office for long. It doesn't matter how many donkeys of centuries it has been. There's one day that that truth will be done. And that's the truth that is done on Nigeria. Nigerians now that the so-called business entity called Nigeria is not a country. And that we are not one. We should stop deceiving ourselves. Uh, you know, we are not one. And without that, that uh, uh, oneness, because we are not really one, you know, we are merged together by the British. So we cannot uh, say, you know, now we have to force ourselves to love ourselves. You know, the earlier we admit to this fact, and that's why these so-called elites, you can see that whether they come from Fulani, whether they come from Urubu or Bini or Igbo or Yoruba, they are all behaving the same way, like satans. Satanic, they are like, like devils. They behave the same. So, because they know that this is not about one Nigeria, it's about themselves and what it stands for. So, the masses that believe that they want uh, one Nigeria, it's either you fight or you let it be. All those that want to go have to make sure they go. That's that's why I can say because me I don't want to I don't want to be I don't want to be a Nigerian. That's that's my that's that's my opinion. I don't want it because Nigeria has not been fair in any in any category in any ramification. It has not been fair. So why should I want to stay in in in, this, in a relationship that is unfair to me? So I don't see any reason for me. I want I don't want the place to I want the old place to catch fire and. and you know, make everybody make everybody find a level. Honestly, I, that's that's how I see it. Because now, not be waiting good for you, not be not be you go you go to stay inside. If you marry a woman or marry a man, the man not they treat you right. You not go leave him. Uh, so Nigeria has not been fair to me. Has not been fair to any uh, my generation or my even my father, uh, my father's uh, time. It has not been fair. So why should I be conjured to, to deceive myself to be in this one one Nigeria? And I'm seeing on uh, even on the uh, internet. Yeah, today that uh, uh, some uh, people are going about some evils or some uh, create uh, creator um, what's it called um, content creator are going about uh, saying that uh, those are Igbo, they are from Ogodemino, whatever, whatever they belong to. I mean, what nonsense is that? They are Biafra, they are this, that, that. I, I don't get it. So all this um, wala well, they are bringing everywhere. That's not what is matter. Uh, what the matter is now. Thank you. Let's deal with what is on ground and 
let's uh, divide this place. If we cannot divide it, then, <laughs> you know, let's say uh, it has to be divided. Nigeria cannot stand. That's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Patricia. God bless you. I appreciate you. Um, let me come to the next person to speak to us, which is um, F. Emmanuel. Uh, thank you very much sir, for your patience. Please, I'd like you to talk to us in eight minutes. Okay, you are not there right now. Let me move on to the next person. Mr. Chuk Sobibo, is a good evening to you, sir. It's good to have you on the panel. Please, I'd like you like to talk. talk. Good evening, Mr. Elvis. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening, fellow panelists. Uh, good evening, everyone listening to us. And of course, our most important section, the comment section. Uh, Mr. Elvis, I just want to use this opportunity, you know, to thank you for everything you've done. You know, like, um, you know, the first uh, video you played, you know, when you broke the news, you said tomorrow will be the end of this chapter. Everything is going to end tomorrow. Um, I just want to use this opportunity to thank you because it's a, it's been a long journey, you know, and uh, definitely we've come to the end of this chapter. This very chapter I'm saying, uh, not the end of uh, what we're looking for, you know. So I want to thank you very much, you know, for and also thank your family for letting you because <laughs> if they have put pressure on you, you will chicken out. I'm sorry to use the language, you know, but, you know, their love and support is the thing that keeps you going. You know, many of us keep asking you in this uh, very platform, where did you get the strength to go? You know, so I just want to thank you and every other obedient and good Nigerians who have been stand for the truth. You know, for me, I've made up my mind, no matter what comes tomorrow, I don't give up, you know, I don't give up, no matter what happens tomorrow, I still believe that there are sensible Nigerians that we, you know, fight to the last, make sure that this don't stop. As we speak, I don't believe that tomorrow these people will just come out there and say what they like and go to their bed and sleep peacefully. Uh, uh, no, no, I don't believe that. Because in my, in, my, in my language, they said that child that refuses to let the mother and the father sleep, that child too cannot sleep. That's what I believe. And I'm looking forward, and I believe that Nigerians will understand what is going on. It is no more a joke. I had five years today said, and some people say it's not about public opinion. And I want to address that this evening. You see, we Nigerians, it is high time we stand up. We tell these people how it is. Look, I keep mentioning this here. Anytime you go to the polling booth and you vote, the whole power in you, you have given it to these people to look after. And if the Supreme Court can tell us that it's not about public opinion, I want to challenge Nigerians today. It is about the public opinion. In the first place, even the judge, who gave, who gave him or her the power to act? Who? Were they not swear in? The senators, who gave them the power? The, the uh, what is it called, the, 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 the parties? Because if you don't vote these people, they don't do nothing. If you don't vote them, they don't do nothing. 
So you cannot tell us that whatever you write, you call constitution or whatever you interpret, that is going to be okay with the people. No. When the majority of the people said, this you're doing in my name, I reject it. You can't do that. Except if you're calling for anarchy. You can't do that. It's not my opinion. It is what it is. Who are you acting for? You are acting for me. I am telling you that that thing you want to do, I don't support it. You are acting for me. If I said that this thing you're doing, it is not for me. You can't do it. And that is why anytime Mr. Abati uses that language, I know that he don't understand. He might be educated, but we call this kind of education educated fools. He is one of the biggest ed educated fools I've ever seen. For him to sit on a national TV, to say that it's not about public opinion, it is about who? It's about who? What is he even talking about? And all these stupid lawyers that come on national television to say it's not about uh, public opinion. Who are you? Power belongs to the people. And you are you shamelessly to come out here to say it's not about public opinion. It's about the, the, the stupid things you, you guys organize yourself to do. I challenge every Nigerian today to understand that this is not, it's not about government or party. It's about Nigerians. Mr. Bati will sit down on national TV to tell us how many million people that are out of education, how many people, how many million people that are, are, are poor. And yet it's not about these people he's talking about. I'm very, very angry this evening. I am very, very angry. And please, in my own opinion, there's no need for us to come here to talk about uh, 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 FBI file. This thing we are talking about has nothing to do with F FBI files. You and I know the truth. Why are we waiting for people to come and fight for us? You and I know the truth. Whether MBI released this or not, if, if we can say that this man presented forged certificate, because that is what he is. Who is the Supreme Court to even come out to tell us what is forged or not? This is number one citizen of Nigeria we're talking about. We are not talking about any other individual. For you to come and tell us how to to prove that the, 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 uh, his certificate, the certificate he, he presented to work for me, is fake. Which court? We Nigerians, we need to we need to stand up now. We need to get up. There's no need for us to sorry for ourselves. There's no need. We can't continue to to blame FBI. It has nothing to do with these people, please. It has everything to do with we Nigerians saying enough of this nonsense. Enough. Even if FBI they don't release the file, can we not see that the 25% the is there? Can we not? Can we not see what happened in River State? Can we not see what happened in Lagos State? Why, why, why are we trying to, to make excuses? We can continue to make excuses. It is about so it is about time we stand up to take what belongs to us and put it and or use it the way we should use it to benefit each and every Nigerian.
we can continue to give excuses. Please, if we can, let us not talk about um, 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 uh, FBI fire. Our eyes should be on the boss tomorrow. It doesn't matter. I don't want to give excuse. They want to fast track it or not fast track it. In a same country, these things we are talking about shouldn't matter. What should matter is how about the 25%? How about the, the, the passport? Did they deny about the passport? They didn't deny about the passport. So what are we talking about? Every time they come on board, they tell us, you don't understand. Come on, English. Come on, English. What are we talking about? The constitutional lawyers, they tell you, what are we even interpreting? What, what is this about? Every country, every, you, you touch a child of five years, once he starts going to school, he tells you the law. Police stops him, he said, no, you can't do this. Only in our country, police will boggle you, do you whatever they like, and nobody cares. And we don't think it's high time. We tell these people, we give you this power, and we are taking back this power. That's, that's what we need to do. Please, I'm begging, let us not come here crying, or oh, this, or oh, that. We know the people Thank are ready, you, and they're going to come out. They will come out. They have no place to hide. They will come out. The rain is about to beat us. Should we stand? No, we have to do something. Are you there? Thank you, Mr. Elvis. Thank you, Mr. Chips Obibweze. God bless you, sir. Thanks for your kind words and your submission. Thank you, sir. Okay, let me move on to the next person on the panel, uh, which is uh, Madam Ame, before I'll come to um, Augustine. Madam Ame, please talk to us, man. Good evening to you. You have eight minutes. Thank you, Mr. Elvis. Thank you. I will just, what I just have to tell you, Mr. Evis, you've done wonder. You've done too wonderful. You don't have to come down and then be weak. I know what it is. Please, you've done a lot since last year till now. We appreciate all you yeah. have done. Let them judge whatever they are going to judge. If that is the case, as Sister Pat I said that they, they are now putting it in twitter everywhere but uh nigeria now uh biafra it is even time we we we, we did those we, we, we uh, agitated for our own who is that you say what uh-huh we, we have to start our own too i'm not hearing what you are saying are you, you talking to me no nobody's talking okay. to you man okay we are not we, are, we have to start agitating as well you know let let them do whatever they do. We will leave. If I have to give to no boy, I don't want to suspect him. Maybe he's going to use our money if he's there, like a like a boari, to be treating himself so that we look long. It's too long. Tunubu, I give him three to five years. If we with the treatments he's taking, maybe ten years, because he money, free money to change, to to maintain and save and his family. Let him be there. We'll not live there forever. We'll not live there forever. I only pity the Nigerians that we are going to suffer. All oh, this is a uh, ways of handling our mineral resources, wasting our money. It's only the, but God will also protect His children. You know, He know God knows how to protect His uh, poor children from all these uh, wicked people. We just have to see. Maybe there will be changes if things will work out. If God will work for us, let us see. Not lose our hope. Continue waiting for them. All those judges, I study, I study, I study for them. This is what I've been saying about these do uh, the educated people that are saying I'm doctor and professor. You don't because I love education. You don't. They don't give. They no respect again for them. They just go to that uh, university, whatever we do, if not for fake, to go and study how to lie. It's a pity that money can easily carry them out like that. So, Mr. Evans, uh, I'm also not to. I appreciate you. That's just what I will say. I really appreciate you. And I thank all our brothers and sisters that have been coming here every day to judge. Me, I started joining you last year, though I will stick on with about one, two hours sometimes. I know the time I'm wasting. Not talk of you, you will stay there in the night like that. Sometimes those days we, we close three o'clock in the morning and you will wake, wake, sleep again. For how many hours do you sleep? You wake up the next day you start. It's not a joke what you've done for Nigeria. 
It's no joke. You will be in our life history. This world record, you will be. Don't don't just worry. I pray you've done a lot. I just want to say thank you because I'm short of words. I don't know what to say again. Everybody here that have tried the way meaning uh, BDS, I thank every one of you. Thank every one of you. So, but notwithstanding, so long as you are still going in future, let us stay there and see if you can see. <laughs> I have begged Mr. Ivy says you didn't relent our effort. There are governors there. There are say election coming on. We don't know. So we thank God for OB, for what has happened now. For us to, Tinubu forcing himself, now he has made us to know things I did, we don't know more before. So we have opened our eyes, so let us not leave it, otherwise they will just continue. That, that is what have made the Tinubu now to be more stronger now. So we don't have to still leave it for them. Whatever we can still do, let us do it. I will say, I'm just, just saying thank you. I don't know how much I will say thank you, Mr. Evis. Thank you. Thank you, thank you ma. Thank you very much. Thank God you, bless you, ma. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, I would like to pick uh, two calls here before we move on. Thank you, Jija Breadman, for calling in. You have two minutes, sir. Please talk to us. Yeah, Mr. Ellis, I want to call to let the woman about to know that the motherfucking family... No, no, no. Uh, Don't use those words now, now, please. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me rephrase my statement. Any moment from now, I can assure him very soon. No, please. Think on top of head. This point I want to make right now, Nanja Watch. You see the Supreme Court? You see, the judicial system of Nigeria is a product of the conquered Nigeria. Okay? It's a product of those people who believe that power belongs to them. I can tell you that everybody on that Supreme Court are incompetent. They are all criminals. And all you right. cannot expect anything to come out from a criminal system. People who assume the seat of uh, being a judge of the Supreme Court when they are not qualified, they don't understand jurisprudence. You don't expect anything to come out of them that is just. The new Nigeria that we are looking for is a threat. Sitting on that seat, those seven justices, I subject them to the test of law. You will find out that they are not qualified to be the lawyer, so more or less, okay. the Supreme Court judge. So if you think thank you justice that will be in consonance with what the Nigerian people are clamoring for, it is not going to happen. And I want to prepare the minds of Nigerians. I must call what Ginger Bradman has been singing. What a man of peace. I'm a man of war. Because even the people that fought, even the people that fought against the nation, they continue to suppress them. Okay. How more less if you do not fight? Thank you. So stand up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Jija Breadman. Thank you very much. Uh, let me quickly hear from somebody else. Uh, Mother Deborah, you are calling back again. Thank you very much, Mother Deborah. You're calling back again, please. One minute, I'm gonna give to you, Madam. Go ahead, you have only one minute. Go ahead, yeah, yeah, one minute. Just, uh, thank you for picking my call again. I thank just you. want to quickly uh say that uh, I want to encourage you. I know we've, we've all put in uh, all our efforts. But uh, no matter what the outcome uh, of tomorrow's judgment is going to be, we're still going to continue. We're not going to give up because that's 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 what they want. I was talking to somebody. Uh, I, I think people are demoralized because of what happened at, uh, during the NSAS. But I, I keep saying the reason why they do what they did is to is to put fear into people. So that people will be afraid to come out and do anything. But at the end of the day, if we are if we stay back, they are going to continue. That's what they want, and they are going to achieve their aim. So no matter what, we're going to keep we're not going to keep silent. We're still going Thank to you. keep pushing. Thank you, Mana. We're, we're, we're not going to give up because if we give up, we are still going to lose. Okay. But if we continue. Oh, sorry, I cut you off there. Sorry. Uh, hello, thank you, Madam Joy, for calling in. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Please talk to us. Two minutes. Uh, protocol to all the whole members of the house. My brother, <laughs> I'm just laughing because Nigeria is a joke. All those educated illiterates. I can't understand what they are doing. How can 
one person. I keep on saying it, one person. Because he can, he can, he can, he can send drugs to destroy their children. Eh? Money from the drug that is using to destroy children. Their children is, he, you know, some children is not like that too. So he's not using the money to buy them. I can't, I just understand it. Our court, there's no human being there. There's no human being in our court system. I can't believe it because the giant of Africa, I want to know him. This giant of Africa, they said this. It's not the mouse of Africa. Eh? All right. The person that went to school that they have not, that is not in existence. Only that one alone. Is Thank it you. not enough to disqualify him? Thank you, ma. Eh? Because anytime I hear, that I don't want, that is why I, I, I don't call in anymore. Because when I call in, my pro pressure will just go high. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm just. Okay, man. Thank you. Energy. You are over two minutes now. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thank that you for calling. God bless you. Thank you, ma. God bless Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Let me quickly hear from somebody else here. Um, let me pick one more call. Hello, Ghost Power. Thanks for calling in. Uh, please talk to us. Good evening to you, sir. Yeah, good evening, Mr. Andrew. Good evening. And good evening to everyone, both on the uh, panel and uh, the comment session, and all we in Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Evans, I just called to say may God continue to bless you for what you've done, for the sacrifice that you put into uh, how we are going to take our country from this satanic people. But, well, for me, I know that this is a script which they've already wrote even before the elections. So, so they are now playing it gradually, gradually. Now, on the day, now they just change it automatically, as in without, it's only Nigeria you can see all those things. Anyway, like uh, the other people have said, you know, in this uh, race, Mr. Evans, I pick you and uh, Mr. Peter Obi as a hero of this uh, this year. So no matter what comes out, you now are a hero. I, I, I give it up to you, you know. May God continue to bless you, sir. And I'll put you right up. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. I appreciate you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, Let me come back to the panel. Call us, please. Just hold on. Hold on, please. Um, let me come to um, Augustine. Augustine, thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Good evening to you. I'd like you to talk to us, sir. Ah, uh, Mr. Service, you don't forget me. We don't call you tired, sir. You know, you know, answer now. Okay, let me speak. Are you serious? Yes, now we called you. I called you before I called uh, Madame Ame, but you didn't answer at that time. Oh, so, I'm so sorry. Okay, no, I'll, see him yeah, go ahead. After after see him, I'll come back to you then. Thank you, sir. No shaking, no shaking. Yes, sir. Okay, um, good evening, Niger Watch. Good evening, everybody. Please, let me stay on the already established protocol. Um, I said I must have to come in today. In the afternoon or thereabout, I know uh, the news flitted uh, out that uh, tomorrow the Supreme Court will be delivering their judgment. I know it's because of the fear of the release of FBI papers. So they want to say they've delivered this, you know, whatever, that one may not have effect or so. We all know, it's not that uh, we don't know what is afoot or the plan. We've already known the plan. It's just that people say, let's tag along. But we know where, where, what, the, what their game plan is. However, but that is not the, main, the key issue, self. why I'm even itching to speak to them. One, Niger Watch, the thing is, uh, I think I'm being, I have to be personal here. I must, once again, I salute your gift of clairvoyance. <laughs> you may not know, but probably you will know later. You see, Nigeria is a, the most decadent society ever created by man. Or ever known to man, and ever created by God, and ever known to man. For you to sit down, you know, look through the crystal ball and select people there and say, look, this is the man, come rain, come, come shine. This is the man I will 
sort of okay sorry this is the man that i will uh, i will support with all my resources no matter how long it takes when you when you made the like you let us like you you said in some of your in some of the broadcast in the past when you made that choice most people did not agree with you some people deserted you which is fair enough. i mean we are human beings because obi wasn't popular his name is not a typical a run-of-the-mill nigerian politician or so to speak he's not a heavyweight and he do not be he does not belong to the two satanic parties of APP, I mean APC and PDP. Then he is in Labour Party. So what chance has he got? But with your own conviction, you feel that yes, this is the man. If we must move forward in this country, this is the man should be at the, this this man should be at the driving seat. Like I think up to today, you do, you do not even know be a one on one. But from a distance, and you are not even from Anambra State, but from a distance you analyzed his stewardship the much you can, got the conviction you needed, most importantly his telling character. You said, look, I will stick with this man, whatever it takes. You made that decision and you are still up to this moment. So I think I need to salute that. Mr. Singen. Yes, please. I need to salute. <laughs> Please yes, increase please. your increase okay. your volume. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. Sorry. So I said up to this moment. So today, Niger Watch, I will salute your wisdom, innate wisdom, innate. Innate means you are, you were born with it. Follow come. It's not that you got it through friendship, but I say I call it innate wisdom. You made a choice. Sometimes I wonder, what if the choice Niger Watch you made turns out to be uh, very scandalous, in which every day you hear people will be one scandal or the other. Whether you like it or not, it will bounce back on you. But then, with each passing day, people are seeing the man as being whiter than white and whiter than snow. And that is a credit to you. So for whatever Obi says and the credit people give to him, they also give to you. Um, in, in my local, in my mother tongue, they say, I go talk and self. Maybe I go put and say, waiting the hungry, a pregnant woman, the hungry, the man will give and bless. So, in other words, whatever credit will be takes should also go to you because you saw what others probably, maybe, maybe did, not see, <coughs> did not see, or most importantly, you thought what they did not think. So you stuck with your be, and today people can be a witness that, irrespective of what happens tomorrow, Obi is an excellent candidate, and whoever associated with him, not later they convert, but who started the journey, even when Obi was, I think that was before the primaries, even Labour Party, or maybe before they started all this registration, whatever. So you saw it early. In other words, that gift of clairvoyance was made manifest. So I salute you for that. And that is why I told you one time that I have so many acquaintances, so many. I know many people, they know me. But I can, I can count my friends at the fingertips, just how many. What I can say is a friend, so I count you as one of them. Because sometimes, you do, what makes a man, like Martin Luther King says, is not where you stand in terms of a welcome and chop. Maybe in terms of difficulty, you made the decision to support Obi. And you convince people, like you made us know, those that left you later came back and say, okay, we've seen it. So that is the convert, and that is a credit to you. So I so much, whatever it is, it is for whatever it is worth, I thank you very well, very much. <clears throat> and I'm quite happy to associate with you. Apart God bless from here. You. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate Thank you. Apart, apart from coming on Niger Watch, you don't, we don't come here to make friends, but I've, I think I've met, I've met one, and I've made many, but then uh, you are special. So the thing Thank is you. that, the thing is that this is really, because sometimes what it means is that people, if, uh, if, some, if I to be analytical, sort of, 
one can always say ah, election is coming in a do state or election is coming here niger watch can you look through and tell us people you may laugh they say ah, no you pick people be tell us Peter, and then we saw through so it means that you have that gift oh, why is my distance stop? so it means that you hello are you here please am i coming out yes. clear yes you are very clear sir uh, okay yeah because i'm not seeing my photo again okay so so i've said i said uh, whatever it for whatever it is those that are you know that can read in between the lines will always trust your judgment that whatever niger watch decides politically he can read a good character forget about who let her win the issue of supreme court or whatever we know nigerian judiciary is a disgrace irrespective of what they are going to say tomorrow up till now there are landmark cases that somebody can use to even judge them and then put them to where they belong but the thing is above all this that i've said the people the people you fought for nigerians that you are showing the way so that they can you are showing the light so that they can find their way through p2b are they really do they understand does it mean that all this uh, um, analysis we've been making every day since last year is it falling on deaf ears do they not know what to do this is about your future by the way let us let us look at it very, let us look at this critically i've never seen where a drug a drug a drug baron became a president I stand to be caught. Somebody can phone in and tell me. I stand to be corrected. I've never seen where somebody, a known drug lord, will be a president. I've never heard that somebody forged certificate in Nigeria. Forged. Not that Buhari own wasn't forged, only that he didn't go. It's not that he went, he didn't go. He went, he entered army with, uh, is it a uh, class four or something? I've not heard. But this is the first time, and it's international. Look at the reputation of Nigeria today. Can somebody tell me, is Nigeria anything to write home about today? I invite a debate on it. I want us to have a, whoever it is. Is Nigeria reputation? Can somebody beat his chest and stand there near, um, what is it called, Wall Street uh, Center in America and brought her, bring out your green, white, green, say, I'm in Nigeria, you flash your passport. Can you try that? Can you hope that in an attempt to attract attention, you say, oh, fellow Americans, people look in your direction, say, I'm a Nigerian. Today, can you do it? You can't. Not because you are not good. But the fact that the moment you mention that name, we are, all attention will leave you and then focus on the forgery that the world has been uh, known for. Somebody in Germany told me the moment um, uh, Mahmoud announced the uh, um, Tinubu, the president, and everything. There is a editorial one newspaper in Germany. He said, "An uh, American uh, elect, elected a drug baron." Can you imagine? This is a this is a white country. You thought they don't know. So now you see, this is Nigerian stock has been going down since last year. Buhari dealt a heavy blow on Niger on on the image of Nigeria with all the nonsense. Now this is this man will now bury the what is left. So what I'm trying to say is that look, it is not a case, it's no uhuru. Even if let's let's if if whatever happens, Peter B gets in. Look, the tax is even made. I mean, I mean, the mountain is so steep, he will climb. How are you going to how are you going to white white? I mean, how are you going to launder the image of what Tinubu put Nigeria through? Yet CIA, the Almighty CIA of America, has not released what they have. FBI. Somebody told me America, whatever you say about them, FBI is the what makes America America. Somebody told me this. FBI in United States. Now they have a file on Tinubu. And this is a man before he tell you that if they release it, are we irreparable damage? Is this not, that is irreparable damage on Nigeria. But sometimes you ask you ask yourself, are the those called the morons in the Supreme Court? Do they know what they are really up up against? So tomorrow they will carry their head and say, oh, I'm a judge of Nigeria Supreme Court that returned the Tinubu to power. Is that what? Is that how? That, sometimes I wonder, where has common sense gone? Some people, are, some people do not even have shame. What is the essence of you being a judge? In which forget that, okay, let's even through whatever nonsense they're calling legality or whatever. Can you, as a judge, Judges in a Supreme Court, they have clerks. We all know this. They have, they've all got clerks. People helping them. They have secretaries in the office. Maybe one, two, three. 
they have so many different aides helping the um, each Supreme Court judge. In which you have to employ, you have, you happen that one of the people you employ, even if it's a clerk or whatever it is, the person is, is a secretary. He said LLB, maybe University of Illinois or Ibadan or if on soccer anywhere, will look at it and then only for you to realize that somebody told you this chap did not attend the UNN or, or University of Iraqiji. He said, he said, are you sure? He said, yes. You took the certificate and go to whatever, wherever it is. They said this did not come from us. You the Supreme Court judge, how will you feel? How will you? So which means you say you are prosecuting the chap. We will go to court. The court has to prove. You've already seen it. Will you employ the person? If you cannot employ somebody with forged certificate to work for you, how then do you want to return somebody who forged his certificate and then you want to see him as the head of the executive of your country? And to make matters worse, you will not be the person to say, according, based on the evidence before this honorable court, or this, 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 we find the, 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 the appeal fails, therefore the, this thing succeeds. What shame, what shame are you bringing to yourself and gen, your own generation yet unborn? You see, because when we talk about this law, 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 somebody will say, hey, public opinion is not public. That Ruben Abati making noise, who, saw, who is more like a beneficiary of a drug? You see, that's how you know them. Whoever is supporting Tunubu must be a drug, either a drug user or a drug pusher or both. Ruben Abati and the Buruji Kashamu, what is the difference? Somebody should tell me, what is the difference between Ruben Abati and let Buruji Kashamu? You can't tell me that you are, you are, you cannot tell me, you can't separate them. You cannot, you cannot separate Buruji Kashamu and Ruben Abati. What is the connection? Drug, narcotics. That is what is connecting Ruben Abati and Buruji Kashamu. Ruben can never claim that he does not know that Buruji Kashamu is a drug, is a drug baron. That's what you are saying. Now, Ruben Abati, in your decision, can you employ somebody with forged certificate to work for you, even when you discover? Why is it that when we come, we just want to talk of, you know, when they talk of this law as if law is 500 million miles away from us, put it, just narrow it to yourself. In science, there's a disease called, in, in medical science or clinical medicine, there's a disease called syphilis. The chap who brought the cure for syphilis is a venereal disease. In an attempt to know, to be able to monitor how the disease is working, he said, how do we describe it? Different stages and the symptoms and the effects. The guy has to infect himself with syphilis. Day one, he will write something down. Day two, day three, day four. Then we started allowing it to advance. Then he started treating himself so that he will not write it. That is to tell you that he really wants to have, know what it feels. So Ruben Abati, can you employ somebody with forged certificate? What if tomorrow somebody goes to University of Calabar and say, Ruben, and tell the um, Arise News, this boy you are looking at, uh, this uh, old man that is just here uh, trying to make uh, a multi-woman man, multi-woman man, say this man did not attend Calabar. He's not, he didn't go to Unica. We've been dead. What will, Ruben, what will, what will you do? You will say, let's go to Unica. Let's go to Unica. Until University of Calabar says you attended that the certificate you showed to arise came from them, that is when you will have your rest of mind. But since they've not said it, you will be waiting and said, let somebody say it. But in Tinubu's case, they said it did not come from them. And yes, we are still talking nonsense. Somebody is talking, what, what law are you proving? What law are you proving? Just bring it close to yourself. So for me, all I, my only thing, sort of my sense of, I have a sense of foreboding and I know why. The thing is that, I don't know why I keep saying it in Julius Caesar. I think what when uh, Casca they want to conspire to kill uh, kill Julius Caesar, they went to Brutus say, "Look, where are you sleeping? Why Rome is burning?" Try to talk the man into it. He say, "Into what dangers are you leading me, Cassius? That you will make me look in me that is that which is not in me." So you see, these are the type of so I'm telling Nigerians, why are you people sleeping? Nigeria is burning. Don't people know what to do? What proof do we need that the man there is the worst of us? This is the man that forged certificate before it was a muchi muchi momo momo. Now, Chicago has said whatever Tinubu gave to Ainek, it did not come from them. 
So who else did it? Is it not forged? And this is a man that said he graduated from a primary, a uni, I mean, a secondary school, government college Lagos, in 1970. Yet the foundation stone of government college Lagos has not been laid in 1970. The school started 1974, admitting students year one, which means the first graduate should be after five years then, which is 1979. Yet Itunubu graduated 1970, and yet all of us are keeping quiet. Ashewaju, oh, you win power, you win this. Look, this is a, it's a look, I wish, sometimes you wonder, then why should somebody aspire to be a professor in Nigeria? Why should somebody aspire to go to school? This is a clear case. I mean, there is no way, there's no way you can slice it. It's terrible. And Nigerians are just sleeping. They don't know what to do. Miss Omar did her own. They said, the jump said, we don't care whatever she's saying. That thing she's flowing, she's, you know, waving, it didn't come from us. Everybody say, hey. Chicago said whatever Tinubu is carrying didn't come from them. Why are Nigerians still sleeping? Just to speak, why Rome is burning? Why? So all these things they're saying, you see, sometimes when you look at, when you look at, he said, you now start to wonder why the white man will look at us and say, look, these people, they just shake their head. No Nigerian, I bet you, be you anybody, I, I, can, I, can, I can stake a bet. Come out. We are the gathering of white, say, this is my passport, I'm a Nigerian. Raise it up, people will look at you and then, and then turn their face away. Or go to any airport, Brad, even if you have your visa, as you are even going, you want to enter, you get to go, go to, let's say, go to, go to, let's say, JFK. As you are riding, they'll say, I'm a Nigerian. People, it doesn't mean, no. they may look at you and say, okay. But then, now, uh, the, the way they will look at you and say, look at these people. Why are they coming? Special searching. Is that what we are, is that, is that what I've been said, what we've been sentenced to? That now, we are, we've been, we've, we've, we've been, uh, what are, are tolerating mediocrity at local government level, tolerating forgery at every way, every level. Now, number one citizen of the country, we now be certified. If it were a Nigerian university, they say, not be bad belly because the, uh, uh, the university is from their own side or it's not from, the, this is Chicago State University, an institution in the United States that is not even part of Nigeria. Yet they said what this man forged is not from them. Now, how do we feel that the president of Nigeria will be having a fight with FBI? What does that tell you? Are we running? Is, that is, it means that the country, if you can select, because the word we said, they said every country, every, people, they, um, every country deserves the leadership they get. So does it mean Nigerians deserve Tinubu or what? Are we all nation of forgers? Are we all for certificate forgers? Are there not Nigerians that are excelling? Do you want me to be calling them? Do you want me to mention like uh, people like uh, uh, Chichimamanda Adichie? These are stars of the women folk. Arumote, there are many of them. Even the, even the, even the lady who was the best, uh, who, who, who took gold in 100 meters hurdle. These are the people that they are, these are the stars. They, when they now talk, they say, look at their president. They can't even, you, so we can't even screen somebody will bring the worst debate he did not turn up for call for debate he didn't come and address the people he can't why not start just take to the podium and say i am so so and so i was born in so so and so so and so i attended so so and so schools he cannot do that simply because they just want to impose in there and nigerians are keeping quiet i mean it means that if if we accede to such things it means that well probably we are part of it people will say and they didn't do anything there was no protest everybody kept quiet even when they know that they forged his certificate this is a forger this is a this is a criminal act claiming what you don't have and you steal somebody's identity so what so what really are we talking about and nigerians are keeping quiet nobody is saying anything people are just uh, trying what are you talking look at look is there no correlation between the evil man on top and then the crash of the economy. Is somebody telling me that they can't, can they work out the correlation? That since he came in, look at the way Nigeria has been crashing. He forged, there is nothing. Even if you ask Bola Tinubu to bring a letter signed by God in heaven, he will present it. So what sort are we talking about? Even when you can easily go to Christian Association of Nigeria and talk to them, he didn't. He go and recruited Agbero and give them cassocks. Say these are bishops. This happened before our own very eyes. What really are we talking about? And people are keeping quiet. What sort of bloody money do they use to buy Nigerian journalists? Are there no more delegates around in Nigeria in, 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 
in the Nigerian in Nigerian journalism. Are there no more delegiwa? Can somebody be courageous enough to call a spade a spade? All you hear them is to wear wear one type of a cracker suit and then be talking nonsense in studio. You think that these are human beings. It's a shame. It's a to, to be honest, it's a very it's a shame. I feel like I, I'm you see, I'm personally I'm, I'm personally feeling the pain because I know what it is to burn the midnight candle every night. I know what it is to read to the level that I am and publish a paper, make a contribution to world store of knowledge. I've done a research. I know what it means. I publish my research work. It is there. So I've made a contribution. If I die today, there's a particular aspect of car protecting, which is an analyte you use to diagnose and treat inflammatory bowel disease. I made a contribution. I can beat my chest. Yes, I published it in a scientific journal. So I know what it means to study. I know what it means, what academic rigor means. Now somebody will go and find a certificate and then people be, be, then expect me to, you know, to keep quiet. No, I can't. Nigerians, they have to rise up. You have to, if, 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 if only for the sake of people like Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, people like Ngozi Okonji Iwala, um, uh, what is the man, the man in uh, African Development Bank? The, our sportsman, Victor Simen, let me even put it, the chap in Napoli, that the Italians are comparing to Maradona. They say since, 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 the, since Maradona left Napoli, there is no other person they know than Victor Simen. Do you know what it means? They made a statue of Maradona in, 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 Napo, in, in, in Naples. They named the stadium after Diego Armando Maradona. Now look at Victor Simen. So because of people like this, we now have a forger. Do you know what it means? Don't are we not? Don't we have shame as a people? Must everything be must everything be uh, denominated in naira and kobo? Do we not have shame? A criminal, certified criminal, is now in charge. What are we talking about? What shame can we use to confront our Wekowas neighbors? What shame can we use to stand within the committee of nations? Say you are Nigerian and look at the type of people you have. Even then, the American University have helped you to say. This is the man, we don't know what he's carrying, he forged certificate. And then people are keeping quiet, as he's saying, Supreme Court. Is what, so if I forge a check of belonging to Niger Watch, is it Supreme Court that, uh, that, that we say whether it's forged or not? It's Niger Watch that we say, look, this check didn't come from me. The moment he says it, that ends it. And people are telling me, what is Supreme Court my food? And by the way, the law says that if you submit a forged certificate, you are disqualified. So I've been issued, the man shouldn't be there. And the Nigerians are keeping quiet. Nobody's saying anything. Mr. Evans, please go to the next person. My attention is needed somewhere now. In case Mr. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, that's fine, sir. Thank you. No, no, I'll no, go no, to no, Mr. No. Pansat. Sorry, to me, I'm reeled up this night because now I want people to digest the meaning of forgery. For number one, look, anybody can forge. Even a taxi driver, a downfall driver in anywhere in Nigeria can forge. You keep it to yourself. Until you show yourself to public office, that is when you bring the opprobrium and disgrace to your people. What are we talking about? How do we look at this? Certified, and even said, before then, he confirmed that, oh, if they release this, say, my details, it will cause irreparable damage to Nigeria. Though he may say it to himself, but it's to Nigeria. And it is true. People are now laughing, oh, Nigeria, national of forgers. It's a Nigerian thing. Now, when the FBI releases their own, it will also be the same thing. And yet that person is still bragging, sitting there as number one. Don't we have shame? If, what is the name? Um, um, if the former British Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, resigned, not because of forgery, not because of, just because he said, people, we, we, have, we, have, we have coronavirus in the UK. Part of the regulation, public health regulation is, people should, be, people should not mix together. Not much of a social uh, social life. So, you know, remain somewhere, don't come together. And the guy did it at that time. Secretly in his flat at Downing Street, it was found out. And he resigned. Just just that. So if he hadn't, that was, and the money he spent was even his own money. And he resigned. And tomorrow, Nigerians will be running to UK. I want to come to UK. I want to Jakba. I want to, we are Jakba to UK. Look at their prime minister. Very clean. But your own, you elected a rogue, and you are even here defend some of us abroad are even defending the, the criminality that is down down there. It's a shame. 
to be honest with you, if Ni if anything, although Delegiwa said Nigerians have come to a state of Nigerians cannot be shocked anymore. If nothing came out of this, Nigerians did not blink an eyelid. To, to be honest with you, the black race, the leadership of the black race will shift to the next country that is willing to take it. Nigeria will continue to be a disgrace, a scar on the conscience of the black nation. It's a waste of space, to be honest with you. I don't care what people say, because this is quite unbecoming. We've never had this this bad. Our economy is crumbling. Today, a, a one pound, one British pound gives you 1,500 naira. I bet you in a week's time, it will give you 2,500 naira. Let's be here and be watching. So what are we talking about? You can't do anything. And you, don't, you do not see the correlation between the two. These are criminals. For those of Ni for Nigerians that are always religious, they will say when the righteous is on, on the throne, the people rejoice. Now that the people are not rejoicing, what does that tell you? Because the criminals are in the throne. It's as simple as I mean. It doesn't, it, it's a no-brainer. One can easily know it. And yet Nigerians are not saying anything. People are just going about their normal business. Oh, I want to jackpot. And jackpot for, look at the person you kept there. Look at the, look at the mess Nigeria has become. Look at the mess. A nation of a, a nation of talents all over the world. Nigerians are excelling. A Nigerian made a minister in Canada, and we are selling. A Nigerian is in the cabinet of uh, Joe Biden. Then there's one in Canada again, and all over the place. Yet you have a criminal. So if tomorrow I arrive, if if tomorrow I happen to arrive at Nandaziki Airport, and you start my suitcase, you see drug there. What moral right have you to to, to arrest me? What moral right has NDA has have got to arrest me? Because, oh, yeah, I saw him. And so the man in Asuruk, what? Or oh, tomorrow, then I decide to look for a job in Federal Ministry of Health. I tend a false certificate. They say, hey, for, hey uh, what of the man in Asuruk? He taught me. That is the meaning. Please, people should reflect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Augustine, uh, for that uh, submission. Thank you for your kind words, your encouragement always. I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everybody that's listening to me. Press on the like button and let's do this together. Uh, let our voices go far. I still have a couple of people to speak here, about three to go. But I'd like to go to Mr. Pansad now. Mr. Pansad, it's good to have you on the show. Good evening to you, sir. Please good talk evening. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, let me say hello customarily like i do to the panelists and uh, people in the comment section especially mommy diaspora uh Elvis, it's been uniform and it's been a chorus here that you've been persevering persistent pertinacious determined and dogged in the fight for your country our country that will all love nigeria thank you sir I add my own voice to that and uh, say, please do not stop. Uh, made a lot of progress. It's, it doesn't show the conversation we're having here right now. That situation in Nigeria, everybody shares the blame of the status of things today. Everybody. Now, uh, Dr. CM just mentioned opprobrium, uh, vituperation criticism and all that kind of stuff, shame, disgrace. The people we're dealing with do not have shame. They don't, they, they're not supposed to have shame. But unfortunately, the international community cannot point any finger because four will be pointing right back at them. See, that's why people like Tinibu, they get away with this stuff, APC. is because without the international community as of date having no shame they have absolutely no shame as a matter of fact they don't mind being in the midst of people like tinibu maybe give them all your features like buhari used to give them they're all corrupt it's not the way the world used to be the united nations has been watered down it's not like when we had our son from ghana at that united nations as Secretary General of the United Nations. He had a soul. He had conscience. When there's a, when there's a problem, he will intervene. When, when, when a, a, a people are being killed, he will bring a, a, an emergency meeting and be able to handle it and take care of it. But we don't have, we don't have anything like that in the international community, not even the United States. 
the president will have here. Will, will have here. It's no good. Because if, if they're any good, Tinubu cannot emerge over there. So if one thing is going to come out of it is that we, we're then going to have to learn how to sit tight on our own. I said in my opening remark that everybody is going to be responsible right now for this. I will start with our principal, Mr. Peter Obi. Okay, you speak softly. And uh, a lot of us say people who speak softly should be our leader. But you have to be carrying a big stick when you speak softly. And that's uh, Theodore Roosevelt here in the United States in the 20th century. He said you speak softly, but you carry a big stick, especially in foreign policy. So I'm saying you've done very well. You've done it by the book. You've done it by law. Tomorrow, that process will come to a halt, but that's not the end of it. I am urging you to remember all the efforts, all these votes that we've went out there. A lot of Nigerians, they don't have a boot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. But they went out there and they voted. They were ashamed to do it. I was part of those on this platform that said, look, go out there and get your PVC. We fought that battle and we argued about it. And go out there and you vote. Some of them, they're living in Lagos. They have to go all the way back home in the east. Some of them in the east, they have to go all the way back to the north and go get their PVCs. Whatever it is, they're going to vote. And they did all that. So nobody this time should blame the Nigerian people. No. They did what they had to do, what they're supposed to do. So now, I want you speak softly. But you must now begin to show. After tomorrow, you have to show your big stick. It's not enough to be a nice guy. When there's injustice, we have to correct it. And this one, the provocations have been many. They start all the way, all the way down to the eye neck. You registered, you're a candidate. You, you, you did what you're supposed to do to qualify as a candidate. And you summoned for our votes and we gave, we gave that vote to you. INEC did not play the role that's in the Constitution. They did not. They went around, they educated everybody that they're going to transmit that result electronically from that polling unit to an IREV somewhere. So we could view it and make sure that it rhymes with what was collected. The data is there. So it's not even a question. There's no argument about that. You're supposed to use that beavers to transmit those results. They turned off the beavers. That, sir, is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Every Nigerian knows that. So when I, um, if I have time, I'll talk about what should happen because of that. That is actually where the disrespect comes from. We spent 400 billion naira. Nigerians don't have any money to eat. A bag of rice is a lot. 50,000, 60,000. I don't know what, uh, what the hell it is. So I'm saying to you, you do have a responsibility now because a lot of us supported you based on faith, your, your character, a person who has empathy, hard worker, unstained, not only not corrupt, but incorruptible. And I've said on many occasions that you, sir, you, you, you're you the best that the, the continent had proffered. And I say, Probably better than anybody else has profited. You're better than Obama, for example. But it's not enough if they take this mandate away from you. It's not enough. I, in my, strategically, I believe they should have formed the government that night at the turn of the beavers because it's up to them now to prove that you didn't win it. So now I go to Waz Waziri Adamawa uh, of the PDP and I say, sir, you have a responsibility here. What kind of Muslim are you? Your people do everything by violence. You don't obey the laws. What kind of Muslim are you? They say you're not a Nigerian. You have to bring your people to the table. If, if this election is rigged, and I believe you think it's rigged, you've, 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 you've 
gone, comes here to the United States and you defeated Tinubu over here where there's rule of law. I was proud. I was okay, look, nobody, it's all good, nobody's all bad. Here's a uh, article doing what it's supposed to do. And you came here and you won. After everything they tried to do, that certificate was shown to be a forgery. The school denied that they didn't issue that. Uh, Dr. CM just said it. They, they, they didn't issue it. So it's a forgery. So now we know that. You, so you have a responsibility. Use some of that. You're not a Muslim hubris. If this, uh, there's a chance the Supreme Court would do the right thing tomorrow. Maybe you won the election. Who knows? But we have to know who won the election. If we don't, they need to rerun the election. So in that case, I'm on your side. There's no way saying that Obi won the election, even though we believe that he did. But you, you may also have won. But what do they have? Let's say uh, Chigumi, uh was the governor of Kaduna State, former governor of Kaduna, El Rufai. What kind of Muslim are you? Why do you have to go legal this time? and play by the rules, like we've been asking them to do. Don't play by the rules this time. Do it the way you guys do it. Show them that you're really a Muslim and not a Muslim. Don't try to be legal now. Now, I've said to uh, Nigerians, all of us, we must not carry on unless we know who won this election. If it's Tinibu won the election, he should continue. If he didn't win the election, he should not. This is the talk. After today, I'm no longer going to be talking. I'm no longer going to be on the panel talking about anything. There's no need to talk. What am I going to say? You know more than I do. What are we going to do? We know that he, uh, this election, it's not clear what happened. So if they tomorrow convince us, show reasonably, legally, who won the election, we, we, we will accept it. But if they don't, if they do it disrespectfully, for example, the, the court comes in tomorrow and they say, hey, look, we're throwing out these appeals and we're going to give you the reasoning letter, the judgment, the uh, opinion is forthcoming. We should all hit the streets. And do not think that 10 people cannot start it one person cannot start it. Go out on the streets. Do it legally. You have the right to demonstrate. You have done everything by the books, and I'm proud of every Nigerian from North, Northern Nigeria, Southern Nigeria, Eastern Nigeria, Western Nigeria. We've really gone through the democratic process. And you guys should be commended. Things are hard in the country. You registered. You voted. It's time for us to demand some respect from them. They owe us telling us what happened. And uh, I know that's a, uh, this is a show I would really like to go on and on with sequels, talking about the consequences. You, but I'll I, I go ahead and leave it right there for right now. Thank, Thank you, you, Elvis, for uh, enduring that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Pansa. Thank you. Uh, we'll come back to you. I appreciate every one of you right there. I'd like to quickly uh, move on to the next person uh, so that it can get to everyone on time. You know, um, we have James K earlier on. I think you left. Oh, James K, you already left. Okay, that's fine. Okay, let me come to Mr. Alex. Mr. Alex, it's good to have you on the show. Good evening to you, my brother. Um, let's hear from you. Okay, Mr. Alex, it looks like you're not available right now. I am very available. More okay. available than MTN and Glow Network combined. Don't worry. <laughs> My brother, God bless you. A big yes, talk thank you. The, the submissions of my great panelists has been very touching. I've been I've been listening all along, especially Mr. CM and uh, Mr. Pansat. And um, yeah, Mr. CM was very passionate, and that is what actually brought me on board. Sometimes I just want to listen and learn, also write down things from, from people. People just think uh, we are mobile encyclopedia. No, no, we learn. You know, a wise man listens. A fool is quick to speak, you know. So 
for me, uh, most of the questions Dr. CM was passionately asking, I want to answer some of them. Well, we have a country where people are quiet. First of all, let me stand on the existing protocol. And uh, those on the comment section, I greet you. So it's not uh, maniacally be bewildering. It's not, it's, not, it's not something you should be surprised about that um, we are where we are. When you have a country where more than half of the country or a part of the country, they have 10 to 15 million out of school children. What do you expect? A country where a set of leaders of particular region, they lie to their you know, vulnerable ones and their talakawas, the, the, the poor ones, that education is a crime or is a sin against Allah. And they take their children to the United States and the UK for bachelors and PhD, and they even celebrate them online. What do you expect? We're in a country where a part of the country celebrates cow more than human life. What do you expect? We you have a part, a country where a part of the country give their 11 years old daughters out in marriage. What do you expect? Against the laws of biology. What do you expect? When you have a country where abuse is prevalent, a country where, where we have you know, Sharia law and the Nigerian constitution, what do you expect? A mango tree can never give you coconuts. It's, it's been coming. It's, it's, it didn't start today, Dr. Sia. Why people are quiet is because a, a man from that same region called Professor Mahmoud, representing the oligarchs, the northern oligarchy, who have been quiet over the killing spree of Buhari's government, even when a whole railway line was, was kidnapped. Citizens were bailing themselves, modern day slavery. A, a country where leaders from a particular region sponsor raping of women, kidnapping, taking lives like at, you know, on a rampage. And no single arrest till tomorrow. That same region produced an INEC chairman. A country that had, that, that had more than 20 million people who are so-called marjories, that education is not good. Don't go to school. You have to go and read, uh, what's it called? There's a name they call it. Is it Saraka? They call it. Go and read Quran and, be, uh, and beg for food. What do you expect from such a country? They don't know the value of education. Exactly what Oduku was teaching us. They don't know the value. Oil and, and, and water. They don't know the meaning of development. They don't know the meaning of history. They don't know the meaning of generational you know, legacies. They don't know. Maybe they know. They have been satanically wicked. They produce a so-called professor who we should be investigating thoroughly just now. In total, the switched up beavers that collected allegedly more than $120 million from a drug bearer and did all the shenanigans, all the maneuvering, all the, you know, all the election practice we saw, everything we saw. All these people just, they just felt it's one of those things. They didn't know it will linger. Like They just felt Nigerians, we just go around looking for visa to travel as usual. They will just, they will, they will just forget like 1993, Abiola case. They will just, of, of course, allegedly, my own brother from our state, the late Tony Aneni allegedly collected $30 million from, uh, from uh, Ibrahim Badam Mustafa Bangida, the money from, uh, from the CIA, allegedly. So this is where we find ourselves, where money is the order of the day, the love of money. And the love of money is the root of all evil. It's a shame. Why are we quiet? I don't know. There is a mad, uh, maybe they are waiting for tomorrow's judgment, but I feel there is, a, there, is, there is a magical, mystic mysticism going on. It has been a diabolism. It has been placed on Niger most Nigerians, minus me. Because normally, the Nigerian we, where me I grew up from, <laughs> people came out to chase away Babangida in the infamous or the famous Babangida must go. People stood against Abacha. People stood against uh, even this Buhari. So where, where is the momentum? And a government where opposition is almost dead, 
is going to be filled with impunity. That is the words of Nelson Mandela. Impunity is the order of the day. So for me, this is not a democracy. It's just a government of a few people who revere cow more than human being. Cow. Kill one cow in that area, a whole community will be raised down. I don't know where that ideology came from. So we, where do you expect them to know the value of an election, of a transparent election? How do you expect them to know the meaning of international image? How do you expect them to know that a sitting president must never have such scandal? It should never happen. In a nation country, this guy would have taken his own life. I'm not encouraging suicide, but that is how he's done. You, you all know. In Europe, the guy would have resigned and handed himself over to the police. Brothers and sisters, there is no country at all. It's a business center for Nottanas and Buckingham Palace, the British, and corrupt, some corrupt Satanas too, a few. That is just the, the description of Nigeria. You, if, you, if, you know, if you have connections, you can get away with everything. There's no system. It's a decayed and a rotting country. We are rapists, go free, forgers, go free, killers, go free, kidnappers, go free. Till now, did we talk about Deborah's death again? No, that, that is your country for you, let alone a certificate forger. Come on, that's the murder case. In the developed country, that case, the, we will see the end of that case. If a country will value cow more than human being. We value cow more than children's education. We value cow more than a girl's right to free and free education. A girl's right to, 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 to adulthood before marriage. Come on, what are you expecting? You split in the damn country and let them go and mess themselves up. I don't want to use the F word. Let them go and F themselves. If the oil we have in the south was in the north, the so-called Nigeria would have been long time gone. But they don't know what to do. They thought it will, they thought it will soon dry. It will soon dry. They went to go and bring Swiss, Swiss company, American company, to look for oil in Adamawa, to look for oil in um, Kanu, to look for oil in Kaduna. They, they check and check. It didn't work. You can't play God. Eventually, what we are running from, the division we are, we are all running from, that is where we, 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 we are going to find ourselves. Because you cannot continue to tell a blind man is raining. One day, blind man will grab you by your shirt and say, I know it's not raining. You are just stoning me. Gentlemen and ladies, there is no country. The wicked people, some wicked people in the north, unfortunately, it's just the truth with respect to my lovely brothers from, from the north, but some wicked northern leaders, they are the one calling the shots. You can never be anything in Nigeria without going to bow down somewhere in Sokoto, in Kaksina, in Kaduna, in Kano. Why? I'm asking questions. Why? Why? Why must I come there to give you 50 million? Why, why is it that during election your, your, your market are always burning? Why? Then I have to go and donate money, 100 million. Before election, you, you have markets burning ac across the north. Who burns those markets? Trying to test people's loyalty. So you think such country, we, we have uh, a transparent election, they, they will know the meaning of having a number one citizen, a, a citizen being a certificate forger, a drug baron, with dual or triple, quadruple identity crisis or cataclysm. No, it's not a country. Uh, but for me, I will described it so perfectly to BBC when he was asked if Nigeria is a nation. He said, no, Nigeria is just a mere geographical expression. It's as a, a then in the 1950s and 60s. So let's prepare ourselves for the great division if OB will not get his mandate. If Beavers will not be switched on and the election results collated again because the information is still there. Think today, because the, the technology is very strong. Think today, it's, the, it's still there. They couldn't do anything about it. It's there. Forever is there. They try to configure it, it's there. The guy, the, the, the experts from, from the company came and said, the information is still there. So if they will not do the right thing, oh, now I, I present to you what you call a country. This is why countries don't respect your green white, your, uh, your green passport. 
once you're Nigerian, anywhere across the Western world, they set you aside for, they will call it random check. It's not random. Before you bother that plane from your, from your, from your departure, they already, they already are waiting you that you are in Nigeria and you have to go through double, double screening or scrutiny. So when, when, when people teach people that cow is more than a human being, how will they know the meaning of elections? How will they know the meaning of democracy? Separation of powers, harms of government. How will they know the meaning of rule of law? How, how, how will they know justice? How will they know generational legacies? How will they know that the children are watching us? How will they know? They just think about marrying women. Even some, some of them, in the north, they came to the, uh, to the rep or the, uh, or the senate. They came with their wives, four wives. He said, I have four wives and 27 children, and I'm still giving birth. A lawmaker said that. A lawmaker, because his brain has been programmed to think about cow, cow. You are living with, in, in the same country with people who, who think about cow more than human being. You saw it on the, on the, on the body. It played out. No book has been opened. No questions has been asked over the rampant, murderous activities. The wiping of lives. Amnesty National says 1,078,000 lives, almost 1.1 million lives were lost on that boy. The ones they could count. Nigeria government came to debunk it to say it's just, it just 60,000 people. <laughs> the country is saying they killed their own citizens, just 60,000. No investigation. Have you seen a government they come out and say we killed our own city, we, we only lost on that boy 68,000 people? <laughs> Have you seen that madness? Because there's cow mentality in their brain. They didn't lose 500 cows, but they lost. 68,000 souls, according to them. Amnesty say 1.1 million. 1 million, 78,000. Human beings were wiped out because of nefarious, because of the kind of, you know, culture, the kind of things they stand for. And you want to live in the same country with these, these people? No wonder a human rights activist, a freedom fighter said the country is a zoo. Is it not a zoo? I would not live in a zoo. With baboons and monkeys. Even monkeys will not even kill their own children. I will, I will not, I will not, is it not justified? Is that why he's really held captive? I don't know him, but his words are everything he said, who plan and thinker have come to pass. Now, of course, the man we call Bwari has run away now. He's avoiding cameras since he left office. Nobody's asking questions. Who really was in Asso Rock from 2017? Those are the kind of people you have. Now we are hearing they are recruiting. 11 years old children into the NDLA in the north, and we are and, and we are just quiet and we think the, these are human beings. If you want to develop, you have to meet people of like minds. The country needs to split immediately. Let those who want to who, who want to build their country build their country. Those who want to sleep with cow all their life, they should sleep with cow all their lives. Cow and meat is beef. I cannot worship cow. My goodness, how did we end up here? May God bless Odumengo Juku, great, great historian. Took the bull by the own, used his father's billions to wage war against this, against this murderous s -man. We are coming. Some of us are coming. Just a matter of time. We are coming. And I don't wish I would leave it here. I'm very sad. I'm very sad. I'm, I'm being provoked. Thank you. We are coming. Thank you, Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. Alex. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, uh, everybody. I'd like to come to... Um, all right. I'm not sure if Mr. F. Emmanuel is ready, so I have to go back to the, the way it is on the table because I don't want to stay here for so long today. We're already uh, approaching four hours now, so let's have a final submission, everyone. We have a full house. So I would like to come to the, the first person that spoke first, which is Tun. Tun, thank you very much for your patience. I would like you to talk to us. Uh, thank you. God bless you. Let's do for five minutes on the final submission. Thank you. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, one minute, please. One minute, please. One minute. Okay. Right. Um, I'd like to say something. Because I hear I hear a lot of things, a lot of comments, which is a general comment, and I can understand where we're coming from. I hear people insulting houses, uh Hausa Fulani. See, listen, you you when we start No, I said I said I said they're leaders. No, 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 excuse me. I'm not, addressing, I'm not addressing yes. you, please. I'm just making a serious statement. If you just listen and you understand what I mean. 
they are good Hausa Fulanis. They are good Hausas. By the way, Hausas are even marginalized in the North, if you understand um, the politics in the North. Now, a lot of people are not talking in the North. They love, they love um, their, um, um, their youths that are being gradually vocal. But we can, we listen, we cannot just throw in a blanket statement like um, 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 Hausa Fulani, they are, they, are, they, are, they are sleeping with their cats. Well, I think that's disrespectful. Let's just, let's, let's be, let's be um, calculated and uh, intelligent in the way we make our statement. I know we are very upset. Nobody's happy about what's happening. I know good, I, I know good Hausa people when I serve Nigeria, okay? I, that were my colleagues. I know they're very good people that are not very happy with what is going on now. Now, um, we we are we keep calling for coup and all that. Listen, it's not a straightforward business. It's so complicated. It's very 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 complicated. Now, people might say, okay, all outsiders are are bad Fulanis. But how about I? How about Aibo people? How about people like Uzodima? Is it not is it not even worse than an outsider person that sold out his uh, his people and, and killing his own people? So it's it it it's it is now time that we need to call out people individually. If you're bad, I mean, we are all responsible. Like uh, Uncle Pansat said, we are all responsible for all this mess. You see, we don't we we shouldn't be protecting our, my criminal my criminal my criminal is my criminal because he comes from my state or my or my community and all that and um, and. Uh, we should not mention and all that. All the time, all I hear is Aosa Fulani, Aosa Fulani, Aosa Fulani. Yes, I know. Yeah, o over the years, some bad people have come, but there also there are some good people. Anyway, albeit, let me let me just say something. Yeah, what we don't understand is the America probably needs to know there because they need a stooge in Africa. Uh, my brother, can. I'm sorry. Please, can I ask they you a question, they, sir? Please, please don't interfere. Can, can I finish, please? Can I finish, please? I don't want to ask you a question, I'm going to lose my thought. Can I finish? Let can I finish, finish, please? Thank you. So, uh, America needs a stooge they, uh, they can control in Africa. So, it serves their best purpose for Tinubu to be there. That's what we need to understand. This is international politics. Remember, pe people forget quite easily. Remember, this guy was um, was gearing for war uh, to to take our soldiers into in, into conflict in Niger. Do you think he's acting alone? Have you thought about it? So, whether um, FBI or whatever uh, file, even if they decide to even beat the Supreme Court and release everything tonight, it makes no difference. People don't care. Except we come out, we all we should all be ready, even people in the diaspora, because all of us here we talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. When it kicks off, how many of us will be willing to buy um 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 an air ticket and go down to Nigeria and join the struggle? Many of us will many of us will go under the bed or just be watching telly. That is it, that's the reality. I'm saying it as, as it is. I have seen I've, I've, I've seen a war in my life. It's not a nice thing, but it's it's right now. If he has to come down to war, so be it. Because these people are not ready. They are not ready to let go. Like what I said earlier when I first spoke, they are not let, ready to let. They are already planning for eight years and beyond. The only thing, the only way you can stop these people is by force. So let's just start calling out people individually. Let's. Uh, I mean. MC Oluomo lives in the States. For the people in the States, uh, wh why have we not found out where he lives in the States and go and pick it and go and speak to the, uh, the, the, the Congress people that a criminal lives here that is supporting, that he lives in America, that is um, uh, uh, support, uh, um, uh, supporting um, 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 uh, um, evil in Nigeria and I'll call him out. I was reading the other day in, in X and all that that he's been contracted to look for uh, David Hunde and his and some of his talks to take him out, and we are here. We talk and talk and talk every day, and and we'll be we'll be abusing them. You see, let me let me tell you. Years ago, we used to think that the uh, some of these northern rogues were uh, are stupid. They're not stupid. Do you see them talk? They are not talking. 
They're not talking. All right. Thank you. Thank you, um, Tune. I would like to come in here before I call on the next person. Okay. Um, according to your submission, Tune, I think I, I will agree with you 50%. You know, um, the area where I will be agreeing with you is that, yes, let's start calling out people individually. Uh, you know, that's my stand right from time. You know, generalizing is the biggest thing that I fight against all the time on this platform. You know, one person cannot do something, then we generalize. One person do something, we generalize. Oh, uh, do person, if I do bad on this platform today, uh, do people are bad. You see him do bad today, all Ibo people are bad. If give us a mandate, do something today, all Yoruba people are bad. If uh, Madam Busy Bray do something, all Lausa people are bad. No, 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 and no. You know, let's learn. I really want to support uh, Tune on that. Of, uh, that we must call people out um, individually because we have a lot of satanic people in my own state at those states. Oshomole is satanic, uh, Wike is satanic. Uh, many in every state, there are satanic people everywhere. So when we're now beginning to say, you know, say some kind of harsh words to the entire Aunsa people, the entire Yoruba people, the entire Igbo people, or rather the entire Edo people, they become the problem. You know, please, uh, if we all can learn from them, because nobody's perfect, we, I understand that the reason, that's why I said I agree with you 50%. The other 50% is that, is to justify others. For example, Mr. Alex and others, you know, because they are angry. The situation we are right now, sometimes we lose it. Me, myself, I lose it here sometimes. I just say it, you know, later and I get to realize that, oh, it shouldn't be, uh, you know, um, go that way. You know, El so, Elvis, you Elvis, you're hundred percent. Sometimes I just get mad. I mean, two two weeks ago, uh, I I just lost it. I mean, I had to tell someone to shut up on on on. Uh, I see? mean, that guy comes, that guy comes into uh, uh, Doctor Rudolph's uh, forum and you know just put out some very very ridiculous uh, narrative and all that. I just try to gaslight people, and I don't like being gaslighted. I, I, yeah. I didn't know when I had to tell him to shut up. Yeah. You know, so it, it, nice it, happens, it happens, you know. Um, I, I, I want to ask a question, if you allow me, Mr. Evans. Thank well, you. Yes, you. You will. Hold on. Hold on. You, of okay. course, you will. I just, but I want people to understand that uh, the situation we are right now in Nigeria, if we continue to believe there is one particular set of people that put us in this situation that we are, then we will continue to remain in this situation. Because uh, somebody called in earlier on, I don't, I can't remember the person saying that uh, uh, we should blame the Fulani Aunsa people because they actually fixed Tinubu there to destroy Nigeria. You see, I I hundred percent disagree with that. Not even ninety nine, hundred percent. Grown up man as Tinubu, they fix him to destroy Nigeria. The Yoruba man. So what about the same uh, people that is supporting Tinubu? The Fulani yes, man, or Fulani Aunsa people also fix fix them. To support him, but please, please, let's say things I raise. Let's say if the, me why they talk, so hold me, you know, responsible for whatever I do, whatever I say. You know, you cannot just think that yes, Fulani, yes, man, Fulani. I'm, I keep saying Fulani, yes, man, Fulani, Aunsa, Aunsa, Fulani. Okay, that's how they call them. Fulani, <laughs> Fulani, uh, Aunsa, Fulani. You know, you cannot continue to say that. You know, the people that destroy Nigeria are all across the whole country. Look at what Wiki exactly. is doing. Is, is Wiki a, a notana? You know what Oshomole is doing today is a, a Oshomole. You have been talking about Oshomole. How about Olisa Bakoba that everybody was respecting uh, until uh, he he has joined them because of money? Uh, exactly. Uh, and another what Brahman, about, a man from Onitsha. What, what about Festos Okoye, the INEC uh, deputy chairman? Is he a notana? So what are we talking about? So please. Uh, Feladro you know. Toye, that everybody adores. I know that a pastor, he has joined them. Yeah. Exactly. So if we call people out individually, I will really support that. And uh, to come to my uh, other people with the kind of anger that we have right now is not easy. It's not easy. So sometimes, uh, you know, the only thing I expect from people when you realize that you'll be called out of what you said or maybe it's wrong, you just accept it. We move on. But when we continue to defend it and defend it, it becomes a problem. For me, I like people to call me out when I'm going wrong, you know, so on that. But then lastly, in terms of war, I don't want to experience war in my life. I'm sorry. I don't want to experience it. I'm not part of it. I will never, my 
my platform will never be part of it. I will never be part of it. Um, anything to do with me will never be part of it. I don't want to experience it. And what Tune also said, you know, if it happens, how many of us will buy tickets from abroad to go join the people in Nigeria on the war? <laughs> That's true. Let's, I know some people might not like this. That's just the truth. How many of us? How many? So not be so I also support that, but I expect the people back home to do the needful, occupy the street, block all the streets. Nobody will kill you for if you do such thing. You know, but they're not coming out. So blocking the street or if Asari Dokubo can be can take over the whole Abuja right now, nobody's arrested there. So what makes you think somebody will arrest you for a peaceful protest? So that's my take on that. So Mr. Alex, please go ahead with your question because I have somebody on the phone. Thank you. Yes, precious evil. Uh, I love um, northerners. Okay, I have northern friends. I have northern workers. When you listen to me sometimes, and uh, some uh, maybe you are the one who's mistaken. I said northern leaders. I never said northern or uh, I was a fulani. No, I said the leaders. And you can prove me wrong. My question is this. Why do people who wants to do anything in Nigerian politics, they must have to go and bow down in Sokoto, bow down, can you expect me not to ask questions? What I'm did these leaders that, do when- not do that, my brother, I'll disagree yeah. with you. The governor of River State right now, they have yes. capped on 5 million and I, a month. And I also said, so and I also said some, South some of our Southern leaders, yeah, I said that too, that our yes. some Southern leaders also cooperating with this evil. I, I will never generalize against a particular people, but the Northern leaders who are, who are planting people everywhere to do what they are doing, we have to also call them. Yes, our, our know, people in the This is another wrong. area I would disagree with you again. For example, yes. you, Alex, that me know so me. much, and I believe nobody can plant you. So are you going to tell me today, if any Northern leader plants you today, you start misbehaving like them, and practicing the same satanism like them, then you not come Maybe. back and say, oh, now nah, nah, plant, they plant me. Maybe, maybe, maybe the word plant was wrong, but what I'm seeing, uh, what I'm seeing is this, what I'm seeing is this. They are doing what they like. Yes, they yes, planning. what, yes, yes, you, you are right. And I just was, uh, maybe my, my uh, vocabulary is wrong. What I'm seeing is this. I have never seen anybody who wants to be a governor, who wants to be a senior president, or who wants to be a president in Nigeria, that don't go and pay one homage or the other in somewhere around all these places. In Sokoto and Kano and all those places, as a son of the soil of the country, I'm asking questions. Why is it always so? With with war that went wrong with 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 worry government. Look at what Tinubu is doing now. He's copying the same thing, and everybody is quiet. You, unless, when you, unless when you want to be a president of a country, even in America, you need to go to all the um, yeah the special um, homage they pay there. To believe, that one is different. Help, it's a different thing. Yeah. It's a different. No, thing. no, nobody. But okay. Peter Obi did not go and uh, bow to, down to anybody. Somebody waiting on the phone. You know, we did not uh, go and bow down to anybody. Thank you. But thank you. He, he went thank you. There. Thank you. Please Anyways, please thank you. Please. Thank you. Ask somebody on the phone, please. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Busy Brace, for calling in. Good evening to you, Madam. Please talk to us. Good evening. Two minutes. Thank you. Okay, I, I just have to, yeah, I just, I, I just wanted to just put in my two cents in to support what um, Mr. Tony Tone said, and also to kick against what Tony Africa is saying in the comment section, you know? His bigotry is showing very, very, very loud. How can he write and say there is no good northerner? I am in No, I didn't see that. He should be blocked. I, I didn't see that comment. If Tony write that, he should be blocked on earth and heaven. I didn't see that comment. I will look for it right now. You'll be blocked because I've warned you so many times. I, I, I don't understand why the truth of it is why I'm calling. In fact, yesterday, my, I've been having issues with my network. I feel really attacked. All my gadgets can not even hold YouTube. Today, I'm just so lucky. You see, I've been meaning to come on the platform and say this, and it has been in my spirit greatly. We need, without the unity required, it's because we are not united. That is why there is nobody on the streets right now. Because everybody is thinking, if I step out, nobody will back me. This one will say I'm Igbo. This one will say I'm Hausa. This one will say I'm Yoruba. Can, 
open, keep that away and focus on the evil that has congregated in the national assembly. Thank you. Evil that has congregated in the your line is not too clear anyway. Your line is breaking. You know, your line is breaking, madam. We can't hear you anymore at all. Thank you very much. Thank you. The attack is all right. Real. All right. L listen, uh, Mr. Tony, I'm searching for your comment. I think you are lucky I didn't see that comment. You know, you because you're supposed to be blocked. Because your pretense is becoming too obvious for you right now. I've told you before, I'm not here to rub shoulder with anybody that is doing the wrong thing. If anybody is supporting me, you must show, you must be, uh, be ready to do the right thing. If you are doing the wrong thing and you are pretentiously saying you are supporting me, you don't have to support me. If you write anything, there's no body good in the not or in the not or no not on us is good. If I still see that comment, I will block you on earth and heaven. Because that is so, so extreme. Thank you. Let me move on to the next person to speak to us. I would like to call on Engineer Francis. Sir. Please give us your final submission. Five minutes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, please, guys. This is not yet over. The fact that the Supreme Court came to their decision this early, I think it must be good. One reason, 25% in Abuja, they, the Supreme Court, had ruled on it before, on previous occasion, about twice. So we know, and each one of these counts is enough to nullify the election. So maybe they didn't want to go into all those other areas, but concentrate on the ones that has been established. And that is exactly what they are doing right now. And I hope that's why they feel like they have uh, the decision already wrapped up. That 25% is it. Now, uh, Supreme Court, let me also ask you guys this question. Up till now, I don't know the name of that man in Asarok. Do you guys know his name, really? Is his name Bola Ahmed? Or is his name something else? So you cannot close your eyes to things like this. I know they say that frequent contemplation of ghastly scenes renders a man callous to even the most dreadful sight. We have been hearing all these things so much that now we are beginning to even uh, deal with all these things this man has done as if they are things we can sit and talk about. Those are things that are not even tolerated in Nigeria have not been but because he has too much of it that is now overwhelming every part of whatever he's doing is criminal even you guys i'm still expecting to see or hear any one of you guys that will come out and say yes that he has been approached even at niger watch at here i'm quite sure that he has been approached to be skewing the news but the point is, none of you judges have come out to say, hey, this is it. Which means you all caved in to that. Anyway, we will hear tomorrow when you guys tell us your decision. Please, however we do it, tomorrow is it. There's no international court for anything. Whatever leg you guys bring out tomorrow, that's the leg we will take to follow this whole thing. And let it not be that you have overlooked that Abuja 25% and overlooked all the forged documents and all these nonsenses because it's more than enough. In fact, you guys have more than enough. And each one of those counts 
is enough to nullify the election and to remove this man from office. So however you uh, slice that cake, please don't give Nigerians the short end of that stick. You may not like the outcome. Don't push Nigerians to that level because they may not know where to draw the lines. And all of you judges and justices, if you know that you are against what is going on, come out now and speak. Don't wait till tomorrow. And then after tomorrow, uh, uh, if anything happens, you will now come out on TV and say, oh, that you are we're against this. We know. And we are keeping count. And we know all of you guys. So stop and turn this train around. It's going the wrong direction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Regina Francis. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I saw a comment earlier on, but I lost it. Somebody said that the sooner people get to realize that the problem we have in Nigeria is the northerners, it will be better for us uh, that we should look at what Mahmoud Yakubu did. You see, that is where our problem starts from. Mahmoud Yakubu did it fine. Yes, he's guilty. So he did it for who? For who? For Tinubu? So why did Tinubu allow it? That's what I just asked my brother just now, Mr. Uh, Alex. I can hit my chest now on anything to do with Alex. So what about tomorrow? He now decided to turn his back on me. Please mute yourself, sir. Engineer Francis, mute yourself. What about tomorrow we decide to support him to go hold the public office? So Mr. Alex will not come back to tell us that, oh, one not an edda. Now he told my head, though, I don't know what I did do, right? We all, we are the problem of ourselves. If we are not saying the truth, we know the truth. We are shying away from it. We are looking for a chatter to hide under. Now the northern as they tell them, they put gun for their eyes, say you must do it like this, right? You don't have, why can't, why can't we see South Hanna? That we say, okay, for example, I am resigning because the pressure is too much. Now, Bati, to see that, right? Now, Bati, if they are putting pressure on you to do things in a certain way that will affect the people, is anything wrong? You saying that, okay, because of this pressure, I don't want to hurt the people, I don't want to hurt the northerners, okay, I'm resigning. When I say all of them are satanic, you people are driving one way. I don't understand. What do you mean? Okay, look what Mahmoud did. Mahmoud, what did Mahmoud do? He do it for a papa or a mama. Or he do it for a fellow Nottana. Tinubu not get mad to say, I don't want it. Or the way I come here every day. And I decided to hold a public office tomorrow. I will not come back to you. Like the way satanic labor uh, parties, reps, and senators are currently doing right now. So I will not come back to tell you all that, oh, sorry, not be sorry, I be planning. I got there and I get to realize that, oh, they gave me document to sign or they now initiated me to satanic cultism to act in their own way or, in, or to favor them. Come on, guys. Are we kids? If they say your papa go not, now may go home public office, he beginning to behave like a babu. You will come here saying I'm not an as I change him, right? Because he's not a human being. Let me call on the next person. Thank you. Um, I don't know if F Emmanuel, if you are ready. If you're not ready yet, I'll go to uh, Mr. Chutz or Bibozi. My brother, sorry, sorry, I just came in now. Sorry, just calm down, Mr. Evix. I know your, your temperature is rising, you know, so high. Please take it easy. Calm down, calm down. I want to specifically speak with the, to the judiciary. Those who are in charge of this uh, uh, court uh, issue we have, the Supreme Court. 
first of all, they are not going to tell me that they are not aware that Bola Tinubu don't have school sites. They are hundred percent aware. They are also not going go, go, go to tell Nigerians that Bola Tinubu didn't forge that certificate. They can't just pretend about that. They can't also pretend that they are not aware that this man rigged the election. They're not going to pretend about that. What about the 25% of FCT? Are they also going to pretend that the man that they swore in on the 29th of May didn't have 25% of FCT? The judges, are they also going to close their eyes on that? Are they also going to close their eyes that this guy, sometimes years back, he forfeited 460,000 US dollars as a result of not narcotic trafficking. Are they going to close their eyes on that too? What about the Guinea passports? Are they also going to close their eyes on that? What about the double nomination of Shatima, the vice president? Are they also going to close their eyes? What about the switching of Viva, Viva, uh, 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 Beavers? The House of Rep, there was no switch off. Everything went smoothly until they got to the presidential. Are they going to say they are not aware of that? The meaning of Supreme Court is for them to dispatch justice, even when the lower courts mix mix up issues. They are supposed to look at everything, even including public opinion. Very, very important. They say, uh, 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 the voice of the people is screaming. Every new can cry. I don't know hearing the voice of the people, both within Nigeria and outside Nigeria. Is it just only one person that is talking about this issue? These are evidences, left and right. Judges think you have conscience, you have children. Most of you even have great grandchildren. Where will you leave behind if you close your eyes on the truth because of Naira and Kabul? What will be people who remember you for if you see white and you call it black? Why you hear people shouting here and there? Because the petition tribunal court they have messed up. Say once beaten, twice shine. That's why you're hearing Nigerians shouting, making noise, saying all eyes on the Supreme Court. We started with all eyes on the judiciary. The petition tribunal they messed up. Now we are at the last point of our, of, our, of our country to determine whether we are moving forward or we are moving backward or whether there's even going to be a country is in your hands. That is the message I have for you, you those of you that are going to preside on this matter tomorrow. Mr. Evix, I don't know how true it is, allegedly. I learned that Nadeko is also following up on the FBI to make sure that this thing is released. I don't know how true it is, allegedly. The firmament, the earth, the wind, the air, everywhere, 
knows that Tinubu didn't win this election. Yeah, but uh, yes, the, the, the information is going on on that particular one. But my question is that what's significant, significant that will not uh, do to this if they pass judgment tomorrow in favor of Tinubu? Well, the truth is that the only thing I have, and this is my own opinion, if they decide to go ahead to pass this judgment in his favor, the only thing I can tell the people of Nigeria is to go to international court. That's my opinion. That's now here, according to you. So now where now where your sense reach, now where the TikTok have you? That's where my sense reach. Because if you look at it, all the stages that Nigerians are supposed to come out a mass to react to take their destiny in their hands, none of them reacted. None of them. Right from the day of swearing in, that is, should be the beginning of Nigeria to say, no, this man doesn't have 25%. They didn't do anything. They allowed him to go in. Go to tribunal. They kept quiet too. My brother, tomorrow is the same thing. I don't think Nigerians will do a jack. Because they say, we won't, we, won't, we, won't, we won't get sense. Now from a starting age, you're going to say the signal. Women will get belly. We won't bump picking. Now from the movement, you're going to know, say, the picking don't do. Even before what I go boss. Now from her movement, you go know. So in all indications so far, I have not seen any jack from Nigeria. In fact, according to you, right now Nigerians are pressing blow blow. He taking their issue Ukobi Agidi, as long as I know. But if you say Nigerians are going to do anything, well, except I, I start to be corrected. Tomorrow, maybe they will prove me wrong. So, as long as I'm concerned, if the Supreme Court cannot do justice to what, to what Nigerians want, Nigerians are intelligent enough to take this matter to International Court of Justice. That is where there is international relationships. That is where Nigeria will want to have dealings with other countries across the globe. Then they will look at this matter, you know, clearly and see whether the Supreme Court did the right thing or whether I the yeah, tribunal also did the right thing. I rest my case there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. F. Emmanuel. God bless you, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, let me move to Mr. Chu. So, big uh, sir, so if you're there, give us your final submission five minutes. Then I come then to I come Mr. Chu. Yeah. Thank you once again, Mr. Elvis. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's a um, thank you for the intervention. You know about um, you know we calling out our people. You know the this the simple reality is um. Even the judges, the lead judge who came to court and asked, do you want uh, the constitution to be used or you want the electoral act? I, I, I guess uh, from his name, he's not a northerner, you know? So these people are criminals. They are nothing but criminals. There's no excuse for any one of them. Yes, we know where the instigations comes from, but there's no excuses. And that's why I am asking Nigerians, this time around, it's not a time for you and I to chicken out. No. If we want a better Nigeria, it is no any other time than now. We need to let these people know. I don't know about the international court if they got anything to do this is completely in my own view this is completely domestic affair uh, election they know nothing about our election 
even uh, uh, the crime he committed if uh, if any one of us want to do anything we we take it to united states that is where he commits the crime uh, i i believe that is you know something if we are ready to do that is exactly by international court i think international court deals with a uh, country by country or somebody suing their country for you know whatever reason but i don't think um you know matters uh, uh, you know um, uh, of this nature especially when it is a uh, something that holds fundamentals of the country you know you can always hear them say it's a security matter it's a security and in actual sense forget that these people are playing that this is nothing if we understand the real meaning of this thing we are going through now it's a security matter even for anybody who didn't win the election to assume that office to see top secrets it's a it's a it's a it's a very huge security matter and it shouldn't be toyed with and that is why people like me are very very angry that this is happening so nigerians please we need to unite we need to see each other as the same thing i'm suffering the same thing you're suffering and that is the only way we can deal with these people that is the only way we can come together yes we know what is going on there are so many things but this is not the time to talk about it the only one thing that holds, binds us together is nigeria and that is the soul we are fighting for now any other thing should be left aside then when we clear this we come back to that and discuss it because if we don't discuss if we don't discuss these things i mean the people who uh, who fought uh, 1993 if they have sat down and really discussed before they move ahead again i don't think what is happening now will be happening and that is one other thing i think when we finish this fight we must have a conversation real conversation and sit down and talk about this country because we cannot continue like this and we cannot leave it again to get even worse than now then we start crying again nigerians you are hungry i am hungry if these people decide not to take our hunger into uh, uh, recognition when they give their justice we know what to do a hungry man is an angry man i rest it here thank you mr elvis thank you mr shooks thank you sir um Augustine, please your five minutes final submission sir okay thank um thank you niger watch once again yes we're on the eve of a very historic day that is coming tomorrow tomorrow we mark the day when those supposedly are the um, supreme court of nigeria we either sanction or so we either confirm that a, dro a known drug baron and drug addict a certificate forger should retain his seat as number one um, the president of nigeria it's a shameful thing really that's why i'm making let me repeat or sort of recap what i said before all the whole supreme court judges they've all got secretaries working for them in their offices they've all got assistants whether the person that helps to file do the filing for them or type in a letters or whatever it is they've all got them and obviously they were employed maybe on their recommendation now the question is em employing somebody the person must have stated some level of expertise or skill and their abilities usually it's captured with a certificate now if in the, if it happens that the person you employed and somebody hinted to you that that person did not even attend this university he claimed to have attended and as a challenge it was taken up you the supreme court supreme court um, judge that the person is working under you can never there is no skill that you possess 
to detect a false certificate because it is not you, the Supreme Court judge, or the Supreme Court that issued that certificate. What you will do is, you say, but this, the chap, the lady or the man said he attended the University of Benin, or University of Ebado, or whatever university. What you will do, you go to the university, say, look, this certificate, please confirm it. We are doubting that this. The people will go through their system and say, no, it did not come from us. Now, the challenge, the thing is, you, the Supreme Court judge, what do you do? Do you now say, okay, no problem? You will quickly tell the person, in fact, you even prosecute the person for getting admission with forgery, false certificate. That is what you will do. You won't tolerate it. Now, how then do you, how then do you want Nigerians to live with the fact that number one person in Nassau Rock, false certificate? It's no more hearsay, no more allegedly. Nothing like allegedly, nothing like nothing. He forged it, a master forger. Even then, you the, even then, before this, uh, this, the university confirmed what everybody has been thinking, he said if they release it, it will damage his reputation irreparably, which is true. So, sometimes, you know, when they mention this law, this law, I look at it, I said, I don't know. What, what, English, what English language are you going to speak to tell us Nigerians tomorrow that the certificate wasn't forged? How do you determine forgery? How do you prove forgery? Article and the Obedia, what the case before the Supreme Court tomorrow is that Tinubu forged the certificate he gave to INEC. That is the main issue tomorrow. Now, what you people should be saying is, how do we know this certificate is, for, is forged? Where is it from? Chicago State University. There is no university in the world that can prove it, except Chicago State University. The question should have been, have you been there? Yes. What did they say? They said they didn't give, issue it. Then Tinubu, are you doubting it? Why didn't you take them to court? You didn't people, because if it's me, if you doubt my certificate and the university denies it, I take them to court. But Tinubu, did you, are you taking Chicago State University to court? No. Which means you are sure you did, you forged it. Now, so, so, and, so, um, the Supreme Court justices, what are you going to do? Are you still going to be saying uh, this or that? Because that was what he submitted. You see, if he had forged Chicago State University, but the one he submitted is a secondary school certificate he did not forge. That's a different thing because everything based on what did you give to INEC. We don't care whether you attended the 1 million universities. The particular one you gave to INEC is what the, the people are talking about. So the justice of the Supreme Court, you have to look at this thing. You are also on trial. There is no, I don't, I'm not a lawyer and I'm not aspiring to be. I'm not even a judge and there can be because I don't want to. But common sense tells me that if I forge a check saying it is from Niger Watch, I take it to a bank and so one, one reason or the other, they are suspecting it. They got back, they get back to Niger Watch and say, please tell us, uh, did you approve of this money? Is your check? He said, no, 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 this check is not from me. That ain't it. It cannot be cashed. It cannot, in fact, I will be prosecuted. So that is forgery. That is, I don't see, there's no, nobody can teach me common sense. You can't. You may teach me advanced law, but common sense, no. This is pure common sense. It has to do with morals. Now we get a criminal certified, waiting for you to certify tomorrow. How will you go down in history? However, I must say this. You see, sometimes people might not say anything. It doesn't mean they are stupid. I will tell Supreme Court justices, whatever Nigeria sees us from tomorrow, let them take, or the day after, let them take. But whatever happens from the day after tomorrow must be located in what happens tomorrow. That's what I'm trying to say. Tomorrow is 26th. So whatever happens in Nigeria after 26th, going forward, must be located on what happened on 26th. So let them, let them take it easy. We are a laughing stock. Some of us, our interest is not because we want to be president. No. My interest is not because I'm going to take look for a job or I want my person to get in, get me a job. No, no, no. My interest is that when you come out of any airport, after you with your hard-earned money, you, bought, you buy a ticket. 
when you tender that document past Nigerian passport, I don't want people to bring me down. That's what they call dignity. The white men, I mean, I lived in England, I studied here. I've interacted with the Welsh, the Scottish, the Irish, and the English. I learned that an Englishman can give you his limousine. Say, do you want it? If he doesn't, say, you can have it. But the moment they find out that you look down on them, or that their dignity, you don't uphold it, they feel like dying. In fact, they can do anything to you. It is here I learn what they call dignity is much more important than anything. The Englishman is not moved by money. An English lady once told me that here in England, we don't respect people because of what they wear. We respect people because of what comes out of their mouth, from their brain. What does that mean? When you have the past Nigerian passport, I don't want people to keep me, just look at me as if, I'm, as, as if, as if my body is covered with fecal material. As if maybe I'm smelling while I'm not, just because of passport. Which, if I go back and bring another passport of another country, they will say, oh yeah, welcome, this way, you pass. But because you showed the Nigerian passport, people like Abike Dabiri can never speak now. They can never talk. These are the people that we tell you Nigeria is this. They can never talk. The damage that Tinubu has caused Nigeria can never be wiped for generations to come. But... Tomorrow we can say no to this. Is he the best Nigeria can afford? Is he the best of us? Tinubu is not the best of Nigeria. So why put him there? He is even the worst example. Which means Nigerians will go, will go as far as the United States to go and forge degree. So the universities in Nigeria is not enough. We now go as far as the United States to go and forge certificate. And even had the temerity to even be saying... Please don't release it. It will die. Well, for what? Can you imagine the nonsense Nigeria will go through? Every Nigerian professional, no matter who you are, you must go. You 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 must be humiliated. Sometimes the white people are not like us. They don't make noise. They don't talk. They they Thank will you. look at you, they will look at you and keep quiet. Say this night behind you. They say this Nigerian. Say they will every. In fact, somebody told me in London. He said the way they know Nigerians, every Nigerian has got a master's degree. He's from Uganda. He said every Nigerian, ah, they've all got a master's degree. It's a shame. Look at the way they rate us. Now, Antinubu has added a heap of salt into injury. Please, you are not justice of the Supreme Court. Say no to no, just because of those kids in kindergarten from CKC, King's College, or wherever, government college all over Nigeria, studying federal government colleges. Because of them, wipe out this shame from Nigeria. So that this man will, will consign to the dustbin of history than going around, say this is Nigerian president, already he forged his certificate. And we kept quiet. Tomorrow we are going to look for an international job with a Nigerian passport. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Augustine. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's already around the corner. It's around the corner. So let's see how it goes tomorrow. Um, I'm even thinking that I shouldn't even come and try tomorrow, to be honest. I don't want to be on air to receive all these things. I don't know. Um, let me call on the next person. Madam Amen Bright, thank you very much. Please give us your final submission. Five minutes. All right, David. Thank you again. Thank you, ma'am. What I will say is that uh, thank you. Uh, what I have to say, just a little contribution also, as I always do, I will say Tinubu is a thief. He has stolen our mandate, as our mommy, that's what I said. It's like a man who has stolen another small wife. So he will pay for it. As I've earlier said, that's it. Whatever, whenever, whatever he has done, forcing himself to be our president, that's it. He will never have peace. That's it. That's what I will say. I will tell our Nigerians, they say, God, we are ask, asking God, 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 help us. God have helped us. God have be, God give us everything. Our hand. He said, my children are not lazy. I will bless the work of your hand. Let us go and face Tunubu. Wake up, Nigeria. Wake up. Thank you, Mr. Evis. I'm, I'm okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Evis. That's all. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Um, before I call on the next person, I'd like to quickly um, 
ask please press on that like button my people we have about two to go we're rounding up shortly so let me call on uh, um okay i think we have just one to go because um let me call on uh, mr alex mr alex you are the last person on the panel thank you very much my brother for being there with me throughout uh, this journey you know i want you to know that i'm very 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 proud of you you've been there you were supporting uh, mr alex is here before he speak you know this man was with wiki okay yes now. Yeah. he was he was with wiki from the beginning i convinced him that his peter will be please support me and he supported me he stood with me till now in the likes of uh, madam uh, uh, rita my, my mother iris finance uh, mother of all mommy diaspora many more although some people like what they talk for sure say that by slide along the way it's a normal thing that's human being you cannot really blame them you know that's life but this man mr alice is still here with me it doesn't mean that i've been perfect all through the whole journey and i've never portrayed myself to be perfect i want to say mr alice thank you my brother thank you so much go ahead speak yeah. to us Thank you for your flowery sentences, Mr. Najawash. I should be the one thanking you for standing out. Before you emerge into the social media cinematography, Edo State was known for all sorts of nefarious activities like prostitution, courtism, you know, scam. But when you came, even on the social media, people look at Edo State at the time, um, uh, it's all about saga and saga fighting themselves, eating themselves up. But when you came, you brought a new narrative. I saw a Benin man doing what I could not do, do what Napoleon could not do. So the, the best I could do was to stand by you because I, I tested you and I had to trust you because you fought for the helpless. You fought long grabbing to a standstill. 90%, you fought a those state government. You brought them on their knees. So the day I actually, you, you, you totally end my respect. This is a little diversion. It's good to be good because history will always judge us. The Edo State government, it was all over the news. They passed a law. When the full and activities, the killing spray was everywhere. That 20% of arable land in the Ruga, you know, um, uh, Ruga activities, every 20% land in every village, in every local government should be given to full and men in spite of the killing spree that took place. But you mobilized and your team and at those state people worldwide and our friends. Overnight, we did uh, a resistance protest. At this, I mean, the uh, uh, the state House of Assembly, I can never forget this. The speaker came out, Marcos, Marcos Onobo, and promised that the bill is going to be kicked out. It was already prepared just for the governor to assent it. Then it will be a law. That would have been a big problem. So it was you and the Edo State Civil Rights um, Society that fought that job. And today, Edo State is one of the least states or the least affected states with the full and activities across board in the Buhari administration. I mean, the killing spray and the kidnapping and the evasion. So Niger was, since then, I've, I've learned to trust you. I've learned to support you. I've learned to also give you my strength and my talent with the little I can to support a fellow um, uh, tribal man who is fighting for the whole country. So thank you, Nigerwash. And finally, let me go go to my submission. Are these people really seeing the dwindling economy? Are they seeing the currency naira to dollar? Oh, bless you, my brother. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Are the House of Red, the Senate, PTP, APC, Labour Party, y y y MPP, whatever they call themselves, are they seeing the the way the economy is doing, especially our currency. Are they thinking about our refinery? Even the Supreme Court justice or justices or judges they call themselves, are they seeing these things? Are they seeing the embarrassments? Multinationals, big companies are, are, are on a mass exodus out of the country. Are they seeing how, how the giant of Africa it's not even an ant anymore. That's been reduced to nothing. Thank you, Madam Nothing Rita. of Africa. I, I, I don't understand. 
So for me, the, the, the Supreme Court, I don't trust them, but I know, I know doctors will tell you, this is what, this is what, go and do this and come back. Try this after three days. From my political laboratory, I know an implosion is coming. Something is coming across board. Something is coming. You cannot continue to starve people or deceive people forever. Are they, are they even thinking about our international image? Are they thinking about this? The wicked, the, the wickedness or the heartlessness of our leaders. Gentlemen and ladies, I adjure the Supreme Court. If they want to deliver a fair judgment on Peter Obi and Atiku submissions, if they, if they want to continue with Tunubu's millions of dollars, allegedly they've taken, so be it. But I know when the doomsday come, it will not spare anybody who, who is evil. It, it's going to come like a flood. When I say we are coming, I, I just mean that anywhere it starts from, because we cannot continue like this. I'm not calling for war, but I'm just telling you, the people who have to react, they must react. They must react. Do you know the price of oil now? We, we are even hearing that the petroleum dealers, they, they want to peg it at 1,000, although they came out to debunk it. Okay. Obviously, obviously, before before January 4th, we'll go to 1,000. You know how it is in every Christmas. They'll create artificial scarcity, and they'll shoot it up, and it will stay there at 1,000. And Naira would have been approaching 2,000 Naira to a, to a dollar. Pounds will go into 3,000. Do you mean do you mean for do you, do you mean by January or, or or next month? I'm not an economist. I'm not a forecaster. I'm just hypothesizing. No, I'm just yeah. I'm just. Uh, Let's just say do do it week by week. Just week. By week. <laughs> God. <You don't, laughs> See, oh my, it's such a shame. So we don't have a vocal senator. We don't have a vocal House of Rep member who can take who can take the assembly by storm. Like we used to have in the days of Kibo Kadibo. May so rest in peace. Little wonder he was he was taken out. So we don't have people, li, li, people who are who are um, what I would call opposition in I mean in the masses. People who stood against government in the past. Where are they? This the same senator that is um, fighting so hard to have their solve. Have their jeep everywhere. Is 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 it the one you are calling to come and help us? Niger watch those days. You hear like three or four senators are saying no to no to a passenger. You hear that three or four senators are saying no to Yaradua. Eighteen senators are standing against good luck. Where are the activism? Remember, in, just, just, in, just to add, just a less one, one 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 second. Just to add, I remember in those days, Professor Osaremen Osumbo, former professor of law, university. Exactly. Of he was the senator representing a do central. Or Kadibo will say, let him speak. After speaking, he said, How can, who, who are you to speak when a professor of law has ruled? Or Kadibo will say, there it ends. They will be clapping. So go and look for Professor Sumbo. These are the people. They interpret the constitution at the floor of the Senate. Exactly. When he must have spoken, I remember Kadibo saying, people were saying, no, no, Kadibo, who again will speak when a professor of law in this Senate, in this Senate chamber has explained everything to us? Who again? Are you a professor of law? Everybody will start laughing and clapping. That is where my you brother, have seen it. My brother, let me tell you where some of my passion came from. As a 400 level student, as at 1999, we in 2000 we visited um, the National Assembly to observe a to observe a section. It was an arranged uh, what's it called excursion because as a political science student, we 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 have excursions. What I saw, it was it was fire for fire, bill for bill. Counter, you know, counter, counter explanation across board. We went to the rep session, the same thing. Intellectuals, it was bustling with ideas. People stood against the executive. People stood against the judiciary. The judiciary stood against them. They were acting on the real checks and balances, which is the major principles of democracy. They will not put an illiterate, illiterate in supreme. Right. In, uh, in, in a so, who, can, who, so, who cannot debate? Who cannot so, I even hope, address I hope, us? I hope ah. the, uh, let, me, let me just round up. I, I hope the colonels, the, the, the people of the justice or the judges, I, I hope they are listening. I know they are all on social media. Don't even deceive yourself. I know you are listening, your wives are listening, your children are listening. I cannot say the hope of this country 
is on your shoulders, but actually we now know there's no country. Since an Igbo man can be declared a president, since beavers can be switched off on an Igbo man, telling me a Benin man that, I, that my son cannot aspire to be a president. Because after they are through with the Igbos, they're going to face us, who, whoever they are. So we're going to have to find a way to boot ourselves out of this fraudulent amalgamation called Nigeria that's expired in 2014. So Nigeria, Wash, thank you very much. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Um, let me call on the next person quickly. Thank you, everyone. Right there. Press on the like before you leave. We are still here. We have uh, One Love with us. We have Mandarita with us. But I would like to call her One Love first. One Love, thank you very much for joining us. Good evening to you. You have five minutes. Please talk to us. Good evening, Mr. Elvis, and to everyone in the panel. I promise I won't take uh, uh, more than five minutes. Yeah, I, I will just uh, keep to your promise or keep to your promise. <laughs> yeah, de definitely, definitely. I was just uh, listening to you and I saw uh, your caption there. It says, uh, C uh, CJ Ariwala, please. I don't know why you guys are begging him. You know, I don't know why, why you are having please. They're supposed to do their job. You know, they are supposed to do the right thing. All right. Are you done, One Love? Okay. We lost you there, I guess, because <laughs> you were still talking, but you are muted now. The, oh, reason, why, the reason why... Yeah, we can hear you now. The reason oh, why we have to add sorry, please... I think it, it's my network. Sorry. Okay. The reason why we have to add please to it, my brother, is that we've, we've been hoping that these people know their job. They should do it. They are not doing it. No, they, they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't know their job. Or uh, either they know their job, or I mean, we we've seen what happened since uh, February twenty fifth and, and September sixth, uh, and now you, there's no way they can convince us that they don't know what they are doing. You no, know, basically they know what they are doing. You know, they got some uh, dollars from from Adbado and they just want to shut up everything to make sure the law doesn't prevail. No, they better the constitution before our very own eyes on, on, on February 25th and September 6th. So for me, at this point, look, I'm not an Igbo. I, I told you before, my dad is a do. My, my mom is Yoruba. I, at this point, I just believe Nigeria is not going to work. We, we all just have to go our own separate ways figure, or figure out something that is going to work for if we want to have a country. But what we have right now, it, it's, it's not a country. You understand? But the, the, the situation where you have uh, uh, um, uh, uh, thousands of people going out there to vote for the right person, and they just twisted the constitution before, before our very own eyes, and they expect us not to react and do something. And I, I just think, though, I, I'm sorry, I know people, people can be religious and emotional, but I just think at this point, this, this is showing again, over and over again, that we just have to bury this whole idea of religion, uh, uh, Muslim, Christianity or whatever it is, because this thing is not working. God is not going to come from, from heaven or from whatever I believe that is to come and do something for us. We just have to take these people by the bull's horn and go right by the same power that they are measuring up to us. Because at this point, we've, we've tried to follow the democratic process, if, 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 if at all there is a democra democracy in the country. We've tried to follow the due process, try to be obedient, try to do things the normal way. But it, these guys are not normal, so you cannot use normality to, 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 to try to fight abnormality. It's not going to work. You have to go the same way. You know, I, this is a challenge where you don't allow a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of words to be used. But if we have to go that route and fight these people, we have to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm here speaking from the United States. I know how many, how many times people fought here. And it's more than 100 or something times when I counted. Like these people fought and fought and fought until they finally came together and said, this is how we want to be governed. They, they went to the independence or they put pen to paper and said, this is our constitution. What we have right now is not a constitution. We have a paper that was put together by a group of military guys and they decide how every president is to be elected or how every president is... Is, 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 is to come to be from any region they, they, they prefer. And let's just say something. I'm, my dad is from Edo. I don't think I will ever become a president of Nigeria because apparently either you are counted as you are from nowhere or you don't count or because there are this group of people from uh, the north who believe they are supposed to rule everything, they are supposed to govern everything, they are supposed to supersede over every single affair 
of Nigeria. Again, it is repeating before our very own eyes that we don't have a country. And we just have to figure a way out, figure out something that to have a, 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 a place that, 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 that we are going to call a, a, a country with the most populous black nation has, we have to figure out something different. What we have right now is not working because apparently we've not been able to come together in unity. We all have to go our separate ways. That's what I am going to be standing for from right from today. Because I, I, tomorrow, whether you like it or not, I don't see any way they are going to rule against Tinubu. It's not happening. I'm sorry. If, if anybody is optimistic, I am not. Because it, it, they said insanity is doing one thing over and over again. You are expecting different results. It's not going to happen. These guys know what they are doing. You know, I, 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 I don't know. We just have to figure out something. If you are from any region, if, if anybody who can come together, should come together. If they can, then let them all go their own way. Because what we are having right now and what we've had since 1963 or 1960 is not working. It has not worked. I don't think it's going to work. So the idea of Nigeria, for me, is gone. And it's, it's completely gone out of my equation. Sorry. Other than that, I just think we should probably try to be, you know, discussing something else on how we are going to have a different, a different country or a different, a different uh, 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 state or whatever it is. But Nigeria is not a country. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Najawash. Thank you, thank you, uh, one love. God bless you, my brother, uh, my Do brother right there. God bless you. It's my first time knowing that uh, your dad is from uh, Do. Yes, uh, Mr. Alex is right. You know, with the way things are going on now, they're stopping that Iboma cannot be a president. Then <laughs> what happened to Iboma? So let's move on. Thank you very much, Stella Ima Sevedo, for the super chat. May God bless you. I appreciate this. Thanks for your encouragement. Thank you very much. All right, let me call on the last person on the panel, which is Madam Rita. Madam Rita, it's good to have you on the panel. Good evening to you, ma. Please talk to us. Good evening, no domo sas. So all the men in the panel, I don't know if there's a lady in the panel. Good evening, mommy. Well, Rita, where have you been? Why are you? Because... Yes, mm. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, Mr. Elvis, God bless you. Mr. Elvis, I don't have any speech to give you now to show how grateful I am for you. Uh, but I'll say thank you. Maybe this speech will come in one of those days. Uh I know I, I was on in the beginning. I was kind of like off for a while, uh, but I'm back. And Thank I want to, so I just want to leave one in. Okay. This is briefly a message to the legislators, uh, the ones, the slaves of Bodilon Avenue, the slaves of the Guinean uh, apparition in Asso Rock, you know, and uh, the orangutans and the rest. And those of them that think that they can disrupt this channel by trying to, be a frog well this discussion we're having we're not having a pity party here we are not having a pit at least i'm not having a pity party we are alive we are strong we are able this is not a pity party for whatever it is that they will announce tomorrow this is a party of victory dele farotimi said thank god that you know we we thank god that he has brought someone like Tifnibu Adekunle to the fore because it has, you know, the emergence of such an entity has exposed a lot of people, a lot of organizations, a lot of traditional rulers who have been a, um, who have been parasites to the freedom of Nigeria. Yes, who have been parasites. We all know what parasite does. In case people don't know what parasite means, a parasite goes to the host and takes out the nutrients from that host, sucks them dry, suck them dry that they'll be so lean, they're sick, they can't move, they can't eat, they can't sleep. So this host now, the host, the queen bee, is Tifnubu Adekunle, the one that lives in Bodilon Avenue, the one that calls himself uh, whatever of Lagos. And he's now an apparition in Asorok. He's the host. So he has a lot of parasites. He has exposed the parasites that have been eating us alive. Not dead. He has been eating and just eating us alive. So that's one good thing. And also, we are victorious because we have a channel like Niger Watch and a great man, a good guy, 
like Mr. Nigel, Mr. Elvis Edigin, that has succeeded in using his platform, an influential guy like this, using his platform, you know, to teach, educate, and inspire people. We can never be the same again. They say when you have a relationship with somebody or a relationship with an entity, you, even if you leave, you will never be the same again. Those people, those dedicated supporters, whether they are um, supporters in secret, supporters in, in the open, or supporters who have come and gone, or supporters who are sitting on the fence, or supporters who are traitors, your life has not been the same since you've been in Ninja Watch. So therefore, we are victorious. I don't want to go to Peter Obi, it is, it's, but there's a whole lot of speech I want to talk about that, but that's for another day. So this is not a pity party now to all those slaves of Bodilon Avenue and uh, the apparition of uh, at Asorok and also the orangutans. We, this is not a pity party. Maybe you think you're celebrating. No, all of us that 80%, I would say, of us here right, in diaspora, I can, eat, I can eat 100 times a day if I feel like. You know, there's 24 hours electricity. I have Wi-Fi. I have, the, you know, my service provider is working well. So what else again is, is, is left in life? What else? I'm comfortable. I can go out at 3 a.m. and come back by myself. I'm not even feel afraid. But where you are living now, I'm talking to those in Nigeria. Not, I don't want to go to the, 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 the blinded bats that are in diaspora that are supporting this evil entity. You that is in Nigeria that is supporting. Before you eat, you have to shout, uh, uh, is a chair, is a chair, as Mr. My brother Alex used to say, or oh, Megida, as they say, the nuts. Like, ah, you'll be shouting. You will shout 5,000 times. You will run on the floor. You'll be running with your cars and be shouting Megida before they, they fling maybe 1,000 naira to you. That 1,000 naira, you can't even buy one uh, small cup of uh, uh, Gary to eat now. You don't even have car to even say you are going to buy foil at 600 naira or 680 naira. You don't. Uh -huh. So you are suffering in the sun. You don't even have electricity to have AC to even buy fan. Even uh, I better pass my neighbor generator. You cannot even afford the fuel. You don't even have car, so you can't even afford fuel for, for I better pass my, 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 my neighbor generator. So you are the one suffering it. So if it's your choice, I'm talking to the, the, the so-called slaves of body law avenue that are residing in Nigeria and they're listening to me now. The money that they gave you, it will finish. In fact, it has finished. You and I know that money has finished. Even if they want to give you Lamborghini right now, you cannot afford the repairs of the maintenance of Lamborghini. You cannot afford a, a fuel for that big SUV that they are giving you. You cannot afford it. In fact, if you think you can afford it for a while, before the year runs out, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, I'm telling you. And by the way, once you drive a car out of the dealership, that, that, that car has no value anymore. And guess what? They say the house you build today will be the old house. The house you build today will be the old house of tomorrow. So if you think you are driving one uh, small car that they gave you, you are very shallow. In fact, I'm sorry for you. Your mental state is not even functioning. I'm talking to those people in, in that are support, the slaves of body law in Nigeria right now. So therefore, this is not a pity party. It's a victorious party because we are all being aware. Our lives are not the same again, whether you like it or not. And um, we know that for the legislators, like Mr. Alex, my brother was talking about, you know, you don't see people like Chiba Kadibo and blah, blah, blah. You cannot give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. These people that you think that you say, okay, they won't have to... They don't sleep before. They have all sold their soul and sworn allegiance to dark, dark, malevolent entities already. So they know they are sold already. In the night that they carry pots naked and whatever it is they do, they've done it. I remember many years ago, that time it was this man, Benga Daniels, that was governor of Ogun State. I remember there was a scandal. Mr. Nigel, watch, I've not started though. You're giving me two minutes. Okay. There was a scandal with uh, Ben Gard Daniels that uh, I think when he was governor of um, Ogun State. And what was the scandal? There was a group of commissioners and people he gave political offices. They showed them, this is a grown man, grown man. They showed them unclad, you know, they were swearing allegiance to something in the night. And because one of them kind of was not in agreement, they decided to show that particular one swearing allegiance. So therefore, we saw like the entity in Aso Rock. The one that lives in Bodilon Avenue, that is a Guinean, that's not even a Nigerian. The one that was INEX selected. 
many of these people walking around him they've done the same thing to him so they have no conscience they don't they have no we are the we are the like we are just like the ants that's crawling all over their body they don't even know where to scratch you cannot give what you don't have we are in a dictatorship right now corruption has evolved corruption has evolved in such a way that the days of okadibo Truba, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Truba Okadibo is gone. The days of, of the tenth, as, uh, I think the the tenth assembly like we have now. I don't know if it's the tenth or eleventh assembly now. Um, we don't have we don't have the likes of Dr. Tr uh, Truba Okadibo anymore. We don't. We don't even have the uh, the days of Justice uh, Oputa. The j the days of Justice uh, Weyasa is gone. It's gone. When something has evolved over time, either it's something for something good or something bad. In our case. It has evolved to something worse. If there's a word after worse, that's the stage we are in right now. So that's why I said they cannot give us what we are asking for. Those of them in the Labour Party who are in the National Assembly, Senate and House of Rep members, they, they, listen, they never had anything. They just stood on the shoulders of a great man, Peter DeRocco, be my president. That's what they did and they got that. However, because of the kind of country that we are living in, some of them don't even know that these people can be recalled. They don't know. But going forward, these four years that they will be there, eh? when they come back, <laughs> four years after, they will want to be in that same position now. May God give all of us long life. In fact, we are all going to have good, long, healthy lives to see the day that this so-called LP, I'm sure before then they will even switch because there are, there are merchants of switching to a political party or whatever. But what, whatever party that they switch to four years from now, we are all we have marked them already. They will not be voted in. They will not be voted in. So, Mr. Elvis, let me not be like I'm talking too much. I'm taking a lot of space. If I'm still here, I can still speak more. But um, this is not a pity party discussion. You know, we are continuing to educate people and we are not going to give up. And whatever comes out tomorrow, whatever the result out tomorrow, that's fine. That's fine, but we are not going to give up. Nigerians that are in Nigeria. I think they just need a little bit of spark uh, to remove the scales off their eye. Uh, or maybe, perhaps, you know, these people are desperate. They've probably done something, some sort of um, voodoo or something to just calm or, you know, water down, you know, the conscience of many Nigerians who, who, who will have stood up to speak, including the, legis the legislators, including them. So that is what I have to say for now. Thank you, Mr. Elvis. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, uh, Madam Rita, for your submission. God bless you. Um, let me call on Mr. Judin. Mr. Judin, you're just coming in now. We are riding up, so I'll still give you your five minutes. Good evening to you, sir. Please unmute yourself. Talk to us in five minutes. Good evening, my brother. Good evening, everybody. Um, all our panelists and our listeners uh, all over the world. Um, well, Honestly, the whole thing, uh, I mean, I've always been listening um, at the background and uh, commented, but uh, why I decided to show up now, because uh, uh, I know some of us still believe, or some Nigerians still believe, uh, perhaps let's give these people a chance that after four years, next time, uh, uh, you know, we will regroup and then we'll see how we can vote them out. But the truth of the matter is, there is no way in hell that if this people, if Agbado goes through or gets through by being confirmed by the judiciary and it goes through, it gets through this uh, period that come uh, the next election time, any Jupiter, no, no, there's just nothing that anybody can do that will make them not to still win. So, so it will be, in fact, confirmation tomorrow, which I don't pray it happen, but unfortunately, with everything that is going on already, it appears that it's going to happen. Sadly, I mean, it's sad to say that, but with that confirmation, it is just as good as confirming Tunumbu's eight years, if he will still be alive to that, uh, um, to that eight years. Because for anybody to imagine that uh, um, anybody can remove APC 
which is another another name for another name. For, in fact, I think the right name for that APC is Islamic Party of Nigeria. You know, if anybody that thinks is going to root out that is this Islamic Party of Nigeria, aka APC, that person is dreaming. So this time, I think we should just we should just, I mean, conquer our fear. This fear that we have. Every time you talk to people at home, the next thing that they, you know, begin to be read you, oh, come home, come back home and be at the front. What do you want us to do? Come back home, look at answers. The next thing they are referring to answer, look at what happened. This fear that we con that Nigerians have been gripped with, that Nigerians have been, you know, it's like everybody back home, they are they, they, they have this kind of fear that there's not this kind of fear that there's nothing at all they can do anymore. A fear of uh, total conquering by these uh, hoodlums that call, call themselves leaders in Nigeria. And because of that fear, they, can't, they believe they cannot do anything. They believe they are hopeless. They believe that, oh, let us move on. Some even, some even will tell you, well, uh, I just continue to you know, mind my business and they do what I can do to survive. There's nothing I can do. If you press any further, they get angry with you. I don't know if anything, any, anybody has been having this experience. They get mad at you for talking to them, letting them know what, you know, the step they can take. It's really unthinkable. It's really unthinkable to believe that judiciary, which all over the world, people believe is the last hope of a common man. But in that of Nigeria, it's rather the opposite. That the judges that went to school, many of them, their parents paid for their school tuition fee, and some of them even studied for free. They knew all they went through before they became um, judges or they passed out to become uh, lawyers and then elevated to that post of uh, being a, a Supreme Court judge. Now, they are not ashamed that somebody who never went to school is controlling them. They are bowing down for him. They are ready to do everything to, 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 to worship him, to make him to, to confirm his, you know, his, his, his leadership that is being acknowledged everywhere as illegitimate leadership, to confirm a drug addict, eh? a drug baron, to confirm a, a, a thief, somebody, an, an international criminal, criminal. To confirm that as a president of Nigeria, they are not ashamed because of the money they have collected. This is not this is no longer allegedly. These people have collected lots and lots of money in dollars. And that is why they can sell their country and the future of their own children and children to come. Perhaps they thought that, okay, the money they have collected, it will be enough for them to settle their children and their families abroad. So by the time they have, you know, done this evil and wickedness they want to, they have planned to do tomorrow, then they will jet out from Nigeria with their children and, and, and go to any other country, any country that they have, you know, bought house with houses with their stolen money. They think that will be the end. Well, we'll see. Time will tell. But they should, they should, not, um, they should not fail to understand that there's always expiring dates in everything under the, under the sun. There's always an end to every madness there is. So no matter where they will run with their family, after causing all this mayhem and afflicting all this pain to Nigeria, a time will come, a day, a day of reckoning will come. Even that place where they have run to, that, those places, those countries will reject them. The land upon which they, they, trade, they, they, will, they trade upon will reject them. And when that time comes, we will, we will laugh at them. Nigerians will laugh okay, at them. Thank we you. that laughs last will laugh best. We that laughs last will laugh best. So let thank them you. be. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Judin. Uh, God bless you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome, All sir. Right. Thank you. Um, Mother Busy Brains, you're just joining us now. We're about rounding up. So, but I'll still give you five minutes to talk to us so that we can round up. Thank you, man. Go ahead. Okay, Elvis. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And compliments of the day wherever everybody is on the panel and those um, who are watching, listening and in the comment section. It's been a couple of days battling with 
connection. It's been, uh, honestly, I see it as an attack. You know, I'm just calling to encourage us. I'm calling to say, yes, our hope has never been on the corrupt. The institutions that are all in place are not for us. They are against us. So we cannot even have our hope in a corrupt system and expecting that they will do the right thing because they will do the bidding of their own master. Our hope is in us. The moment we all realize that there is no savior, nobody from anywhere that is coming to save us, we are the ones that are saving ourselves, that are going to save ourselves. If we have always been the government of ourselves, where we are the ones that are our own water board, we are our own NEPA, we are our own security, we are our own hospital. Everything is on us. There is nothing that the state has done for us. We owe them nothing. So if we've always been our sole survivor, then why are we putting our faith in a system that has never shown us that they have in any shape or form been for us? They have never been for us. And that is the reason why we are always in this pit hole. The moment we realize that we, the, our destiny is in our hands, it is already in our hands. We have everything we require to make a success of getting that Nigeria back, that the Nigeria that we deserve. The, Niger the Nigeria we have today, we don't deserve it, but it, we can only deserve it if we allow it to happen. But we are not allowing it to happen. Tomorrow, the judiciary will go and do their own. But I want to have faith in the Nigerians, those that are awake, that tomorrow is the beginning of a new struggle, the beginning of actualizing a new Nigeria. And I also want to let you know, Guy Elvis, it might seem like they are winning. They are not winning. We have made great and mighty strides to be where we are today. A lot of people's eyes have woken up. The only way Nigerians can wake up is when the system shows them that they are bastards. And the system is doing a very good job of showing Nigerians that they are bastards. And for that, it is waking a lot of them up. A lot of us were having so much faith in the in in our in our churches, in our inst faith institution of faith, not knowing that they have been stationed to continue to enslave us, so that our slave masters will continue to ride on. Now we are we are seeing our eyes are opening. Those who have positioned themselves as timber and caliber men of wisdom people that we are to look up to. Now our eyes have opened. The scales have fallen off. We now see that they do not wear clothes. We've now seen their nakedness, you know? So it is a thing of great joy that we now know the kind of people, these institutions that have been stationed around to continue to keep us in bondage. We should be equipped with this knowledge with this exposure and fight the, 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 the next fight, fight the battle in any shape and form to resist the occupation of our land by the few. I just want to say, like I was saying on the, when I called, we cannot be able to achieve this Nigeria that we want to achieve when we are, dis, when we are not united. See, for people like Tony Africa who have a thing against the northerners, keep aside your anger right now. If you want to get the cabal out, 
Keep whatever you have against the northerners right now. Close your eyes. Be blind to ethnicity. Be blind to religion. And be focused on the purpose. As long as the other man on the other aisle, the, the, the man from the north or the east or from the west or from the Niger Delta is of the same goal that they want to have a better Nigeria, unite in that purpose. Let there be unity of purpose and go for it. Once we have unity in purpose, we will overcome this. We will overcome this because we all know that we, we are going to be our brother's keeper in this time, in this moment. So that when we go out there, nobody will be thinking, ah, this person is not going to come out because I'm feeling, let our words show that unity. Let the things we say, the things we do show that unity. There are many people who are of Northern extraction, who might not be on this platform, but who detest, who detest the, 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 the colonization of our, of our resources by this so-called wicked cabal. But when they hear sentiments that are coming out from the mouth of people like Tony, you know, how do you expect them to feel? There are good people on every divide. Let us be united in purpose. Let us not give the other side a weakness to say, oh, after all, they, 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 are, they are lumping me with them. And then on the other side, they are lumping them. They, they don't, they, they are not standing with them. You that are talking, people that have, those that have gone, I've heard the people that were in the Abuja that were standing shouting, were majority from the North, that they do not come on platforms like this. It's because they might not know that there's a platform like this. You would be surprised that there are their own platforms that they go to. And they have the same purpose like you and I. Let our words be unifying. Let us be talking about the cabal, the people. Let us not be talking about the, the, a northerner, a, 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 a southerner, an easterner. Because the evil is from all these places. They have gone and congregated in Abuja and have enslaved us. And then they are using those technicalities to divide us. Nigerians, wake up and be wise. If you bring a broom, one strand of broom, you fold it Thank into two, it will snap easily. Please round up. Thank you. Bunch you. them. If you bunch it, if you bunch the brooms together, it will be very, very difficult. It will be impossible for you to break. Nigerians, let us unite. Thank you very much, Oga Elvis. Thank you. Thank you, Mother Busy Brains. May God bless you. I'm happy that you came to the panel. Thank you. Uh, give us a mandate, uh, my brother. I guess uh, your audio is better now. Uh, please, I'd like you to give us. Uh, to give us. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, hopefully, you guys can hear me clearly. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, quiet. Quiet. Yeah, sorry about the the first Ulabalu, Makaba uh, dance. That happened earlier it was also some, uh, some walkie alcoholic macabre dance in the office and actually get all of that to happen but now they have been pulled because the hour of the day is over and then now we have to drive home and then we can start this macabre dance here as the supreme court of nigeria is about to go naked don't take me for mr alice because i'm not mr alice this is just give us a mandate uh, I was, I was just trying to take over my brother. If he's not here, I can speak on his behalf. So get ready as we watch the Supreme Court of Nigeria pull up their gowns and their aprons and whatever they put on to dance naked tomorrow. They're about to bury the country and then they're about to, to just put everything into the sea of uh, forgetfulness. But remember that Dati Baba Men, my vice president, told them, he told the Chief Justice, Ariwo, you that do not swat in Bola Ahmed because 
he is not the duly elected president of Nigeria. The person that won the election is Mr. Peter Gregory Obi. I'm from Southwest. I mean, from Oyo State, the same place where that evil man called Aribo Oyo came from. And I'm here today, I'll be here tomorrow, I'll be here forever to stand with Mr. Peter Gregory Obi because I have seen in him that he is the only man that stands as a saint when it comes to the political landscape of Nigeria. So all of a sudden, the Supreme Court have decided to dance, macabre dance, naked tomorrow, just to bury their family and themselves in the sea of shame and show of destruction. Nigerians, 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 anywhere you are, both home and diaspora, the worst is about to be gone. So get yourself ready. Get yourself ready because the worst is about to be done. But my question to you is, seeing all of this that happened today, I mean, I was just, I mean, I was in the office, left my, 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 my kids' um, lunch in my car. And then I remember that my wife called me, oh, he didn't drop their lunch and then I had to go back to their school. So on my way going, I opened my, my Twitter and I saw that Supreme Court is giving a judgment tomorrow. Honestly, people, if I tell you how I feel like for for like five, ten minutes, I just like, what's going on here? Am I actually in this world or um, somewhere else? This same Supreme Court, this same elderly man, this same shameless evil man told us that judgment will be served November the 8th. Uh, sorry, November the 2nd. Now I'm on the air, I'm, a, I'm on a Twitter space right now with um, Mindset. And Maxwell is saying, you see Maxwell that was harassed in the court was saying there that he had pre-heard that that judgment will be tomorrow, only that he now want to put it on his time on, on his on his Twitter because there is no document backing that. And this old evil man that enjoy free education, that enjoy scholarship, that enjoy the best of our country, have decided to dance naked tomorrow. They have decided to run mad tomorrow. How come second change to 25th of October? Nigerians, we are about to see the worst. We are about to see the worst in the history of Nigeria. One, the man in Asorok is not the president. The man in Asorok is a forger of certificates. The man in Asorok did not win to the president of Buja. The man in Asorok did not win Abuja. The man in Asorok had 460,000 US dollars because of drug. All right, um, give us a mandate. We lost you there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we lost you there, but we need to round up now. I want to use this opportunity to thank everybody. Uh, give us a mandate. Lied thank you. Thank on the oath. You didn't give us a mandate. Your network is bad right now. We lost you again. Your network is bad now. I'm not sure you're even hearing me. All right, uh, give us a minute, let's round up. You know, you're still not talking, so that's fine. I'll just, uh, and I cannot even mute you. That means your network is very, very terribly bad. Okay, thank you very much, my people. I appreciate every one of you for your time with us. Uh, may God bless you all, every one of you that joined the panel today. Thank you for those of you that called into the show today. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all. Uh, those of you that supported the channel today, may God bless you all my people. I'd like to recap again on Bella and Naomi. Thank you very much, Madam, Mr. Kennedy Egariwa. Thank you very much, sir. Michael Oganamaro. Thank you, uh, Bonaventure. Thank you very much, Clement uh, Ojo. Thank you, Masakare, Mr. Joseph Oji, and Stella Imasemedo. May God bless every one of you. Thank you so much, my wonderful people. I appreciate you all. I would like to sorry, Mr. Uh, Mr. Elvis. I guess my network was uh, malfunctioning. Uh, I mean, sorry uh, uh, to cut you. Tomorrow we we'll just we we'll wait and see. We, I mean, I'll be here. I mean, you know me. I'll be here, um, watching to see what's going to happen. 
hopefully I get a little sleep tonight and then we come again to the field tomorrow to come see yeah. how they want to dance. Yeah. But Nigerians, please, we have not lost the battle. We are still in this battle. We are we have won. And let's decide what we will do, do to them tomorrow if the case does not go our own way. Thank you very much. Have a blessed night. God bless you, my brother. I appreciate you always. Thank you. Um Thank you very much, my people, on the comment section. Mother for all, Mommy Diaspora. Thank you very much, Mommy. I appreciate you always. Madam Ame Bright, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please, 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 please. Mommy Diaspora, thank you very much, Mama. Thank you very much, Mama, for all that you've done, releasing Mr. Elvis and his family for us. Thank you. I wish I can see your face. And I can just prostrate for you as a Yoruba boy. But either way, I live virtually. I prostrate for you. Thank, thank you, you, Mama. God bless thank you, Mama. We love you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much, Nanko. God bless you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Money Olagbeya. Thank you very much, Madam Tony Africa. Thank you. I appreciate you, all my people. Uh, I can see who oh, again, them, Michael Ganemaro. You know, thank you, Miss Tutu. Thank you very much. I appreciate every one of you. Peggy Modi, thank you very much. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, David, I can see you right there. Tammy, thank you. Uh, we've come to the end of this broadcast. You guys um, look forward to us tomorrow. I'm thinking, but I don't know. But let's see how it goes. Uh, fingers crossed by God's grace. So we'll follow up with what follow is going to be happening. Oh, sorry. What, 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 time, what time is the it, is it court case? What time are, they, are you going to be online? It should be 9 a.m. I don't know. But we'll follow up. But we'll follow up. Okay. We'll stand by. We'll stand by. Okay. Thank you, sir. We'll stand by. You know, we'll stand by. So everybody should just stand by and let's see how, he's, how it goes. Um, like I said, uh, Augustine, uh, you wanted to say something? Yeah, just to thank you, um, Niger Watch. Thank you for, for providing this facility or this infrastructure. Like I said some time ago in the past, a time will come when the story of what led up to today and tomorrow will be told. I think your position has been secured, whether they like it or not. People must mention Niger Watch. It's okay. In life, people take decisions. Probably the effect may not be felt now, but a time will come. People, one or two people may, may be sitting down somewhere discussing social media contribution to democracy in Nigeria or to dictatorship or who opposed it. Then we mentioned the role you played, what you did, who 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 is who, how you did it. Or you even say it as part of your uh, like, uh, your journey of life when you started Niger Watch, happy to be emerged on the scene, the role you played, how you discuss it every day. All these things will be history, but thank God it's a good history on your part. So keep it up, not to worry. That nothing spoil, as they say. You did your best. You saw what others didn't do, couldn't see, and you led them to say, look, let's go this way. And people did. Haruna Goro is proud of you, and the rest of them. Um, uh, what is the name? Uh, this lady from Edo State, Aisha Yusuf, the author of Niger Watch, Delo Faro Timi has been here, Professor Zekom has been here, and the host of others, you know them, so it's a credit. It's a credit. You know, in Nigeria is a jungle where, we, where they celebrate thieves and criminals. So anybody who happens to be white or maybe not like them, they may think that uh, the person is being wayward. You are not. You did the right thing. That is, I'm still saying it because no matter what, no matter how, no matter the inducement, provocation, or uh, whatever it is, do not always stand on the right side of history. Always stand because history will judge. There are many billionaires. My father, late father, used to tell me, my son, do you know there have been billionaires even before the death of Christ? People having money. He said, but do you know them? But people remember Jesus Christ because of the role he played. Everybody, every generation. I don't know who Christ is, but I, I, if you are born, oh, Christians are followers of Christ. Christ is a Christian are followers of Christ. That is meaning of Christian, Christianity. You follow Jesus Christ, his teaching. 
was he a billionaire? No, but there are people that were billionaires before him. So who remembers them? Isaac Newton is a scientist. He discovered the law of gravitation in physics. Today he's being remembered. Emma Aguali might not be Bill Gates, but the, one of the fathers of internet. And so on and so forth. So good name, we say it in Ebo, is greater than money. In this case, you've made a good name. If this is what it means to go and study film and media, and you come out, you do it this way, not accepting money to come and falsify something, you've been under attack several times, not because of anything, but why don't you accept money from Agbadu and be like them, yet you, you turn down money. So all these things are what a man will put together and say, look, you've made a name for yourself. Somebody will hear this, thing. particularly when you say that you are born into politics in PDP, yet you look your father in the face and say, look, dad, you are my father, I'm proud of you, but I won't join your party. Do you know what that means? You told him that won't join your party. I better support P to be and because he's in me support P to be all the way. And you proved it. When you disagree with your father on principle, your father will be happy. As you are walking out, you say, Yes, I've got a son who can stand, who can hold his own anywhere he goes. And that is it. So that is your label. That is your achievement. Thank For you. you to, that is your achievement. So be proud of it. Forget about money. Money is only to solve a problem. It's, it's just a fleeting something. You t want one hand will touch it and give to the other. That is, you don't judge a man by wealth. You judge a man by the intellect. The decision you make, that's what people want to... Somebody like me, that's what I used to rate somebody. Money can be... You can use one naira, is it not two naira now, to play Lotto. Uh, Niger watch. You go to play, you go to Tesco, buy Lotto, play. Before you know it, 24 hours, 48 hours, they say, ah, you are now the star winner of a uh, so-so million pound. Ah, you are now a millionaire. But did you work hard for it? No. You didn't sweat for it. What happened? Just luck. So money can come through anybody. Not to talk of Agbado pushing drugs. But that idea to stand by the... So to see the right thing and say, evil is evil. Good is good. You reject evil. It means a lot. People might not see it. People might say, ah, how many houses? In the end, all these material things, we leave it here and die. We leave it here and go. Go, go and answer. Is that? Our... Yes, all these things, we will leave it. I mean, there's... who who is richer than M.K. Abiola? A man that is a billionaire in every major currency of the world. That's what Chubo Akadibo wrote in the Newswatch magazine. And he said, he said, Abiola is a billionaire in every currency of the world. Just pound is a billionaire. But where is Abiola today? Not that it, but just to tell us that this is a fleeting moment. Obasanjo did all his shenanigans. Today he's out. Today, so that's why some let us sometimes say, let's do this. Let's be honest. Why we all all of us are in the Western world because they do the right thing. They 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 think of the masses. They know evil. They keep it aside and they follow the good way. Why, why, why don't we do it in our own case? Everything is money. If there is no money, we go and print. If we can't get it, we print it in our houses and then bring out and dump and then feel that you are you they do they say you fly to Dubai tomorrow. They said, is it not one judge said he's going to pay prostate? You are going to abroad for prostate. Something you could do after your forty, you feel your prostate. You start measuring prostate. Start measuring. Prostate. That, that, that prostate. That's that's prostate. Same, that same judge. That same justice was the injustice during the appeal court during the appeal. Exactly. So is it not a shame? You fly where are you going? Oh, my prostate is worrying me. I'm going to UK or PSA prostate specific antigen. That's what you measure and you stage it. The the drugs is there. Is, is it not a shame? So everything is my Niger watch, everything is normal and I'm happy that despite being born with a silver spoon or at least a whatever, you do not show it. You still have to humble and then follow the right path. Ordinarily you should go be go follow your dad. To the party where his politics, you follow it, and then he will present you the way they do from hand to from son to daughter. I mean, from from father to son. Then they come. But you said no. You said Obi is on the scene. Daddy, I won't go there. PDP destroyed Nigeria indirectly. You are inducting your dad. Yet you did it. So he said that that is what that is your testimony. That is your testimonial. That is what you can say as your middle name. That you disagree on principle, even when you tell your dad no that they're not going to follow campaign for PDP. Forget about it. I'm going for P2B. And you convince those of us that have given up on Nigeria to follow you, and we keep coming here to analyze it. People might not know the, the point you've scored in life until a day we call you tech stock. But for now, 
thank you very much. I'm so happy to count you as a friend, which is very, very rare if you know my type of person. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Gassim. you. Thank you. Gassim. Give us a mother, mute yourself, please. Thank you. Thank you, Garcia. I appreciate you, sir. May God bless you. Um, I'm always happy to have you here. I learn from every one of you here every day. Nobody's perfect. Um, as I was, have opened our eyes. Uh, a lot of us have learned a lot from this particular channel. So I want to say thank you to every one of you. Thank you to all our panelists that have ever been on this panel. Thank you to every one of you that is calling to the show. Thank you to those of you on the comment session. I'm just grateful to have you all. Let's see how it goes tomorrow. Tomorrow is around the corner. So, uh, like I said, I still have that hope, but very, very slim. You know, the hope is very, very slim. So, let's see how it goes. Now, go and go bless all my people. Yes, have a good one. Have a good one. Yes, quiet. Yes, quiet. Just say this. You know, some, some days ago, we talked about um, this um, Eddie Day, Ejoko. <laughs> now, if you, if you pull, if you pull people's cassettes today, that song of the good motion that I was referring to, I don't know if you guys know the story. The well, cults if you, are, the, the cults if you, if you, if, if, if you, you like, sorry, sorry, if, if, if you like, sorry, sorry, if, sorry, if you, you let, me, if let me speak to you, 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 let me speak to Libi, li, Libi, Governor Ode, Kosi Obambe, Libi President, you know, Kosi Obambe. Eh, did they? Eh, Joko. Exactly. So, but, but that, that king, that king in, uh, that king in Ugumosho, the court has finally sat, if you look, if you put people's gases today, in fact, you will still have the RCCG pastor Don king sat by the court that is what we were saying the last time with mommy uh, mom, mom, uh Basia, that even though some people are born king if they rubbish themselves they can be rubbish anyhow the court is going to sack a king a king a king a king because of what begiri and Ewedu. thank you very much all right <laughs> thank you my people <laughs> thank you thank you all right uh, uh finally 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 we've come to the end of the broadcast uh looking forward to seeing you guys again tomorrow by god's grace um let's keep our fingers crossed and let's wait and stand firm to see what the supreme court is going to be giving to us uh later on in less than 12 hours from now we all will know our fate my people now yeah now we draw the curtain thank you very much everybody right there listening to me right now press on the like button copy the link take with you keep it on the platform where you belong now yeah i will drop the curtain now god now god bless you now good night and bye for now Momo, that is all right. i know they do competition with anybody if i offend you forgive me show me love go there biza biza I know they do competition with anybody. If I offend you, forgive me. Show me love. I go show you love. I know they do competition with anybody.
forgive me. Oh, to ba ti san wo fun sekun na bi o. E fe joku. I love you. I love you baby. Sekun Anybody? Anybody? Any bo 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 Anybody? Molo nfolu o gba mi bo se ri mi lati finish Then I'm going to do Ah Ejen soro Okay Dele o dele o 